What's going on, Internet? The Black Okage here, aka TBH. To be honest, I'd like to welcome you guys back to the Game and Illuminati podcast. We are the Enlightened Gamers, and you're now tuned into episode 153. If you're watching the video version of the show at youtube.com slash GI Updates, know this show is available on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, and all other major podcast platforms. Be sure to rate the show five stars on Apple and Spotify. We need your five star rating to move up in the algorithm and bring in new potential listeners. Uh, follow the podcast on social media. We drop daily content on our pages. We're available on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. And our handle on every platform is at GI Updates. Now, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to my co host, the first of which can be found constantly crying about whatever new game is not compatible with his shiny new Steam Deck. UTX JG the Don, aka JG's time capsule. Say what up to the people. I gotta, I gotta give him credit, man. He's he's trying, Ethos. He is trying to come up with he's the witty trying. titles. Yeah, I'll give him that. I'll give him that because constantly <laughs> it's such a it was good. I'm not gonna hate it. That was, that. Like, that was pretty good. Right, that one video good. game, but then here he goes. Don't worry, JG. I love my Steam Deck, though, man. Starting off the show with Cap. Steam Deck is great. It's great. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, that's not what you said in the group DMs, but anyways. Wait a minute, no, I said that about that one game. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, okay, that's fine. That's um, my second co-host, he uh, he likes to spend a lot of his time on the GI Twitter page, posting green screen booty videos, gaming ethos. <laughs> Say what up to the people. <laughs> okay, to so be, I had f- full clearance to post that video. I be- messaged TV. I said, "Is this okay?" <laughs> Read a post and he was like yeah i was like i know it'll go viral and it did so i was like yeah i'll do it so i'm um, happy to show you guys um booty green screens and shout out to jg for the great commentary of saying if she actually has some more it been ultra wide <laughs> so yeah i'm just saying that's man that's what everybody was thinking that's what they said he said <laughs> you said what, exactly what i was thinking so, See, a little bit more back there man it'd be, it'd be ultra wide Tw- twitch yeah. is so, a very interesting right place right now twitch is a very interesting place so that game better, bro. Better. <laughs> now if your eyes work correctly you would have noticed there is a fourth camera on deck today we are joined by a special guest who's making waves across social media he's also a prominent member of the fgc he loves doing commentaries on all things related to the internet omni say what up to the people shout out your social medias if you want man go ahead gang how y'all doing man yeah uh i'm omni you guys either know me or don't i've been in the fighting game smash community all that jazz i've been here for a long ass time and i got kind of bored so i started just talking about everything else and so now that's just kind of my gig somehow it it turned into the full-time thing and yeah, I just I guess I just wake up every morning and talk shit and now it's a it's my living but I appreciate you guys bringing me on board man I um I don't really talk to other people that much I'm a little bit of a inside indoor gremlin don't touch enough grass so when you um extended the invite I was like yeah let me let me hang out with some of the peeps and, and talk about some games because that's what I'm going to do anyway so I appreciate you guys bringing me on board a link to all his social medias will be in the description box of the video version of the show. And I'm also curious how many other content creators are kind of the same if we were to reach out. Like, oh, uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be staying to myself. I wonder if it would be the same type of energy. We had to do that. It would be. I think a lot of people, I mean, I think post-pandemic, a lot of people kind of just mm. stayed indoors. And now, to be honest, yeah, it'd probably be just the same energy. They'd be like, yeah, sure. I guess I got some time. And then it's literally that much energy i think some people were kind of like surprised when they reach out to me and ask if they can do shit and i usually just always say yes so yeah, i think if you reach out to anybody for real for real as long as it's you know you got the time they you probably chill y'all heard the man if you got five viewers reach out to him um before <laughs> we get into the show <laughs> for the <laughs> reminder Listen, a friendly reminder, join the Discord at discord.gg slash GI updates is totally free. Big shout out to all our Discord members out there. Uh, if you're watching the video version of youtube.com slash GI updates, there will be a link to our Discord in the description box below. Now, without the further ado, let's head into the leading conversations of episode 153. Some major games have come out uh, since the last podcast and some that haven't, but the embargo will lift by the time this episode drops. So we're going to be talking about a little bit of that as well. But first thing we want to touch on is Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, which is the follow up to Final Fantasy 7 Remake, which is a smash hit on the PS4. 
um it's a direct follow-up it's basically like this too of uh, final fantasy 7 um they added a bunch of new stuff the main big things are the new open world uh there's a bunch of new mini games and then some new like combat mechanics including like some synergy abilities and stuff like that um and since you're the guest of the show omni i want to go ahead and give you the floor uh and share what you what is what's the good bad and the ugly on final fantasy 7 rebirth man let me hit you with that and again i will start off with the saying no spoilers because this is the the pivotal point of the story where people are wondering what's going to happen at the end i am a huge you guys brought me in in the perfect time because i'm a huge final fantasy mm. fan and a huge final fantasy 7 fan like i'm just that's my outside of like persona final fantasy series is just kind of like what it is for me so playing final fantasy 7 rebirth i was actually playing a little bit earlier today has just been so goddamn awesome because if you are a fan and you play the ogs you can see the nostalgia like you don't have to play old school final fantasy 7 to play this one but if you do you see so much of the nods to the prior game um i just got to the the, the golden saucer spot and it's just awesome to see some of the new mini games that they put in there but combined with some of the old mini games you know i'm i'm getting ready i want a chocobo race and all of that other stuff so it's it's good like it's an actual good anime i think the biggest worry for me when it came to final fantasy 7 rebirth is it going to be ass i think whenever we get a remake of certain games you're like is it just going to be ass and i feel like it's been delivering i it's it's fun and they keep the element based off the prior game from the disc one that something things won't be the same it's not going to hit you with the exact same story you're following the story but it might not hit you with the same stuff so it doesn't feel like you are playing the exact game um i love it it's as a final fantasy fantasy 7 fan i feel like this is it's hitting like all the spots basically and you're a big fan of the original or is the remake uh like your first time playing it no, the original, the the OG, the the one with the four disc and the the freaking blocks for hands. Block and... <laughs> okay. I played that game like three or four times, like over and over, because I was just addicted, and it was just at that time when Final Fantasy VII initially came out, it was just a game changer and better than everything that was out at the time. Okay, okay. I think I'm somewhere kind of in the middle with you, and I think it's probably because I didn't grow up playing Final Fantasy VII. Uh, I, I was a Nintendo kid. My parents loved me, so they didn't let me play mature-rated games and shit, and even teen-rated <laughs> games. That's always a joke I make, but uh, yeah, we was poor, so I couldn't have both. We only had Nintendo. So I missed out on the original Final Fantasy VII, but Remake, so Remake was my first time playing Seven, but I loved the Remake, so I was excited for Rebirth. Um, but I've been feeling conflicted about Rebirth. I don't... Uh, talk to me. Talk to me. Homie. Be honest. Be honest. You don't have to... Uh, Oh, I, <laughs> so I don't hate it. I do like it. I do. I, oh yeah, I'm gonna get canceled. I do like it, but I got to a certain point, and it's in the second world where um they first introduced the the Fort Condor mini game, and I'm not gonna lie, I said, "What the fuck is this shit? I don't want to do this." Um, the mini games bother me. It's the I, I'm enjoying the changes to the combat, the story, the exploration. Nope. But and, and it's the fact that they tie these mini games to some of the main campaign like you have to do it. I'm not saying I won't beat the game. I, I still enjoy it enough that where I beat it. But I did feel like I was like, I need to take a break because I was just like, I did. It's like a feels like I don't know if Jay and Ethos played. It. It's like a tower defense game. And I'm like, I want to play Final Fantasy seven. I know that from my understanding, it does. Pay, it's paying homage to the original game. Is that correct on me? Yes. For Condor was like like the shit for the original one. So when they had for Condor for the re, for the remake, but it was new. Everyone was like, yeah. So it's it's paying homage. There's new mini games, old mini games. But yeah, Fort Condor is new. And you know what? I'm not going to blame you because I have noticed that Rebirth and the remake, the original Final Fantasy remake, have been like harping on the mini games. And now that I think about it, when I think about the old school Final Fantasy 7, there was like 50 million mini games when you played the game. I didn't realize it until I started playing this game. I realized that, oh yeah, there was like 50 million, it was a snowboard game, Golden Saucer is all mini games. Everything in the game has some type of mini game element. So I don't blame you for not being hip on it. I know there's, I, are you a fan of that? What's that card game that you played? Did you, did you get to I didn't give it enough of it. I didn't give it enough of a chance and here's why. So like in the tutorial, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like the tutorial for the card game, I think it's called, is it Queen's Gambit or something yeah, like that? Queen's Gambit, yes, yes. The tutorial, Queen's, Queen's, Blood. Queen's Blood. The, t- the Blood tutorial Blood. was ass, bro. Like the way they, yes, I didn't okay, I'm not crazy. Okay, <laughs> I felt stupid reading that shit, but then I just, from just playing it, I figured it out and it's like, yo, 
this was actually pretty simple. I'm like, why did they explain it that way? So like, I don't have like a, 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 a like a crazy opinion on that card game because I didn't give it enough of a chance. And I feel like the tutorial kind of messed it up for me. It was specifically Fort Condor. I was like, bruh. And it was kind of challenging too. I'm like, it was the first time mission. I, I don't like, I hate tower defense games. That's what it is. Like, yeah, I don't like that type of you stuff. If don't like tower defense, then you're not about that life life then. Because the, the Chocobo... No, are they not chocobos? That's the chickens. What's those little things that you had to put in the playpen? Uh, little bears. What are them joints called? Uh, there, there's, a, there's a mini game where you have to push the little bears into the. Um, so I, I'm not going to lie. The way that I played it is probably the way that you have. I'm just going through the main story. I'm skipping a lot of the side quests, mm. and then I'm going to go back, play it again, and then 100 percent it because. I'm an old man. I don't have no time. So I, I need to hurry up and beat the game for the plot so I can surf the internet and in safety. I have like all these things muted. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so I skipped a lot of it because otherwise it'd take me a hundred hours. This game is massive, but I didn't get to play that mini game that you're talking about. But it sounds like you probably complete it and you play, you explore the world and you you know, in no rush, you just chilling with it. Oh yeah, that's how I always play RPGs. I like to grind my character so then I can just run through the story OP. That way I can kind of just enjoy it. But I think that one was a part of the main storyline. It might've been just me exploring. Um, yeah. But I, I, I like the game overall. It was just like, it kind of yes. threw me off. It kind of threw me ten. off. One to 10, where are you feeling right now? Ooh. One to 10, I say an eight. Eight? Yeah, I'd say an eight. It's still solid. It's still solid. good. I think you're probably expecting perfection because it's Final Fantasy Rebirth, right? It's like, it's the game that people are waiting for. So you're probably like, it's got to be crispy. I, 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 I some missing elements. I, yeah, I, I just wish they would have focused on something else other than kind of those mini games. I'm like, eh, I get it. They, they're paying homage to it. I think maybe like uh, making it even deeper, like the combat or like giving more to do in the exploration. Because like the exploration, it's OK. Uh, I do feel like you're finding stuff here and there, but I feel like it could have been a little bit better. I feel like there could have been other areas they could have focused on, but it's still a good game. I, th I think the combat is like carrying, hard carrying for me as well yeah, as the story. Combat. It's really interesting. I, got, I was very scared of the combat. I think a lot of people were afraid of the combat because it was the turn-based system and you're like, are you going to get like a Devil May Cry cons? Everyone was like, please just, just don't be ass no matter what you do because... Yeah, you can easily do that with Final Fantasy games. I I, I don't have a very huge pop uh, um, opinion on Final Fantasy 16, but we're not going to have to get into that. But I actually hate Final Fantasy 16. So. Oh, don't worry. No, it's fine. I hate that game, too. I do, too. Oh, you do? Okay, yeah, 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 I'm yeah, just going to mention that. Yeah, gonna Final mention Sleep that. 16. That's what it is, bro. Yeah. Final Cut scene. <laughs> bro, I got canceled on Twitter, dog. I was like, Final Fantasy 16 is ass. And then suddenly all the Final Fantasy goons was like, how When did you say that? You? When did you say that? Did you, was it like the week of release? No, it wasn't a week of release. Cool it was after time had passed, and I was like, okay, enough time has passed. Final Fantasy 16. I made a tier list, and I put Final Fantasy 16 at the bottom. I was like, this is garbage doo-doo butter tier, right? This is just, I don't even care about the characters, because it was only one person I liked, which was Sid, and everybody else, I was like, can kick rocks. So, I don't know. I was, I was, I'm being a hater. It was better than probably what I was saying, like the, the graphics, but Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, though, I think what's going to happen with this, this game specifically is it feels like it's bubbly, right? It feels like it's everyone's doing mini games and everyone's happy and fun and it's getting to the point before the turning point where shit gets, you know, hits the fan, hits the fan. And then I think they're just building up to that moment. So I think whatever you feel about what's happening with this game, I think whenever the next one comes out, which will probably be like eight years from now, it'll it'll probably be fire. I'm curious to hear what you should take on the, because uh, you know there was some controversy about the performance mode being blurry. What did you play it on, performance or quality? Uh, I don't remember, actually. I think I, I streamed it the first day, and my audience, they told me to switch to a certain mode. I don't know if it was the 30 frames per second versus the 60 frames per second or something like that, but I think I'm on performance mode. Performance mode. And yeah. I can't even tell a difference. I don't see anything that is doing or not doing. Did you recognize it? Uh, I didn't. I'm playing on performance. I never even touch quality. Anytime there's like an option to play at like 60 FPS, I always prefer like the frame rate. Yeah. But like okay. a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people were complaining saying that the game like looks blurry. And like I think it does like in the draw distance of some of the environments, but that doesn't bother me. In terms of like upfront, the character models, the game still looks good to me. And then also my counter argument to that too is like that's kind of like the trade off when you have a console. You can't complain about a three year old $500 console running performance mode and having not as good graphics if you want the best graphics and the best performance get a pc that's just how i view it but like it did the performance didn't bother me i thought it ran great now, um, i've been having a blast but the, like you said the the fighting has been it doesn't i don't reach to a point where like i can't see what's happening i don't know what's happening or 
I don't get like motion sickness because of the blur. Because there's some games where the blur is so bad that you just start getting headaches by playing it. But it didn't hit me with any of those. I, I've been enjoying it and enjoying it. And it's not even just because I'm the Final Fantasy VII fan. It's just, I I don't know if you've ever, if any of you guys have ever found yourself in a place, right? Where you, you wait for a game to come out, right? It drops and then you, you're playing it and you start finding yourself in a place where you're forcing yourself to play and you're mad because you're like, I should be enjoying this. Like more than i should but i'm not like yeah just play a game that comes out and you're just not feeling it even though you felt like you was going to be yeah armor core six happen (laughs) armor core six (laughs) told me about that these two love it these two love it (laughs) 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 these two love it i was just like yeah it's okay get my man's up out of here skill issue bro get this man out of here it's all right don't don't talk to me about skill issues you couldn't get past the helicopter that's what did you beat liza p did you beat liza penis Nah, I haven't played Liza P. Actually. Not talking about Ethos. Oh, Who, me? Yeah, he's a fraud. That's that's the point I was trying to make. Oh, I'm sorry. You haven't beat Armor Core, so I don't need to answer that. So I guess we both don't beat our games. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. What's uh, it? Allegations. I beat both. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but you had the fraud ending. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, went, I, got the, I got the real one. You went, you went, you went, you went, you went, got the real one. What's it? Yeah. Ethos, you're a big Final Fantasy fan. What'd you think of Rebirth? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hold on, hold on. I'm a Final Fantasy 14 big fan. I love Final Fantasy That's 14. The joke. I know you're not a Final I Fantasy know. fan. Don't don't confuse Omni. <laughs> um, I uh, I I plan on playing it. I just haven't finished the re the original one. I okay. got it when it was on. They brought it to PC, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna play it. And I was gonna play it my. Wait, Steam. hold on. That's another game you ain't beat. Hold on. Let's talk about that. Why you oh, ain't beat remake it? Hey, You've had four years. Because Baldur's Gate took me four months to beat. Hey, me- hey, hold on. Hey, Jay, Jay, you got it. Jay, Jay, hold it. You got to back me up on this. Now, I asked him why he didn't beat the remake. It came out four years ago. He said, I've been too busy. Now, a certain someone is level 30 in a game that's not out, by the way. And we're going to talk about that. Deadline. You know there's a deadline. Oh, <laughs> oh, a deadline. okay. okay. I can't, for an older game, I can't do that. Okay. Uh, okay. Look. Finish Finish your, your, your take. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Point is, I didn't finish the original. So it's in the, it was in a backlog. So I was trying to catch up on my Steam Deck. So I had time in between to play it like while I was just chilling. I haven't beaten it yet. I'm still, I, I put like 20 something hours into it. I liked That's it. Fair. That's fair. Um, I just didn't get the time to finish it. So I didn't want to like rush. I, I didn't want to rush because uh, I, at the time, like I was playing Baldur's Gate and some other stuff. So I didn't want to rush through it to get to Rebirth, especially when like uh, I knew it was going to come out on PC too. And I was like, oh, then I can play the second one <laughs> on the Steam Deck too, since uh, I felt like it would just be better for you to just wait like that. Like I'm still waiting for 16. I was really excited for 16 before it came out. And then it came out and I didn't pick it up either because I was just I forgot what else came out during that time. I think it was was Spider Man out. Two was, or three games that came out around that time. That yeah, I can't remember if it was Spider Man. Yeah, there was like something else that came out, and I was, I think was busy Spider-Man. playing that game. Yeah, 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 maybe it was that and something else. Um, but I, I said I was going to go back and and play them. So I, I'll, I, I mean, as everyone knows, like a lot of these games are now like, like they're coming over to PC. So now they're in that weird area where it's like, all right, if it's in my backlog and I'm going to eventually get to it, but. It takes me way too long that I just eventually say, oh, screw it. I'm just going to go over to the next one and do the next uh, wait until it goes on PC. Mm, okay. That makes sense. So, That's, yeah. fair. That's fair. So you're just waiting for everything to come out on the on the, on the the best system, aka the PC. Because the Steam Deck is, I'm, I'm like, I got the Steam Deck too. I got Persona, what was it? Persona 3 Reload that just came out. And I played oh, yeah, like that's 10 hours game. of it. It is so good. Yeah, but I like, yeah. I didn't finish it. I'm a fraud on that too. Yeah, I'm a fraud on that one. It's, I like Persona, but... I, I I think I've gotten to the point I used to be like a completionist type person, right? Where I'm like, if I don't finish a game, I'm not going to start a new game. But there's so much that comes out that's actually pretty high quality that... And people probably want your opinion on those games, too. It all. I'm just not going to yep. beat it all, man. And I've, I'm, you know what? I own yep. up to it. If I'm a fraud for not beating it, it is what it is. But there's just not enough time in the day. No, it doesn't make you a fraud for not beating games. you. It, it makes you a fraud for not admitting to it. These two never admit to they don't beat their games. <laughs> That's, <laughs> a That's a lie. Of all people who have got on this podcast and lied and lied straight to the, right to the camera. <laughs> Whatever, bro. Some checks on that one. Bring it, uh, this, man literally, this man literally gets on my head because I have two children and I can't be my yeah. game fast enough. See? Mm-hmm. I think you ain't talking. I got it. That's why sex is overrated. You shouldn't be having sex. 
<laughs> What's that? You got any hot takes on uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Jay? Oh my god, it's so funny. So coming from a person, I, I did beat Final Fantasy VII Remake. I played the OG one like with my cousin. I distinctly remember that back in the day. And I beat uh, Intergrade too. So I was super excited for Rebirth to come out. And um, I, I think that a lot of people had a bad taste in their mouth because 16 was not how everyone thought it was going to be. And literally your example, Omni, was how I felt about 16. And I was trying to force myself to play it and I put it down. I was like, no, I can't do this anymore. And like, what happened to this? The hype was there. Everybody was excited. And then when we played a game, we were like, no, nah, this is this ain't it. Like, it wasn't even a combat for me. It was literally just cutscenes after cutscenes after cutscenes. Mm -hmm. So going into Rebirth, we were like, all right, well, 16 failed. So Rebirth is about to bring us back, right? Like, about the real is back in and remake was a, it was amazing for me like I, I loved it from beginning to end i loved the new combat you know it wasn't full on action but you know it, it did its job very well so i enjoyed that combat style and coming into rebirth my problem with the game is not the game itself my problem with the game is that there was another rpg that came out that i had to find myself splitting <laughs> time with and that was like a dragon um infinite wealth so i was trying to find myself you know splitting time with these games and ultimately i chose like a dragon to play more so i haven't went back to it but for the time i did play i i definitely enjoyed it um you know playing with sephiroth in the beginning like i downloaded the demo and played that so playing with sephiroth when the beginning was was so fucking hype like i was like yo like all right like if this is what you know we're we're in tape for for the rest of the game like sign me up like we in here um and you know i feel like the story you know picked up right where he left off like i didn't have any problems with that and you know, I felt like 16, even though that was, you know, a dud in a lot of people's eyes, the people that want to admit it, first of all, because, you know, you, you were talking about the, the people that just can't admit that maybe, you know, Final Fantasy game wasn't as good as, you know, we set it out to be when we hyped it up to be, um, you know, it, it really did bring a lot of people back. I'm like, OK, like this is this is actually, you know, a good game. This is this is the one that we've been waiting for. Um, so I, I definitely like that. I'm not the biggest fan about the open world, you know, uh, system here. Um, you know, you do get lost a lot in like TV you know when when there's anything open world like this guy just explores everything like he's like he got ocd or something and i'm kind of that way too like I'm, i i fight with myself a lot to not do a lot of the side quests like i try to stay on a pad but it's just so hard when you want to like find better weapons when you want to find you know better material you know stuff like that to make your you know all your characters better so that this is my problem and it's not a it's not a, a gripe that's just how i play my game now because like you said like we're all older now so you know we have limited time so i just gotta you know i have to pick and choose what i want to play but i really want to get back to it but literally that it's another game that we're about to literally about to talk about this about it like all these rpgs like they just take up so rpg much fans time. are eating this year all your time yeah, yeah you for real all your time too because it's like it's so much quality like you said like a dragon i'm a huge fan of the yakuza uh series i played yakuza zero and i was like oh my god i gotta play <laughs> I got, but, but I have it. But but I I was like Yakuza Zero. I, I was sitting there doing the mini games. I was doing real estate. I was like mm -hmm. helping the girls with the host. I was like this is this is some good ass RPG content. And then Like a Dragon came out, and I was like I I didn't pick it up because like you said I, I chose Final Fantasy VII Remake. And like you said, when you're playing it, you just lose all your time. Like it's just. I, I will i will say i will say excuses i do make some excuses I, everybody has that one game that you can't beat whether it's a fighting game or it's Baldur's gate 3 you know that game that can go on infinitely right that you can be like you know what i can play something new or let me go back and play tekken 8 and put 200 more hours into that so i got one of those it's called a uh, slay the spire it's this card game i'm fucking addicted to i've been playing it for so long and i can't stop playing it so there'll be times where i'm like i can sit down and enjoy two hours of final fantasy and then suddenly i don't because i go back to that old tried and true kind of thing so but um yeah but yeah but I, I don't i don't with rebirth yeah, I definitely don't have any any gripes with it. Like, I, I I can't wait to get back to it, but it's gonna end up being a long a long way down the line because we got two more bangers that are coming out literally this week. So as you listen to this podcast, we got two more: uh, Rise of the Ronin and uh, in in Dragon Dogma Two. Uh, so it's it's about to be really really stressful <laughs> for me. So so pray for me because uh, it's gonna be a lot more juggling. So I'm hoping to at least be one of these games. But Final Fantasy just ended up being on the back burner. I was like, you know what? Like I have to at least try to be one of these RPGs and like a dragon. You know, it's gonna be the one because I'm like super close. So Final Fantasy will have to take. Uh, it's gonna be on the backlog for a minute until I can you know finally get back to it. But I can't wait to because like I said, it's not a it's not a bad game to me. I don't really have any regrets about it at all. It's not even it's like the thing with these open world RPGs being so big 
it's not even necessarily all the time that it's big. I think one of the things that makes it hard to beat him too, for me at least, I realize I'm just getting older, man. Like fucking, I booted up Final Fantasy VII the other day, controller in hand. I just fell asleep for like five minutes, bro. Like you know, between <laughs> between making content all the goddamn time, fucking hanging out with your significant other, my damn dog needs a hug every five minutes, bro. Research, making thumbnails, all my family bugging me all the goddamn time. I I can't even imagine people who got kids except for JJ. He's still a fraud. But what's the name? Um, <laughs> like I sometimes I'm just like, yeah, I think I'm getting older, bro. It's like I like this shit, but it's like, I'm tired. Dude. <laughs> I tried to stay up, man. I tried to stay up for it, like the midnight release joint. I was like, oh yeah, Final Fantasy VII. This is the one where I'm a. I used to do the midnight releases at GameStop, so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm stay up for this one midnight. Wait for this joint to drop. It hit like 9.30 and I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm going to sleep. I, there's My copy will be there tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to just wake up. I'm a, You know what? Actually, I start looking forward to sleeping so that I can wake up at 7 a.m. and be like, yeah, let me get some coffee. That's how I want to play video games now is wake up 8 a.m. and drink coffee and play the game as opposed to like stay up until like 4 a.m. playing a game. It's getting older and playing games is such a such a such a thing it's crazy though. but also like you were saying like you, like the distractions sometimes you just sit down like <clears throat> playing some of these games like Final Fantasy Rebirth or Dragon's Dogma or whatever and you got like two hours that you want to play and then you find out you know you play for like 10 minutes but then you got to pause every 10 seconds or because there's a distraction somewhere or you check your phone or you got to do YouTube content and so only two hours only led to like 15 minutes of gameplay and after the rest was just on pause it's just such a ugh. I feel like we're, we're talking about the whole getting old kind of thing while playing RPGs, but I feel like people are really feeling it. Even people who aren't old, because like social media now, I think has people like locked in on their phones. I have a friend that can't play RPGs quite literally because they don't have the attention span to literally sit there and just play like Octopath Traveler, some of the old school RPGs. They just don't have the attention span anymore. So they'll try, but because it's not stimulating enough, it's almost like kind of like reading a book. They just can't get past that point. So that's why they're about to ban TikTok. That that time great oh the tiktok band yeah <laughs> at least not, at least not. so let me ask you before we pivot off of this conversation as you are a big fan of final fantasy omni yeah. for the next game what do you feel like they need to do in terms of gameplay or like story like what, what's something you want to see for maybe like a gameplay mechanic or a story beat or something like that so to kind of take it to the next do, level and again without going into any of the spoilers but uh, this is this is without everyone knows but i'm not going to say but i still haven't beaten the game either for final fantasy 7 remake and there's still a bit of unknown shit but i think the third one need shit needs to hit the fan right like people need to be scared sephiroth's presence needs to be like like terrifying like this is like the part where when everything is going well, you know, yada da da da, and then you watch an anime, and that stuff gets dark, and then it gets real dark, and it keeps getting darker and darker. I want people to stop having fun with this game. I want people to be like, "This is stressful," because <laughs> what actually starts happening in the later part of the story is just stressful as shit. I want despair. That's what I kind of want. Because right now, final uh, the, the rebirth is you know la 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 happy go lucky. But I just want the mm, the element of where you feel more about the game less about experimenting like you ever play final fantasy rebirth you're like wow they redid this game so well everything is so nice but i want to be sucked into the game and i think final fantasy the third one needs to be the one that kind of like ensnares the audience not because it's the rebirth not leaning on the fact that it's a remake but leaning on the fact that they are now in capture into this new universe that you weren't expecting i need to be pulled in because um games can be good on the the layer it can be like yeah you made a great game but if it doesn't fully encapsulate you in some kind of way in a memorable way i'm not going to give it that nine or that ten i'm gonna keep it at a solid like eight so i'm hoping that that's what the this three does the next one that's to be fair to it kind of to be fair it kind of sounds like you described the middle of the story which this game is like the second disc uh this is like the big meat and chunk so then basically you're trying to say it better pay off in the third one basically it gotta pay off yeah. I, like if it doesn't then that's the, right now it's good but if it doesn't then i'm gonna be that's what they need i need to feel despair and stressed <laughs> and also just really want to be absorbed into the story of the game right now they, they did a great job with the whole element of the first game 
by making it seem like they're it's following a path but maybe not they did a good job of keeping the mystery element to a game that's being remade so i'm excited for that so as long as they can encapsulate me and just also just keep making they already got me on the graphics. They got me on the fighting mechanics. They got me on the mini games. They got me on the story. Like they got me on everything else. Now they just need to pull me in, hook real sink, and and make me try or feel something. I need to feel. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. I respect that. Yeah. Overall, I'm enjoying it. I would still recommend it. Um, I'm just a little frustrated with some stuff, and I'm glad you enjoying it. I'm pretty sure other people out there. I'm curious to see what people say, like in the comment section. Um, keeping it in the realm of RPGs, another one that we've gotten to play recently is uh, J.I. and Ethos. We got early access to Dragon's Dogma 2. So feel free at any point to like chime in if you have like any questions, uh, Omni. We got early access from it, so shout out to Capcom so that we could have a day one conversation about the game. We've had it about a week early. Uh, these two have been playing on PC and I've been playing on the Xbox Series X because I'm poor. Um, I haven't upgraded my PC because I got to pay my taxes. So, uh, <laughs> and yeah, and Uncle and Uncle Sam is not a joke. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, Dragon's Dogma Two. It's a follow up to the cult classic from the Xbox 360 era. Uh, tons of new classes, big open world, fighting big monsters. I think out of, of, of the three of us, I think you were probably the biggest fan of the original Ethos. So I'm gonna give you the floor on this one. Um, also, you're level 30 because you don't get off this fucking game uh what's your what's your take on dragon's dogma give us the good bad and the ugly man dragon's dogma i don't know i don't know how to feel about this game because i'm not done with it and i i think it's good i think it's actually like i think it's gonna be resounding like yeah i think a lot of people are gonna really like this game i think some people are just due to recency like other games they've played recently i think some people are might be going into it expecting it to be something that it's not what do you think that is um i think people are going into it thinking it's going to be elden ring and it's not and i hope that's stressed enough to people is there's a i've seen there's people that think that like oh I, I see people making comparisons to Elden Ring to it, and I can see where those comparisons are coming from. Like the world is very big and there's a lot of stuff. I think it has like it definitely has that mystery aspect that I feel like Elden Ring had in some areas. Um, one thing I was worried about when I first started playing it was I felt like initially the world felt very generic. Uh, it felt like, oh, this is just another medieval, you know, fantasy universe. There's nothing really unique here that I'm really seeing like um, it's very different with Elden Ring and like what, what Miyazaki does with Dark Souls, which is like this is definitely inspired by medieval like fantasy. But there's something that the twisted aspect of it that allows it to feel like unique and different. Like like there's been so many times when you play Elden Ring and you see something and you're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, like, what am I looking at? Like, what is this monster I, I see in the distance or what? What? What is that? A Is that a enemy? Is that an ally? Like it always has these things constantly questioning you. And I think Dragon's Dogma has that, uh, it, but it's not like every single second, uh, especially early on. It, I feel like early on when you open up into Elden Ring, you go into the open world. It kind of was like a figure it out type thing. Right. And everybody was like, what am I supposed to be doing? And, you know, they'd run into the dude on the horse and they'd get killed by him or something <laughs> like that. Or the, you'd get be told, you know, no maidens. So like it, it had these things. Um, and Dragon's Dogma doesn't necessarily have those things off rip, but I did notice them as further as I got into it. The game also similar like Elden Ring doesn't really like it doesn't hold your hand a lot and it doesn't really tell you every single thing. And I think for some people that will turn some people off because hmm, there's actually quite a bit of stuff behind the scenes, like how the game's running. And there's some things that are different, uh, especially uh, like about the combat and about like the way that you move throughout the world. I would actually say it's more like kind of a survival game <laughs> because like there's uh, the game does a very good job of making you scared of the wilderness like you're not you can feel badass in this game but there's a lot of stuff in this game that could just straight up just murder you or just overwhelm you and that's not even mentioned like the the bigger monsters in, in the world that are probably like the highlights I, I think um the thing that i think is a very big strong component of this game is if you're a, like a gameplay first type person and you care about gameplay more than anything else 
I think you'll end up loving this game. I I think it is truly a good successor to the first game. It it continues everything that people loved from the original Dogma, like the unique aspects, which was the combat, the grabbing of like the the, the boss, how you could like jump onto the boss and grab them, the dynamic aspect of the combat. All that is here and it's expanded. It's like it feels like they've had a way bigger chance to explore a lot of those mechanics. Uh, a lot of the things environmentally, like things that you see from like Zelda and out, like they're in this game. Like obviously, like if your sword's on fire, you hit the grass, the grass starts setting things on fire. Um, you can cut off people's tails, that sort of thing. It uh, misbalances them. There's a cool balancing sequence with the combat with with heavier enemies where um, I'm, I'm playing basically guts. So like my character is kind of this like a uh, broad, like has a broad sword, um, literally like a guts character, uh, hard hitting, slow attacks, but hits like a truck. Um, and so what my character's archetype and what it allows me to do is I can off balance bosses. So when they go for swings, uh, I can off carry them and knock them backwards. And then if you hit them on certain angles or where they're not paying attention to you, you can cause them to fall over. And this gives you like a moment of like an opportunity strike, um, kind of like in Persona where they let you like, oh, here's our chance. And you smack into them. It's kind of like that, but you're controlling all of it. So you can then just go in and start like hitting like critical parts. And each of the big bosses, like they'll have different things like they'll be some bosses that have certain critical spots where you have to reach them and you'll need to have certain like party members that work and synergize well with them. Uh, so like um, there's like the four main ones, which is like there's your warrior, which is like your tank. And then you have like your sorcerer, which is, you know, your your spell slinger. And then you have your your thief, which is like a dagger type care uh, person. And then you have uh, the arrow, uh, like bow and arrow type person. Uh, and I got most of my time with the warrior and the broadsword. I'm not going to lie. I unlocked another class, which I won't spoil here just because I want it to be a surprise for people. It's a unique thing that I don't think was in the first dogma. Uh, and it involves uh, a unique type of weapon uh, with uh, I'll give a little hint. It's like with little incense. So that's like a little little tease. I thought that was really cool and unique, um, but it has a lot of things that you'd expect from some any sort of like JRPG fantasy sort of like universe. It has a lot of those things. But I think the thing that's going to sell a lot of people is going to be the combat. It's going to be the uh, the pawn system, I think, is really cool and unique. Um, the AI actually like are kind of like your guide in this world. They help uh, protect you. They help uh, help you in combat. They all have distinct AI patterns that you can like mold them to do. Like you can mold one of your pawns to be like, I'm going to be a support character. So I'll hang back and support you or I'll be offensive. I'll be there on the front line and, and tanking for you. Like you can kind of like teach them what to do. And the cool thing, which I did with JG is um, you can then grab pawns from other people's games. So your friends list can you can see their pawns and you can adopt them and put them in your game. Um, and then when you do this, which is really cool, uh, if you adopt a pawn that is from a friend of yours who's further into the game, so hey, you should bar totally borrow Pan Am. I, I made Pan Am from Cyberpunk in my game. Um, if you take her with you on your journey, she remembers everything that I did in my game and she'll actually alert you as like a, an NPC and she'll I say, know that. hey, yeah, like like it's happened multiple times with randoms that I've picked up, but like um, I, I was like, oh, this is so cool. So what they'll do is they'll say, uh, they'll say, Master, um, I know that there's a cave in this area because when I was with my master, he found this cave and it's in my memory and oh, I, can, that's fire. I can tell you where it is. So you can say, yeah, do that. You can like alert them, say like, yeah, go do that. So be like, follow me. So she'll wave and then she'll like run off and she'll take the lead. So instead of you like leading them, she'll take the lead and she'll she'll literally guide you to where that like that mystery is. So instead of the map being like um like Ubisoft and it's full of like question marks and da, 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 the map is completely like hidden. You don't see any anything so either you just like elden ring you just naturally just walk into it or your pawns will like kind of be your sort of like uh radar it'll like they'll like tell you about this sort of things um and the pawns themselves have their own uh like kind of like learning system where they're just like you can send them off and say okay i want someone to adopt them to learn something or get a certain item for me and a person can adopt them and do that thing for them and then they'll come back and give you that item say hey i got this thing from so and so it's really cool or hey i learned this new thing or i killed this certain boss so i know its weaknesses because i fought it for some other person and now i'm bringing this knowledge back to you now you can utilize utilize it so it has this like that's the part of it that i feel like uh it has this really cool attention to detail that i feel like should be praised uh a hundred percent like there's awesome stuff in the game where 
um, like we fought a griffin and we slayed this griffin and then we went to the bar, we celebrated and then a couple hours had passed and then when we left the bar, the griffin didn't just despawn. Like his corpse was still there and it was actually like, um, it was, uh, what is it called? Um, decay. Why am I blanking on the word? Decay, yeah. It was actually like actively decaying. Like bugs were there. Like you start to see its skull. Like it was actively decaying. And that's something I, I really give credit to them for is they made the world like feel real like the passage of time is actually like you actually see the world reflecting that passage of time quests can actually be uh loss or change based off of you like if you don't show up in time because you're off doing something else that quest will actually like follow the thing npcs in this are like I, I, it feels like the npcs actually have like perma life perma death where it's like every npc is their own person and if you kill one or if one just dies off to some random thing they're gone unless you revive them like they're they're gone and then the system has some way that they throw them in a morgue um these are things that i'm like that is awesome like these are things that i a lot of open worlds don't even try to do or or don't even care about doing and those attentions to detail i think are phenomenal on the other side of things um I think the biggest thing is going to be the combat engine is going to be something I mean, me and TBH talked about it. I think it's going to be an acquired taste. Uh, it, there's no lock on system, which is I know a lot of Souls fans are like they're used to that type of thing. Uh, there's no lock on system. And at sometimes it can get a little frustrating of like when you're trying to directly hit somebody. It's very like kind of skilled, like you have to kind of move your your thumbstick towards the direction that you're trying to aim. There's a little bit of like uh, aim magnetism to kind of help. But sometimes you can just have these like frustrating moments in combat where like you're trying to hit the damn guy and he just keeps walking back an inch, walking or back faster an inch. enemies. Like, they'll like yeah, they'll run past like, you, the camera spin, like you gotta spin your yeah, camera. It can like, be annoying. Whoa. Yeah, and then especially because the bigger this is like same thing with like uh Dark Souls in general, it's, it seems to always be a thing with the cameras. Sometimes because if the boss is so big, even though there's no camera here, if you get stuck in a very tight place. The camera bumping up against the wall to stop that and you're just like well i can't see what's happening and this but it's really cool it, it has I, I will say it definitely from a combat engine standpoint it's really cool i don't think it has the depth that i think some people want in a lot of like their rpgs like it doesn't have like the like stat like picking and individualizing that i think like elden ring does but it so it's kind of a little linear in that respect but it's just like it's just it makes you feel badass when you play like it makes you feel like you're playing like an anime. Uh, that's the best I can describe like like feel, it feels like you're in you're playing Berserk or you're playing, um, you know, uh, any of those like um, any of those anime that's like uh, isekai in a fantasy world or da, 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 like that. Like that. That's kind of how this game feels. That's the best I can give for that. I'm pretty sure you two probably have. Yeah, you was having probably. For <laughs> oh, yeah, do, hey, hey, you, you were going off, man. You did your thing. Oh, do do the thing. I'm done. What's the name? For Final Fantasy, so. <laughs> I'm I'm at like level 15 right now, and I'm so glad you said it. That if you're a person who loves gameplay before anything else, this game is probably going to be for you because I completely agree. I am that person. Um, what's the name? I've just been running around in the forest fighting big ass monsters. <laughs> I, I know I know I know who the arisen is and why the ponds follow me, but I'm not trying to be funny. I have like 15 hours on this game. I've done three qu three quests. That's it. That's how con if you're one of those people who like are complaining, oh, there's not enough content in our games today. This is a game that's definitely content rich. And, and it's like he said, the map, it doesn't tell you where anything is. And at first I thought that was going to be annoying, but the world is interesting enough that I wanted to explore. And I think that's where it does remind me of Elden Ring. And then also what I did know is like your pawns like if they if they're if they know there's a cave nearby they'll give you a tip hey, hey there's a cave nearby i didn't know that when you bring someone else's pawn and they'll remember that and help you too yep. so i was like that added an even bigger layer to it. i was like oh that that's freaking fire but the combat if you love a good combat game i'm playing the thief right um i think the camera bothered me more when i played the mystic hand um because it's a slower moving character with the thief they're a lot faster and i think it's the only clash and i don't quote i'm not sure but i think it's the only class with a dash mechanic it's like the closest thing to a dodge roll in the game so because i'm always on the move and just like stabbing the camera doesn't bother me as much because the enemies basically have to keep up with you if you're playing correctly because like its whole play style is tripping enemies up stabbing them in the head moving down. it's so fucking fire like there's this ability that you get where you get like this like um ninja harpoon kind of like what a 
Connor used to use in Assassin's Creed 3. You grab them. Yeah, you grab them and then you can pull them. It trips them. You pull up, stab them in the head. That shit, I did it to a Cyclops. That shit was fucking fire. Like the Cyclops was like off balance. I put the harpoon in him when he was off balance, pulled him down, boom, stabbed him in the head, got it. I was like, yeah, this game's fucking fire. So if you, if you. So the classes that you guys pick can interact mm -hmm. with all the monsters like like uniquely yeah. mm -hmm. they have all, different fighting the styles classes, but like uh like m because i'm playing like a heavier like guts person right um my like my hits usually take a lot of stamina but like they just deal a lot of damage and they can off center the person like tbh's character is very good at like jumping on the monster getting to those crit spots and just stabbing the shit out of like the like stabbing them or punting them and stuff like that um Sick. yeah like all of them are very like unique i i i, I will be fair i've not personally played as like the mage classes yet JG just because kind of what i just i watched a video of it and i was like it seems like he's just like walking around going it seems kind of boring i'm not gonna lie like i, like, I want to like jump like on a monster and stab it <laughs> yeah be in the bag doing like, this half the fun is jumping on the griffin's back yeah. while he's flying and stabbing him and just flying. like looking like a superhero bro it makes you feel like a shonen character um so i i would say if you are worried about the lack of lock on feature i would recommend trying the thief class because you because it feels like the characters have to keep up with you if you're playing the character correctly the enemies i mean um i'd, I'd say too uh, but there is a there is a deflect uh mechanic uh at least where my class that that, that might be the trade-off is i know I know that might be another thing people might be kind of weird about. There's actually no active dodge roll. Like in like, I guess the thief is the only one that gets it because both classes dash, I played, yeah. we had we had none of it. All I had was uh, okay. they gave me they unlocked me a parry. Yeah, so the shield guy gets a parry, and then the once you level it up enough, the the like guts class they get a like a parry pose where like you you put up a pose, and if someone hits you, you counter attack them and counter it. So there, those are in the game. I don't know what the hell the other class. I don't know thief. You guys get a parry? Or, do you guys get a parry or do you just get nah? It's it's, it's all mobility. Like there's an ability yeah. right where um. Um, you basically jump like 20 feet into the air and the entire yeah, time right. you're doing front flips and swinging your I've knife so like i thought yeah, like yeah, if yeah, you yeah, get yeah, creative yeah, with it the yeah, shit the yeah, shit is yeah, fucking like fire bro because yeah. you stand like, like like an example is like when i fought the cyclops i stood in front of him and i was just like slashing at his legs and i was like wait a minute i have this ability so i jumped in the air and i'm spinning like a beyblade with my thing and i'm just slashing his head up without having yeah. to knock him down so like if you get creative with the abilities oh yeah you can it's do it, it's it, you could do some crazy yeah. damage um, um, I think my favorite thing about the game so far, and I think it's because I'm just silly and a troll, is the pawn system. Ethos didn't bring it up, but like it's so fucking funny because you get to, you can recruit, you can recruit other people's pawn. There's no co-op, but you can recruit other people's pawns into the game, and they just, you could just be exploring, and they just randomly show up out of nowhere, bro. So like, mm -hmm. and and I, I've been putting it in the group chat, and they've been jealous because I've been running into all the cool creative characters. Nah, like, nah. I've ran into Kratos, on Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Kratos on Xbox. Oh, this man, is my you think about it. You know what's funny? What makes it funny about me running into Kratos is I read this morning there's no crossplay. So what's the name? Yeah. Like that's so, so just an Xbox, Xbox fan that yeah. made so somebody created Kratos, put him in the game. I ran into him. He's on my team. I ran into Lazelle, Shadowheart from a. Uh, Boulders Gate 3, and it's just funny running around with these people on your team. So I think people are really going to enjoy that concept of just like, you never know what you're going to run into while you're exploring. I enjoy like that silly aspect of it. I think the one thing that um, is bothering me the most about the game, I think more than the lock on it'll bother people is the traversal in the game. It is fun to explore. I am enjoying the world. It oh, reminds gosh, me, I was gonna kill it, it, it reminds oh. me of a mix between Breath of the Wild where like, it's a big open world and there's like big goblin camps everywhere. That reminds me of Breath of the Wild, but then it also reminds me of Elden Ring because there's a lot of underground passages with really hard enemies and like um, good loot. So it's like a mix between those two. Fun, but there are times where I just want to do the quest and go turn it back in and you cannot in this game. And there's a stamina system. And I think what pisses me off the most, I think the way they could have did it is if the quest was quote close to the quest giver, it's not. A lot of times the quest giver's in the city oh, and then he says, man. go on the other side of the fucking world and you gotta run over there and there's no, sta the stamina is so little in the beginning of the game. So you're constantly, I, it's funny. 
in the in the combat, I don't even feel like I really have to manage my stamina that much. Uh, basic, no, it's ba- traversal. It's, it's the traversal. traversal. That that's a confusing design choice to me. Yeah. So it is in combat, your basic attacks don't drain your stamina. The only thing that does is your special abilities. So basically, you'll never run out of stamina as long as you don't spam your special abilities and you use them sparingly, like correctly. But when you're running outside of combat, you get tired every fucking ten seconds, bro. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that's the most. Ir- I'm like, it bro, can game. we? It it needs yeah. fast travel, man. It's in the game but it's very use- useless you can only hop on the ho- ox cart during the daytime and yeah. it only follows the the main path lines you can't go off into like the forest in and certain like cities and yeah there are there is because I, I did discover it there are port they're like port keys or something like that there is an actual fast travel system but it's it's like oh it's like it's like they wanted to be like how can we make it frustrating like how dark souls is frustrating to do co-op like how can we just make it so unnaturally like difficult to use instead of just doing what everyone else has done and just be like okay if you go to a city just click on the city on the map teleport to it or go to a signpost like in witcher and you can teleport to the place on the map no instead it's like there's these port keys and it's certain areas of the map that you have to find that are going to be difficult for you to find you can activate them and then you have to find a limited time item so you have to and this item isn't like easy to like necessarily like very easy that was to find. another you time to, limited time quest that bothers me yeah you have to like uh, find this little gem that then you throw up in the air to then be able to teleport. But it, it, it's some of these some of the main cities don't have this thing. So then you have to get what's called a port a, like it's called like a port key receiver. And there are things that you can just set in the world wherever you want. So like you can just go wherever you want in the world, set up this little podium. And now, like anytime you tell you use this like key, you could pick that place randomly. So you kind of set up your own fashion thing, which is like, OK, that's kind of cool. But it's like. Kind of what you said, TBH. There, especially later on, uh, I don't. I think you said you haven't reached it yet. But there, they there's different countries so far. I've only gotten to the second one. But like, there's a like kind of like a forest country, and then there's like the the dune. Basically, it's like fucking dune. Um, and in the dune country, there's a part of the quest where you have to go all the way into dune country, find the capital, talk in the capital. Then they want you to go all the way to the other side of the map, go all the way back to the original place from the beginning of the game, then go all the way back to the dune part of the map. And you're just like, I wish I could just teleport. I do not want to do this. I just want to get it done. I think that's why I haven't been able to get so much of this game done main story wise. It's because it feels like it's said, padding. Yeah, it's like I'm walking and it's like I get it if I was in combat and you make the stamina go down, but it's like I'm not even in combat. I'm just walking down the the path and you're making my character like and every like 10 seconds I got to stop and just let go of the the sprint and then do it again. It's it's just irritating. It's just like, come on, bro. I don't need this. There's no there's There's no horse. Oh, there is. Oh, there is. There's an ox. Well, no, no, there's no. I'm sorry. So far, I've not found like an actual like 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 like, like roach. There is no like witcher like horse uh there's like what you said the like you go in every city there's like a an ox and you can like travel on it to specific destinations it's like public transportation it's a bus but yeah. it's super slow it's useless it's not going to go where yeah. you want to go where all the good stuff is it just goes on the main roads and you can only do it during the daytime to me it, it, there, to me there's no fast travel in the game in my opinion it's just some bullshit it's pretty it's pretty yeah lackluster the nighttime is very cool though yeah like the different enemies that spawn like the tougher enemies and stuff yeah. like that what's the it's name um what's your take on it jay uh, first of all, I I don't know how Capcom wrote me into playing another game because you know it's it's World War Capcom. Oh yeah, did you I'm say like, yeah? Honey Musha. Hey, I don't know. Like, I play, I play Street Musha. Fighter. I played freaking Street Fighter. Fighter. Street Fighter Six was good, and, and now I'm playing this. Like I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, but anyways, so uh, so you all you all said a, a ton, and I have some of the same sentiments. Like the the fast travel uh, part is it's very annoying, and I remember we spoke about that. How the how the uh, the creator was like, you know, I don't really like the fast travel system, and it's sounding like even more frustrating now that the game is it, well, the game isn't out yet, but it'll be out by the time you see this. But just from us playing it early, like it. It's, it, it is very annoying and i think it's more just because of stamina system and there's no like rideable mounts because i don't i truly don't know like why that's a gameplay mechanic like i i understand you want people to explore but we easily you know have been able to explore in elden ring you know with having an actual mount so i don't i don't think that that's a necessary excuse just because you you feel like fast travel like ruins the game or like you know at it it, it uh 
it, you know you're trying to force people to you know see every aspect of the game and and explore because we can still we can still find those uh those hidden things without you know having that you know system not in the game so that that's one part that i don't uh like in the lock on system that's, that's definitely my my other sentiment um and just like ito said like this, if you want this game to be elden ring it's absolutely not um even though elden ring is medieval in uh in in spirit like it has it has those dark elements those like this is closer to elements. monster hunter than me than like that i yeah, yeah like I the story like story wise i'm i'm with tbh like i know that there's a reason i know that pawns follow you because you know you're you're special but i don't care about this story so far like it's it's just it's just there like i'm i'm actively pressing skip through the cutscenes. i don't care about any of that like the gameplay is going exactly. to yeah the gameplay is going to push it for me and and uh i've said this many times like i don't like anything medieval like medieval times are just like you got fan man you got you got dirty ass people like i don't care about this stuff. that's why you're like like it's 16, like okay. it's, to- <laughs> it's totally like it like any any game that's in medieval time like i i really wish that we could just get out of that era like feudal japan that's my bag but medieval time i'm just like i don't care like just just skip it so um so if you care about the story like i i would highly you know unless you're into medieval times like i don't think you're going to truly be in it um but uh one thing i do like is that like you're not locked into a class like you can pick whatever class that you want you unlock that pretty early on too yeah yeah just as long as you have um what they call when you level up you get vocations and it allows you to uh to get other skills so um so you know if whatever you want to pick another class you want to pick a mage you want to pick a sorcerer you want to pick a warrior um you can do that so uh, that's that's one thing that i definitely want to uh preface like everybody's like oh i'm going to pick this class like you're you're not locked in anything so you could do whatever you want in that aspect so i i, I do enjoy yes. that so um uh, so like i said right now like the the gameplay now that i'm unlocking moves and stuff now the combat is kind of flowing because again like i just picked a fighter just to start off because i because they already told me that you could switch classes so i'm like all right i'll just pick a fighter and then just move along until i um unlock other classes so i'm doing that and you know it was just boring like i'm fighting trolls you know the just the standard like i'm fighting harpies i'm, I'm fighting wolves at night so um you know the standard stuff but like once i got to the side class i'm like okay like now the game is showing me like what it's truly about what the combat is truly about so like, like once you just like at nighttime i was uh i was just cruising through I'm going to my next quest and I just see a, a Cyclops just fighting some specters and with some trolls around. I'm like, OK, like, let me pull up because the, the, the Cyclops is uh, he's distracted right now. And the specters are just flying around him, just attacking. And he's just looking around confused. And then me and my boy just pull up and then we just start wailing at his leg. And then he falls down. He gets stunned. And then we just hop on top and just start slapping him <laughs> while my majors are like burning the shit out of him. So, like, I see that, like, the pawn system here, I, I understand because the director also said that like um that co-op isn't in the game for a reason because you feel like it'll, it'll once again ruin the experience what they're doing with this pawn system i totally understand because like i didn't know uh, like i said i didn't look into the full aspect of dragon dogma 2 i was honestly going to skip it until later um so i wasn't truly familiar with like you know you got goons with you i thought it was going to be more of a solo experience but you literally have people who are behind you that can literally support you so like um so my guy who uh my first pawn my my uh my, my day zero boy so he's a mage and he's just like all right i'm just going to infuse your sword little with, with flames it's little, yeah. it's little AD, yeah, right? yeah, AD, AD junior yeah, yeah, AD AD that's my son that, that's my son right there so so he's just pulling up and he's like all right i'm going to infuse you with fire uh infuse your sword with fire and your shield so i'm like okay cool so i'm just running up just slashing people so like he's i i really like that support aspect in the game and i think that's what's really keeping me in and drawing me in is just the fact that like you have people behind you who, who are you know literally helping you in, in every aspect you know fighting these big ass monsters that you encounter so i understand what t-bates was saying like it does it, uh, it does remind you a lot like monster hunting when you fight these you know big ass creatures that are you know just random randomly around a place and that's how that's how he's getting lost and that's how you can honestly get lost and that's another reason why i don't think i'll beat this game anytime soon because it's just so much to do um and, and then the fact that there's there's just no map you know you're just running around and then you know as you get to a certain place and then a map will unlock but you don't know what you're going you know you don't know where you're going you don't know what you're doing um but your pawns do help you so i, I do enjoy the aspect that you're not like completely lost um and, and even though i feel like elden ring did that in the, in a really good way that there's no real 
um you know guy you just go wherever you want like there there is a path but you can still go you know a million different ways before you reach you know whatever the final path is so um i i like the aspect that they are doing it like that because it does bring that sense of mystery into the game um but i, I do like the fact that you know even though you know you may get lost at, at certain points because it's very easy to get lost that your uh your supporting cast will help you like hey i i know where we're going like let me like let me help and then they're like okay lead the way like you like you got it and then they'll just run and then you just follow them so um so you're not completely lost but you know you, you can definitely get lost in the in the sauce just running around and trying to figure out you know what you want to do i don't even know if i'm doing main quest at this point <laughs> like i was just i was just like okay like is that like they asked me to do that so asked me to do that it doesn't really say main quest it's just it's a sign of quest. a good game though when the side stuff yeah. is that good you can't even it tell is. like it is it is so I, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this game but like i said don't go into it thinking it's it's elden ring and uh and if you're real story heavy then i would uh i would definitely refrain like just just temper your expectations um if, you, if you're a huge story buff and if that's going to turn you off i i think that the gameplay will carry a lot but just just definitely be worried that because like right now story wise it's it's not it for me but if you're into that type of stuff you know it, it may be for you but it's just it's not for me it's not it's not doing it for me yeah if i had to like simply because I feel like we said a lot of words, big ass words for people to not even understand. I'd say it's like a mix of Elden Ring and Breath of the Wild's open world with Monster Hunter's combat, plus the unique like climbing features that it has. Because there are unique things in here in terms of the combat with like kind of a Game of Thrones vibe. Is that I don't know if that like is yeah. that that's that's how I would describe the game. Like, don't go into it thinking exactly like Elden Ring. Um, before we wrap this one up and move on to the news two things uh in terms of dragon's dogma 2 uh performance that has been a topic of discussion on the internet a lot of people have been worried about whether or not this game is optimized um i got to play on xbox but these two got to play on pc so i wanted y'all to testify let me know how's the game running before launch ethos on pc uh initially i was a little worried but as I've played more of it, it's gotten a lot better. Uh, I think the initial area, the force area that you start off in, um, I was a little, when it started, when, when I st first started playing, it felt like it was running okay. But then when I got to like the capital city, it definitely was like noticeably like, yeah, this this boy is tanking. Uh, not where it's like a slideshow, but I definitely, you could feel it. Um, and this is with like, I had DLSS on, I put it on performance mode. Um, I'm playing it like with a super ultra wide. So I am playing at like a, a pretty high resolution. Um, and I was playing at like high settings. Uh, so maybe I could like tune it down by turning the settings down. Um, I'm assuming that the game is just the draw distance and because it's an open world, that's why it is a heavy game because visually, I don't think that this game is like visually like, oh my gosh, like incredibly look like incredible. Uh, but it, it's it's definitely like, it definitely has some very nice moments where you look at it and you're like, ooh, this looks pretty. Um, but overall, I would say like after that point, though, like when I'm in the wilderness or just doing, I'd say like 80 to 85 percent of the stuff that I'm just normally doing, the game runs perfectly fine. I think there's some areas where it could be desired to be a little bit better, but I I feel like at most time it's definitely totally playable. Uh, and then there's really just like a 20 percent of the time just in small areas, specifically in like capital cities or big areas um, where there's a lot of stuff that sometimes you just be like, Ugh, it, it could be a little bit better, but for overall, I wouldn't say that it's like unplayable. I'd say that from my experience, uh, just, just for just out of curiosity too, at the time and at the time in which we're recording, are the drivers out on PC for this game, or are you just playing yeah. like Nick? I have not even updated my drivers. My drivers okay. are like so even without the drivers, it's still running fine. That's good. Yeah. So I'm assuming like you said, I didn't even think of that. Like uh, I'm just checking right now to see if like maybe they've pushed them already. But uh, yeah, I usually don't update my drivers right away. I usually like wait a couple of weeks. So that's a, mm, I guess a good one. sign. Uh, it's not one specifically. It's for actually Horizon Forbidden West. What the heck? They, the this, that's the latest one right now. So I'm assuming by the end of this week that there should be a new one. New driver. For Dragon yeah. Dogma 2, yeah. So what was your experience on PC? No drivers. Yeah, so it, it was the exact same way. As soon as I got to Capital City, I'm like, oh crap! Like I, I seemed to turn in a little bit. So, uh, so I experiencing the same problems. I have a 3090, uh, uh, you know, by the way, for context. So, uh, so even I was turning it a little bit. I think the recommended like a 2070 and like the minimal space of like a 1070, um, for what I saw there. So, uh, so just keep that in mind. Look at definitely look at the specs if you want to get this on PC. So hopefully, um, when the game actually comes out on launch, um, like you said, those drivers will come out and it'll, uh, you know, help the performance a little bit. It would get 
some uh some patching some updates uh for the actual game so uh we shall see but right now it's playable but there are definitely those points where you see it and you feel it and you're like oh crap but again it's not a slideshow but you can tell the frames are definitely dropping to like you know 30 40 um frames per second if you're if you're running you know vsync and have it you know at a steady 60. and i am playing on the xbox series x so for the people curious about the performance on console i would say it's more than playable uh, i read online somewhere the rumor is that it's running at an uncapped frame rate but it never really hit 60 but it doesn't really hit below 30 and like when i read that i started paying attention yeah. and like that's how it feels playing like it, the game is not running at 30 when i'm playing it but it's also not running it it's not that smooth where it's running at 60. 60. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah so like I would say for the most part, 80 to 90 percent, I've had no problems. The game has ran fine, but there are certain areas where there were dips. It didn't turn into like a slideshow. It was still very much playable, but you could tell it was struggling a little bit. So, like, I think that they're probably going to have to patch it once or twice on PC as well as console. Um, But like it, it's more than playable, in my opinion. I think the game runs fine um, for the most part. The worst issue that I did run into was I went to touch one of those pond portals, you know, where it takes you into the it, it sucks you in and you could pick all the little ghost ponds or whatever the game locked up on me one time um Ooh. yeah and like my shit was stuck for like 30 seconds i thought my um i thought i was gonna have to like close app and like restart the game and then literally when i was about to close app the game started moving again that only happened once in like my 15 hours but the game oh, does i'll give credit go ahead i almost forgot i will give credit i'm i have like 20 hours on this game on pc and the game has not crashed once that's a good plus to say yeah, I've had, I've 20 had. hours like no hard thing, crash though. Yeah, for a day one thing, I had never had one hard crash where it just like just closed out randomly. So that's a good sign. Yeah, so for people worried about the performance, I'd say it's all right. Um, it's 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 running over. So it's running OK. Uh, so from us three, uh, the way we're going to wrap this conversation up. Uh, do you recommend Dragon's Dogma 2 day one based off what you played so far? Yeah, I've. I think um, if you okay, let me rephrase it. If you were a fan of the first game, a hundred percent, yes, this is everything you wanted from a sequel. Yeah, if you love the first game, yeah. If you never played the first game and you kind of were just expecting it to be Elden Ring, I would say watch some reviews and see what a lot of people are saying about it. Get like a multiple multiple like viewpoints on like perspectives of the game and then decide. Um, but I will say, if you are a fan of the first game, I think that yeah, this was a day one for you. For others. I mean, it's this or Rise of Ronin, and I heard Rise of Ronin wasn't wasn't going crazy. So, I mean, if these are your two choices to pick from, or you just go to that backlog and you can finish Baldur's Gate three. <laughs> I watched several oh, videos man. about Rise of Ronin, and like all the people that were saying that, like, I'm still going to reserve judgment on all. every video that I seen complaining about that game. The gist of their criticism is it's not what I wanted it to be, and like to me, that's not really. Which is what I feel like is going to be similar to Dragon's. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like both these games are going to have the same. Like, I watched a video and dude was like, the combat's like Sekiro, and in my head, I'm like, that's a good thing. Like, what are you? Like, <laughs> 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 Yeah, so they're wanting it to be Ghost of Tsushima yeah. instead of Sekiro. In fact, the videos I watched, I felt like a lot of people were just comparing it way too hard to Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, does it feel like Neo? Really good. People said me it was like a slow down Neo. I haven't played it. I don't know. I was just going off. What oh yeah, you know, you're a fraud. I forgot. Uh, JJ, you played Neo, right? I played a little bit. Did, did it look like to you more like Neo or, or Ami? I don't know if either of you've played it. I've played, played Neo, but I haven't played the. Played a lot. Played a okay. Of Neo, yeah. But speaking of what you were about to say, by the way, so what if you're somebody like me? I've never played the original Dragon's Dogma, but okay. I am looking something to scratch that Monster Hunter edge. I don't know if you've been into the Monster Hunter life. So like, if I want to scratch the Monster Hunter edge, this would be that one. Like with, with people who are waiting for Monster Hunter, want to so, get Dragon's Dogma too. Are you a Monster Hunter fan because you like the way the like the fights with the, the monsters fights. are? I don't care or is story. it the story is just, okay? I want to go around. Hunt how deep monsters. are you about like the customization of like i know there's like a, that's a big thing about like the armor and you skip like is that like a big part of it for or is me, it just more just the combat stuff for me it's the combat if i'm having fun slashing and then picking up loot and drops and then fighting harder monsters harder monsters harder monsters that mm -hmm. combat if that element exists then i'm gonna probably play it because that's the challenging aspect like would you say dragon dogma will challenge you 
to. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. I've gotten clapped well, several times. Yeah. 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 That's how big yeah. is that challenge then? And if a Griffin shows up, up, run. There's like that's actually an active like <laughs> tactic I will tell people. Like you don't have to fight. These, like what TBH said. I think he said it during his preview. He said he was just minding his own business, and I'll, Griffin just came out. Of, I'm not even joking, bro. I'll literally just be minding my own business, this bitch ass. I'm not even joking. I go to the Dune part. There's this Griffin that flies in this open area. So I jumped his ass the first time. But he pussied out. I think it's that same me. Griffin I saw in the pre because in the Brit in the preview. They it, bro, back. the monsters he literally come. Me, it's not like they're nearby and they see yeah. you fighting something, so they come mess with you. They got the, the Griffin came out of nowhere and said, What's good? And I was like, What What's the good? fuck is whoa. this? I literally heard the music. I was like, Whoa, 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 what's going on? Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. And he just slammed down on me. And I was like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. So we just started fighting and I was whooping him and then like we we cut into his eye and stuff like that. So he fell to the ground. We I was slashing at his neck and then he just got mad he flew in the air and just flew away so i was like i was like yeah fuck off so then i keep i mind my own business like a day or two running down the road the same i knew it was the same one because his health bar was exactly the same like it did not change it, it was the reset. same health it bar reset. it did not That's reset right. it was a i was like wait this is the same motherfucker and he came down with the same injuries and started to beat the bricks off me again i said oh my god griffins. Yeah, I got I got like some kind of. Yeah, yes, I think some of them. Yeah, if you don't, that's what I said. Of like how I felt like the world feels like certain like monsters have like actual like perma life to them. I feel like there's certain NPCs or certain bosses in this game that's like this is a one time thing that shows up and when you slaughter it, it's gone. Like you're good, but you or, have to they'll, they'll they'll keep coming back or whatever. Yeah. Or that Griffin just heard you as Hufflepuff. Um, what's the I'm name? I'm not Hufflepuff. I'm a Slytherin. What the fuck you talking about? That's a lie, Jay. Don't disrespect me. Don't you fucking disrespect <laughs> me ever like that again, bro. Come on now. That's that's Jay. Would you recommend the game, Jay? Um, if you are like me and this boycott Capcom, didn't know. If you wait for only Mushin and Power Stone, no. Um, <laughs> this guy has his agenda. <laughs> he is. Power Stone. I'm, I'm saying those bitches, man. I'll keep that same beef. Um, no, I, I, I would recommend it. I would recommend it for you. <laughs> Especially if you're if you're a huge um, RPG fan. Like, I, I think this is right up your alley. But um, like Ito said, if you're, if you're thinking this is Elden Ring, like if this is going to be a replacement, nah. Just, I, I think you should just wait for, for uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree to come out. And then, you know, that'll scratch your edge. But uh, a lot of people were excited about this. So I, I think, you know, already uh has a lot of people interested in it and i don't i don't think a lot of these people were original dragons dogma fans like i didn't play the original at all and, and again i had no interest of uh, playing this one until well first i got a code and second uh everybody was hyping it up so i'm like uh you know what i'll go ahead and try it out and yeah, yeah and see how it is so uh yeah i recommend it i, I think it's a i think it's a day one cop i recommend the game if you're a gameplay kind of person like me just running around beating shit up high octane action customization you can give your character a bbl in this game i'm recommending it that's just true <laughs> i'm not joking <laughs> yeah so i 100 it's, it's if you're looking for a hardcore kind of rpg uh it's, it's a day one cop to me i recommend it um but yeah that's all we got on dragon's dogma 2 so without further ado we're gonna move into the news section of the podcast and this game has been brought up several times during our conversation of dragon's dogma so we might as well start with that and that is uh elden ring it's got some dlc coming out called shadow of the earth tree uh and according to reports it'll have a whole new brand new area similar to the size of Limgrave, which for those unaware that's the first area that you come into the game after you beat uh after you fight that little spider mini boss or whatever uh there's over 10 new bosses eight new weapon categories um there'll be new dungeons and whatnot and like caves uh there will be bosses that will be equally as hard as millennia um, and there will be poison swamps. There's gonna be a whole lot of content in this. This doesn't really seem like regular DLC, but more so of like a full blown expansion. And of course, there's gonna be like new story beats. Um, are you a fan of Elden Ring, uh, Omni? Yeah, I. Well, I didn't finish it. It's one of the games <gasps> I didn't finish. Yeah, so mm. it, I'm a play. I, I, I mean, completely, completely honest, right? Something came out. I was playing the game, but then a new game came out while I was playing it. And I was like, well have to stop playing it because now everyone's about to switch to the new game so i i uh my, my first dark souls where you know people in the comments are going to be curious what was yeah. the game that pulled you away from elden ring uh, i don't remember i honestly don't That's crazy. i'm i feel like i'm on a never-ending mm -hmm. loop of games pulling me away from a new game pulling me from a new game pulling me from a new Ooh, game. piece and of candy 
Once, yeah, exactly. That's Zelda, the game. Playing Zelda. It might have been Zelda. I don't even remember. It might have been Zelda, now I'm thinking about it. I think Elden Ring came out. There was um, another game that came out as around like a week or two after. Came out so, June 21st, 2022. Yeah, it might have been that. But I, I feel like I'm always on a time limit where I'm like, okay, a new game just came out. I got to beat this before this new game drop. And then I got to beat this new game before this new game drop. And if several new games drop at the same time. So, but no, I, it's literally one of the games that are on my backlog that I have no excuse that I should be beating, but I have like 10 of them that are also in that same category. But uh, yeah, I, I, I loved it. I enjoyed it. I just need to like make the time aside. To Was it Pokemon? It, it might've been Pokemon. Pokemon. Wasn't the last one broken? Horizon. The Arceus no, no, uh, Arceus. It was Arceus. It, it came out. It might have been Pokemon yeah, Arceus if it came at the That's same time. That's what my guess is. I did. It was like a little bit before that. Arceus, yeah. to be honest, I I hate Pokemon games, but I was I I was. Oh, I don't blame Arceus. you. Arceus kind of. <laughs> I don't blame you at all. Do Do you remember the last boss you fought uh, in Elden Ring before you let it go? It was a was it a ninja? It was a dude that kind of looked like me. It was um. Ninja. It was it was a fast creature. It was kind of like an assassin type creature. I was just I think chilling. I know what he's. Does he go invisible? Maybe it was like I was just wandering out la 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 la, and it was like a, a circular area, and it was oh like, like, yeah, it was yeah. And I walked up in there, yeah, and this dude just started like jumping specters. me, and I was like, "What? Yeah. Let's go!" Mm -hmm. And he whooped my yeah. ass like several times, but he was fast as hell, and he fought like a human type creature as opposed to a monster like creature. So I can't remember what his name was though, but that was the last boss that I remember fighting. I remember. Just getting lost in the sauce, and I I like games where they they you fuck around you find out. I love games like that where you're like, oh, that's Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, this yeah, guy that's, over that's here looks kind of wild. Let me yeah. go. Let me go peep what's going over there. And suddenly you got level 30, 40, 50 monsters. And if you want, you can you know try to go find some loot. Maybe if you explore or run away fast enough, you might find like an item you're not supposed to run into or something like that. But I like the idea of. I don't like the games that have restrictions of where you need to go and piecemeal you and push you into certain places. So, yeah, if, if Dragon's Dogma has the element of Monster Hunter, because I like Monster Hunter a lot, the combat wise, I could get lost in the sauce in this game as well until the, the newest game comes. I don't even know what's coming out soon, but something's got to be coming out soon. We got, we got the well, here's the thing. Um, this comes out, I believe, in june or is it may i believe it's june this dlc for shadow of the earth tree so um if you made it to this part of the podcast make sure to leave a comment in the comment section hashtag finish elden ring omni that's gonna be that's gonna be like <laughs> a little code for people who made it to this part of the podcast yeah, no, he early you got I, to I, june I look it up i forgot the name black knife assassin this man is yeah he, black he knife, early yeah. in the game bro that was that was one of the that was one of the first ones that like i think you know, i like, went the i went so i did the thing where i found like places that i wasn't supposed to be and then and you I went off spent, in there i was yeah. eight hours. like, you ever, like i'm like <laughs> i get your ass beat <laughs> there's one part and there's one part where i did a teleport and they teleport your ass into like the level the highest level of the game or something like that like you ever did you go to caleb <laughs> did they tell uh, did you fall for the, the caleb like it's like it looks like hell like the sky keeps yeah, red yeah, and shit yeah, yeah you, 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 got like, you went to, you went to ohio and i died you went I was to like, ohio. Wait a this is bullshit no i'm gonna go back in there so i'm the guy that, i'll spend like 10 hours in a place i'm not supposed to be not really making any kind of like leveling up or story progression but i just want to survive terrible conditions to say that i did it kind of thing uh, so i was getting lost in the sauce that's why i didn't beat it because i didn't care what i was doing as long as i was having fun but if i get back into it i'll get lost into the sauce again i gotta beat it but i, I gotta say i gotta say focused i gotta actually like try to be like okay where should i actually go because otherwise i will just be playing it for hours and hours doing nothing mm -hmm. i think based off that statement you're gonna like dragon's dogma too because when you get into the open world it's one of those games where you can run anywhere and you can get fucked up by a high level boss if you're low level yeah, it doesn't matter yeah, so you'll like, like it. it um like the non-hand holding for sure jay you like to spam magic and use uh the tier mimic uh what are you thinking about this dlc man for shadow air tree <laughs> <laughs> i might go back to it man like y'all literally not allowing me to beat those allegations i did it one time oh <laughs> made it made to one time man but that was fun like i said i i didn't know that that was a thing because this is this is the thing i'll be like i picked the maze because i was like i've never the played scrub a class souls game i never played a dark souls game before right like the, the first dark souls-esque game that i played was sekiro right okay. so that that was my entry I into too, by the way 
definitely. I beat that one. Mm, all right, all right, all right. Cause that that's by far my favorite. Even though Elden Ring is really good, Sekiro is still my favorite. So I was like, all right, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm gonna make a mage, right? And then as soon as I did that, like the whole community just shit on me. They're like, why'd you pick this club class? We don't play mages. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I was like, I didn't know. Like, excuse me, I'm like offending everybody, like offending the whole, like the whole world who play Dark Souls games. And I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm about to, I'm about to continue to, uh, to, they, to go in into this. I'm they not bully, switching my oh, class. They bully? Oh, you stayed. You stuck. What you said? Now they, no, nah, they ain't bullying me off of it. I played the mage class all the way through. <laughs> And I and, and I got I got, one, I, got, I got this one spell. I got this one spell that I call the purple crack rocks, and it's it, it gives you these rocks, bro. But they they do so much damage, and they always stun. Like they always stun the bosses. And I just spam that shit, and I went <laughs> with the whole game and did it. But uh, but that was that was the most fun I had. But then after that, after I beat the whole game, then I went back and I uh, I respect and now and I was like I want to try something else. So I made a I made a strength class after that. Um, that had had a little bit of faith. So. Uh, so I went back through it again. I literally played through it again and got literally back to the same point. So I was like, okay, like I can do this now. Like it, it was no problem. But S- since y'all, but I, ain't gonna lie, I was, I was scared. I was a little scared in yeah. the beginning because I didn't know what I, what I was in for. So I was like, I'm gonna make a mage and I'm gonna just sit back, right? Because I'm not trying to pull up on anybody. <laughs> literally, everybody saw that freaking uh the, the golden knight, bro. And and it, you know everybody it was like, yeah, I played it before. They were like, go ahead, go ahead, fight him. You beat go ahead, fight him for this. Why were you scared? You beat like two Souls games before this came out. Right, that was Why like, were you? Scared. Elden Ring was a whole different game. What are you talking about? That was a totally I, I just can't believe you'd be scared. I was like, nah, you're a veteran. Bro. You beat Sekiro, bro. That's it. You, you locked Yeah, you beat Sekiro. You should, that's just, you should fear nothing at that point. That ain't, that ain't the that same, bro. Like, no, nah, that ain't the same. You can deflect. You got to be in the pocket. It was different. And it's like one on ones kind of type. Thing. Yeah, I know. What exactly. So, so, all right. So, all right. It's, since the game's coming out in June, it's March. How long, if I started from scratch again, does it take me to be? If Mom. I was to stay on the path. A if you lock in a month, a month. Yeah, it took me a month in. to beat it. If I lock in, because oh, I'm yeah, thinking of, man. I'm thinking of how, how much you're just gonna die. Like that's a considerable amount of the playtime. You just die. You know, I die once, and then that's it. That's all I need. I just need one oh, download, God. and then I'm. Oh, you're gonna be down a lot. And, and then <laughs> here's the thing, because if you want to play the DLC, which is very important, there are two bosses that you have to beat yeah. in order to even access the DLC. Oh and yeah, it's Mog, it's Mog and Radon, and and for some reason everybody's saying that Mog is is harder than Melania, and I still don't believe yeah. that. I still don't believe that, but I I didn't boss that literally you're locked and you have to beat them. I didn't even beat Mog. It's it's an optional boss. So when I read that, I literally booted the game back up. It took me like 30 minutes to beat him. He was not that damn hard. Yeah, yeah Rodon, Rodon, he's also an optional, which I didn't know because Rodon, like before everybody got to Melania, like Rodon was like the boss. Free that everybody patch? was talking about that yeah. motherfucker free was, patch, a menace. He was a bitch. Yeah, free patch that motherfucker was, was crazy. A menace. So, um, so I, I understand it, and, but once I found out, cause I was like, everybody was hyping it up. Cause again, word of mouth was crazy. 2022, like everybody was just discovering stuff like at random and then they just showing it. And so everybody had me thinking that this was a boss that you had to go beat. So I went over there once I got, you know, to a certain level and I was like, okay, like I'm going to, I'm going to fade him now. But once I got to him, he was patched. And so everybody was like, oh, you a fraud, you a fraud. Because <laughs> I was like, I didn't, I was like, I didn't know. I was like, yeah, I was like, I didn't know about pre-patch uh, right on. But I was like, when I got to it, I was already exploring other places. So again, that was the beauty of it. But, you know, I, I was like, you can't, you can't fault me because I, you know, I beat the balls after the game got patched. But, uh, but, but then again, it, open for that. Like, oh, so yeah, God, like you need an open. Yeah. Option to fight like the, the balls. I just your game. I was saying that too. I was, I was saying that too with Armor Core Sick. We take the same thing, right? We was like, yeah. no, you, you need to face pre patch bosses, bro, because <laughs> I'm like, it needs to be an option. Because literally, we talk about this guy here who got put on trial. You see him being quiet right now because yeah. this man spent 16 hours <laughs> on, on Millennia, right? And then with. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> luckily it was pre patch. Luckily it was pre patch, but he was almost on trial, like for real, for real. It was it. Uh, yeah. This man pre patch. I beat a pre patch. I didn't use any fucking bullshit. I fought. Uh huh. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. Good for you. Question: Do you do you have to beat this game in order to play the DLC, or do you have to just get to us like just beat the side bosses and then you can just jump to it like in the middle? Because that's, that's the case that he, he might not need a month. If it takes him like if it's like oh just I, okay, get so the log, you I, jump to ba- this. based off of them saying you had to beat those two bosses, I don't think you need to beat the game. But the issue is, and I forgot to bring this when we first started talking this about. I read some articles. So um, the director is saying you won't be able to cheese the DLC, meaning that there's a new leveling system inside of the DLC. So basically, you'll be able to bring your character in with your gear and your moves. 
but you won't be as strong. Everybody's getting nerfed, basically, because there's going to be some yeah. type of new leveling system. I didn't really 100% understand it, but I don't think you need. Don't quote me on that, but I, I think you should just because if they're nerfing in-game builds, if you go in halfway through the game and you get nerfed again, nerfed again, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really. Rough. It seems kind of counterproductive. So I would say beat the game first. Oh Jesus! Okay, yeah. I wonder why they didn't miss Melania because you know this. You know their their brother and sister. You know the Michaela. So, uh, so that that's interesting that they didn't make Melania a, a boss that you had to beat a mandatory. So I don't know. Like cause Melania is also optional in the game. Like you don't have to fight her. Fake but play you through like, though. I, I mean, that, yeah, that's what everybody said. That's literally what everybody said. It's like you didn't really beat the game unless you fought her. So, you know, t- take that as you will, Omni. But uh, yeah, I would recommend to beat the game. But again, just those are the two bosses that you have to beat. And both of those are optional. So I, I would say just by that alone, you should probably at least beat the main story. But you got to beat those two bosses. I'm going to run least. it back. I'm going to run it back because it's, it's a must play. It's it's it's. It, did it get game of the year? I can't remember. Yeah, it did. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it, I, cleared. I, I gotta, it cleared. It cleared. Yeah, it cleared like a month. <laughs> it's not it. The Last of Us 2. <laughs> game of the year, it beat out. I was thinking, it, did it beat out? God of Ragnarok. War. Try. Yeah. God, that was God of War. It, it was God Ragnarok. War. Yeah, Ragnarok was like the only one that was like, it was like, uh, I had it, basically the two games that were fighting for it was basically between God of War and that. And um, yeah, uh, Elden Ring one. <laughs> I, I got. I got. I, yeah. I can't not play Game of the Year. So I'll, I'll yeah, you should play it. I think it's really good. I think it's. I think it's a game that's like. It's kind of hard to say, but it's like. I try to tell people a lot. Of, some people are still like, ad, of like adverse to like playing Souls games just because of the reputation they have. But this is like one that I feel like was the first time where I was like I saw a bunch of people who normally would never touch a Souls game ever were like. Okay, this thing has just so much like hype and people talking about and playing. It's like I'm gonna give it a try. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna try to get through it. It's like one of those games. Where it's like it's hard sometimes to recommend Souls games, but this is one that I'm like, I feel like if you're a gamer who's into action games or into like RPGs, I, I would say this is like a must. Like you should definitely play this game just to at least experience the world too. Because when everyone's getting their ass kicked at the yeah. same time, like everyone's oh, yeah. playing it and everyone's getting their ass kicked, you see mm-hmm. clips of everyone yeah. dying the same way you did. You're like. All right, we all die in. This is this is this is pretty dope. So I think it's going to happen it, again with Shadow of the Earth Tree for it, sure. It was a moment of history. I would actually say like it was gaming history to just like that, that was first month of Elden Ring was in like it was literally like I remember in our Discord we had an actual dedicated Elden Ring space and people were spamming like putting in tips. It was like hey, I found this thing on this map and because the the map was terrible, so like they were like showing the map and putting circles like hey, go here. There's this thing here. There's an item there. Check out this place and that. Like there was just so much cool stuff. It, it, it felt like for the first time in a long time that like gaming felt like back when like we were kids where it was just like back in the day there was no internet there was no day one ign dropping a whole guy playthrough showing where all this stuff was like none of that existed it was just you were on the playground you talked to your friends about it or maybe you got lucky and you had a magazine and that told you that, that was all we had though you still had to beat the bosses so you decided like, to do it right yeah you still had to just and that's what i was saying at the end of the day it, it doesn't matter what you find or what you see when you come across that boss it's your skill versus versus the the ball so it, it that's why this man took 16 hours to talk all this shit but he took 16 hours and that boss whooped his ass <laughs> 16, 16 hours straight six traumatized some, some some people say that's resolved the true hokage that's resolved i don't, I don't know if you look at that gameplay footage i don't know if that was resolved that was more like uh <laughs> Someone losing their mental health. Just yeah, like, it was it was insanity. It was insanity. It was insanity sure. Yeah, was, they always show out when we got gas, bro. Don't believe it. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Who was the the first boss? The dude. I, I think I fought a boss that wasn't the first boss. Margaret? Who's the guy that? I can't remember his name, but he he swings at you right, and then right As before you want to swing at you, he, he comes back and cocks again. And oh, and then swing. holds it and then slams on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah about to hit so you, right? So yeah. you dodge, and then he based your dodge. And it winds and up again. You. I, what's yeah. his name? Whatever he is, he was my first. Well, boss. I think it was. I think it was Margaret. I think it, 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 Margaret. he was nice, like. Um, boss. Yeah, he, he looks like wooden. He's just like uh, oh, oh guy, demon. You can knock him off a bridge. Yeah. Apparently, I didn't even know. Yeah, but yeah. He's like a, it turns into a hammer or something like that, and then he smacks the hammer. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. Spent I know. A long ass time on that, so I'm not going to lie. The, the allegations on that one too was kind of rough. That one's recorded. Well, here's somewhere. here's here's the beauty of the situation, right? Like, it's not the same game anymore. Uh, due to all the crybabies, they've patched the game several times, so it's easier. Uh, and then yeah. also. Uh, if you're struggling with the game compared to like when it first came out, there's tons of guides, best builds. Matter of fact, one of our friends in GI 
just no, so yo, shut happened. Up. Shout out, shout out, shout just out. Just so shout happened out, to have the Mikhail, best weapons Mikhail. and armor to defeat the hardest Mikhail, boss in the bro. game. Just oh. happened to have it. So I mean, you could uh, you can you could look some stuff up on YouTube if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you, say, you, could, you could use Google. <laughs> you can use Google if you want to, but you know, no, we ain't judging. We ain't judging. Just finish the game. <laughs> oh, What's the name? Uh, but yeah, that's that shadow of the earth tree. Um, I got a bunch of Sony news for you guys. Uh, some bad stuff. A lot of bad stuff, actually. Sony's been taking L's. Um, the first of which since the last podcast, they had over 900 people laid off, which always sucks to see. I think EA had a bunch of layoffs as well. And then also, I was just curious to see one of the things that came out of the layoffs is it was reportedly it was reported that there was a Twisted Metal live service game in the works that was canceled alongside all of the mass layoffs. And I was reading the article when this first came out and I was curious, do the kids care about Matt? Um, Freaking up, mass mass layoffs. They do. Do they twisted care about metal, 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 twisted metal, twisted, twisted oh, metal? Oh my god! This guy keeps saying. We got you. I got what you're saying. My I, brain is you know, I feel like it's we played it right. It was our childhood. It was goaded. It's one of those things that I think if it comes back, it might not hit the mark. And they got to figure out a way to brand it. To they got to brand. They got to rebrand it. It's got to be completely rebranded for 2024 because. It's a good game. It's a great concept. It's one of the things that we talk about. Like when we have, when you have these talks and these shows, you're like, what is a good game that they need to bring back now and remake it? And so that is brilliant. And it's always like Twisted Metal is always one that's brought up and like, yeah, they need to remake this go to game. But if they don't market it properly, then it won't hit. Like, uh, I don't know if y'all saw the, the TV show Twisted Metal, the new one that came was out. Was it good? Peacock. It was actually pretty it, good. I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. good. I thought yeah. it was going to be. So ass, because they had your boy uh, uh, Anthony, Clarence uh, on there. Can't get alone. <laughs> they had your boy <laughs> Captain America on there, right? And it, <laughs> and I was like, this ain't this ain't gonna work. And dude was actually kind of goofy, funny. I, I was like, wait a minute, this 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 is something I can eat and watch in the background. And they had Will Arnett as as um, what's his name, the clown guy. Sweet tooth. And he was he was sweet tooth. He was excellent. So I was like, okay, this is something. So if they can make a good TV show. They can make a good twisted metal game, so I didn't even know they canceled it, man. I'm kind of sad. Damn. Uh, do you remember the one that came out in 2012? No, I didn't catch exactly. Nobody does. <laughs> exactly. They tried already, Omni, and it didn't work. So why would you try it again? I, why I think didn't it work? It, what happened? Nobody cared about it. I can it take it as you get again. I, I don't think it works because honestly, I just think Twisted Metal was a good. I feel like there are games that are like good and great, and then that are like classics that stand the test of time, something like Super Mario 64. And then there are things that are just good for the time. And I think Twisted Metal's biggest issue is its gameplay loop is not interesting enough. It's a car combat game, and a lot of it honestly is based off of luck. You're shooting and hoping you're hitting somebody. I think a game uh, like Mario Kart, the reason it works is because it has car combat in it, but the main component is you want to win the race, which takes skill and there's an extra element on top of it with the combat but when you just put us in an arena and you're shooting machine guns Battle at each other Royale, like random yeah it's like it's like eh, it, the gameplay loop i don't think it's strong enough i think you should just leave it in the past that's okay yeah, and the ips maybe. probably aren't strong enough either like you don't got like you know like everyone wants a new f-zero because captain falcon's are really but do the kids IP? care and that's what i brought that question up yeah, no. just, i don't think the ip is strong enough. they would literally be like they were i think they would literally be like at this point like oh it's a character off of smash brothers they wouldn't say oh it's f-zero they say if they care oh they have the character off smash brothers who's in this this Back racing game I, I feel like right exactly, yeah sony's sony's been reported to try to keep getting these live service games and i think this is because of fortnite and i feel like what these companies fail to realize is a large portion a large part of the reason why fortnite was so successful is it appealed to Gen Z and Gen A? It was a new product that was for them, but Twisted Metal is something for some of those older people. I don't think it's going to appeal to them, and I don't know what they can to do that. So I think they should just focus on new IPs, which that's, that's a whole different conversation. But is there you know, an example I'm, of of a new, an older IP getting renewed? Like I guess Final Fantasy, I guess, but that's kind God of God of like, War. God of War. God of War. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. God of War was with some God of them. Yeah, that did work. But, yeah, but to be fair, them, but they one. rebranded God of War to appeal to they the younger generation. Kratos was originally just a hard ass swinging swords. Yeah. Now you they know he's got he's feelings. I love my small. son. Yeah, the dad, the dad the dad the dad was They rebranded him. Kratos was like, "Die! I hate everybody." Yeah, no, you're right. Remember, he was over there fucking hoes and shit, and then he changed. Yeah, yeah, he changed. 
Yeah, yeah. But the millennials and the boomers were like, who the hell did not my credo? Like, that's what they, they were like. <laughs> my so, so, I'm just like, bro, they just I like his episode. I like, I like I like his evolution like too. too. Yeah, I like him too. I think it's a natural like, evolution. Like, I, yeah. I think it's a natural yeah. evolution. We, grew up we realized that, yeah, that's that's what we, we all turned into. These hoes fighting in the bar. And then we all were like, this shit's tiring. Exactly, bro. He had a kid. Like, the kid is just literally going to destroy his age. He's like, all right. God damn it. I got chill, man. Exactly, yep. exactly. So some of them do work. Um, you know, I there, there's definitely proof of that. But Twisted Metal, like you said, it's just it's it's too just there. Like there's no way that you can innovate car combat. And I don't think that that's going to appeal to any audience. And it's just honestly something that I just don't want to see anymore. Like you said, I, yeah. I love Twisted Metal. Like Twisted Metal 3 and 4 were like some of my favorite games back then. And I just can't do it. Like I, I'm so glad that in live service too. That's the thing that really pissed me off. Live service, Twisted Metal? Absolutely not. That was this was not going to new work. New car so every I, month. Yeah, <laughs> new just, car. It just, Grand it just no, <laughs> It's like all these studios, and we talked about this on last pod. Like they were saying, like ninety, like ninety to ninety-five percent of studios now like have a live service game, and now we're seeing like these mass layoffs happen, and all of these live service games that they were planning on are getting canceled because they're realizing, hey, like this isn't sustainable. We're wasting resources, we're wasting time, we're wasting money trying to create these games, and how are we going to successfully take the time away from the juggernauts, which are Fortnite, Minecraft, Roblox, and even Apex Legends in the, in a smaller sense? But like these games are just dominating right now, and it's going to be super difficult to take, like let alone you know Gen Z and Gen A. But take us, or you take our time away too. It's not happening. You right, you right, you right. And then I was, I was always make this argument too when it comes to the racing genre. Like Mario Kart has such a strong grip on this. Like it's, it's astronomical how strong that Nintendo's Mario Kart is. Just the racing game for like the entire world. Like yeah, you can get that one or what? What's probably the second one? Forza is Forza probably Forza, the second probably. biggest one. But outside yeah. of those two, they they monopolize racing games to the point where you try to bring in a new racing game concept they're going to be like well why would i play this if i can just keep playing another mario kart game it's they have a very strong monopoly grip over that and it's hard for people that the last time i've seen anyone enter that scene was uh what's that soccer game it's not racing but it's the soccer oh uh, rocket league game rocket league right rocket league yeah. brought in a new interesting take on racing but you know why playing soccer and that's why it probably did so successful. But otherwise, you don't see any racing games come out and break, you know, like, oh, wow, this racing game is so much better than everything else. You, you never see anything revolutionized because Mario Kart is just too strong. It's bring it's back blur. Strong. It's a very hard niche. <laughs> it's probably why they're not doing F-Zero. Why would Nintendo release F-Zero and then create its own competition where it could just do another They DLC just combine it, Mario Kart. Diddy Kong Mario Racing 2. Diddy Kong they, Racing? They're not bringing back Diddy Kong. Uh, Diddy, Diddy Kong, Kong they did not, Crash Racing. Was, yeah, you know, man. Sonic, Sonic Racing, I enjoy Sonic Racing. I was about to say, yeah, because uh, I, I yeah, you brought up there was nobody out here innovating. And I would argue Sonic Racing Transformed was pretty innovative, but a lot of people didn't play it. And honestly, the last Mario Kart stole a lot from that Sonic Transforming game. Uh, with the with the uh, with the different vehicles like transforming and all that stuff, uh, but like when you go underwater, go in the air. That's all like, in the new Mario yeah, Sonic Kart. Yeah. Doing all of that, yeah. Damn. Uh, that's so yeah. Just took it. But you know, Sonic is in bed with Nintendo now, so I guess it's okay, right? And he's also a loser, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> the world's fastest hedgehog can't win a race. It's crazy. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh shit! I'm a Sonic. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. Uh, other Sony news I got for you guys. Um, it's been reported that Sony has halted production on the PlayStation VR 2. And the reason oh, being oh. is that it's just not selling. There is an overstock right now. Basically, imagine a warehouse just stockpiled full of headsets. They can't sell them. They can't get rid of them at Best Buy, Target, wherever you shop, Costco. Uh, so Sony decided to stop producing more until they can get rid of them. And I'll be honest, I don't think they will. I don't see nobody talking about this thing. I don't know anybody who wants it. Um, I think they're, they're so desperate that reports came out also that right now they are testing and preparing to launch it on PC, hoping that people will buy this device on PC. But then I'm like, there's already the MetaQuest. There's already the HTC Vive. Um, I, I know there's some other Steam one. Uh, there's a bunch of headsets Valve on PC. Index. Yeah, the, the Valve Index. There's a bunch of headsets. So now they're trying to come to PC with the PSVR 2. Um, what's your take on this ethos? Why do you think it's failing the PlayStation VR 2? Uh, for the reasons you just said, just like how the Vita failed, because Sony doesn't know how to support their hardware, and uh, I'm still salty about the Vita, so uh, fuck mm -hmm. them for that. 
Uh, yeah, I just think it's they they don't support their hardware as much as they should. Uh, I guess the pro this would be is I got a feeling is just like they've been doing with their PS5 games. They'll probably be porting if they get it to work on PC. They'll probably be porting over those PS5 PSVR games now onto Steam. So then Steam will have them, and then you know well, people on, who have uh, headsets uh, will do that. That's that's another problem. I don't know if you've been paying attention. Those PSVR games, most of those are on the MetaQuest, so they already exist. On God. Other than maybe like what the Horizon game, that one's exclusive. Yeah, Horizon. Yeah, but if if you go and watch those PlayStation VR, uh, are all of them actually like multis? They're all like they're mostly multiplayer games. That's another issue they have. I didn't even know that. I thought they were all only on PlayStation VR. Wow. Okay. Um, that might be a problem. Why? Uh, I think also the on top of that is just um, there's better market leaders in vr space like i feel like the mobile market and specifically like facebook has done a real like their latest one that uh headset is phenomenal i i tried it over a friend's house that headset's really good i mean apple right now is doing its own thing with its own little vision thingamabob so um yeah i just feel like playstation just feels like a afterthought i think if they made the pricing more competitive because i think it's more expensive it's than 550 the, it's too expensive absolutely not yeah and with yeah, taxes it's 600 it's 600 let's be real here. yeah like, <laughs> i was gonna say maybe they find a way of like maybe with the ps5 pro being confirmed now that they're working on um maybe, maybe they find a bundle it like kind of what they were doing with horizon to increase for horizon sells that's why horizon sells a lot is they Sell bundle it like 700 say or with, something say with spider-man they just sales. pull it yeah. into every ps5 yeah, bundle sales. yeah yeah they just need to take a loss on it i think because it's just stuck in the warehouse take a loss on it bundle it together with the ps5 and just get it out there so people just have it and then maybe they can increase that uh that that user base to then convince themselves to make more psvr games i don't see how me personally, I don't see how me or anyone in this room I, I can think of, unless someone here has one, would just wake up one day and want to go out to the store right now and buy a PSVR. There's like no reason. Well, uh, one of the killer apps Resident that came Evil, out. Didn't they just drop Resident Evil for uh, the PS? I can't remember. I thought I saw it. Oh, I think they were talking about uh, was it Remake, Village? right? Yeah, I think well, it was Remake it might have been and remake, Village. But VR, but I'm not sure. Because, I mean, I don't know if I'm a boomer. I don't know if this is a boomer take. I still feel like we're not in the, the VR phase yet. We're, I, I feel like I agree. the demand is just not there. Like, I I know I have know so many people who play games. And when I go over to the places or I check out, hey, what you... Nobody ever says, oh, I'm on my VR right now. Like, no one has ever been like, I am currently playing on my PlayStation VR or my whatever. I'm like, The battery like, lasts like two hours on these things. That's one of the biggest <laughs> right. issues. Then every game on there is a generic first person. That's There's no killer apps for this shit. I would argue we can get to that VR place. And I think who proved it is with Apple because they charged $3,500 for that headset. And a lot of people went out and Everybody bought that. Copied. Yeah, yeah and that shit don't even got no apps on it. So, like, I Green. think we can get <laughs> there. But, like, PlayStation is just marketing it all wrong. They don't got the killer apps, not at they least. What? Less, um, games, less games. It did yeah. one big, sh one big thing. Like, the thing that's crazy, that's crazy is crazy is last year. Like yeah, well, what happened was crazy. Last year, they literally, was it MetaQuest, MetaQuest literally launched a killer app. That, what was it? That um, uh, Asgard game? That game got like nines and tens. Like oh, yeah, I was I like, what? yeah, yeah. yeah I was saying, I was like, Wait, what? It, it didn't get a good marketing, but I was like, like they were saying like it's the best thing since Half Life, Alex. I remember that was the last VR game that like I saw got a lot of flair. People were like, this yeah. is really, really good. Um, and Asgard came out, and people were like, this is literally one of the greatest VR games I've ever played. Uh, and on top of that, like I do know that there's like a big community of like VR chat and that sort of thing. Like there's a community of people that like like that type of stuff. Mm. But I agree with you. I think it's just the barrier entry is too much. Um, I'll be honest you it's some nerd shit to a lot of people <laughs> it's it's just like all right this is ridiculous like when you see motherfuckers walking around with the, the, the apple thing on their heads you're just like Whoa. this fucking loser yeah, like like do this yeah yeah and the only reason why uh because normally if any other company had done that right walks on the street what do you think fucking nerd right but because apple does it it has that oh it's cool because it's apple it's the apple, apple branding and it's so now it's, it's cool flex, so. yeah so right. it's a flex so now it's a cool thing now it's in now it's hot um i hate to say it i pray to god apple isn't the one that causes it to go mainstream because I'll, I'll literally i'll just be so upset are you if apple it ends hater? up being you're, that. Apple, you're not a not a huge fan of apple i'm not an apple hater <laughs> i just don't like their <laughs> i just <laughs> 
I look, I, I, I don't agree with Zuckerberg on a lot of things, but I do think that his video that he did when he talked about it compared to the, the, the concept of a closed garden and an open ecosystem or a closed ecosystem, yeah. I'm in the camp of I would prefer it to remain as an open ecosystem where people can mod it, develop it, do what they want with it, that sort of thing. Apple, don't be letting you do none of that. They, they say, this is our shit. You don't go in there. You don't mod our shit. You don't do nothing. I, me, I just don't like that type of thing. Um, people can have their iPhones or whatever it is, but me, I'm just, I'm a, I used to be on that whole thing. Like we've had this shit for like two years before Apple people got their shit. But like, at this point, it's just like, people are just so indoctrinated. I just don't care anymore. Yeah, it it's is just like, to a brick a wall now. Yeah, yeah, you talk to a brick wall. I just let them have it. Like whatever, they, man, you got branded. it. Like this guy up here. Before, before we get off of it with the PS VR, can you even do anything else besides just play games on it? Like, like can you watch porn on it? Like that. Uh, the YouTube, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm like, like besides besides what's Texas. on the PlayStation itself, like because I know the PlayStation, you know, have all the app Netflix and all that stuff. So, but I'm like, yeah. outside of that, like, is there anything else unique that that you can do with that? I, I think that's the point. If you can, Sony is not marketing it correctly because again, the Meta Quest they marketed like, hey, you can you know watch a basketball game, you can go into this VR world, you can Wait. you know do NFT stuff. Like, they, there's they, another issue though. Even if it could do something different, what Meta has and Apple has over them is it's not tied down. Even when Apple has them, right? yeah, like you have to yeah. plug into that PS5. So am I supposed to keep that around? Like you can with the Meta it's Quest, annoying. I can walk around the house. I have a Quest too. That is what's cool about them. All the computers it's, inside the headset. The same thing with the Apple. Same thing. Doesn't yeah. PlayStation? They had that. What was that system that they tried to? Do? It was kind of like the Switch. What was that called for the PlayStation? Oh, the fucking Portal. The PlayStation yeah. Portal. Mm -hmm. the, the Portal thing. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it was wasn't fake heard about fa it oh. came out and never heard about it again it's just you, you know what they need to do is the, like valve valve can come up with one and then just make it so you can play half-life 3 and then there it'll sell like mm -hmm. hotcakes half-life 3 hey, I mean, on valve's own vr and and you've got a, a, the highest selling vr of all time I'm not back. gonna lie to you. They they already are killing it with the Steam Deck. Like that that is a phenomenal piece of technology. And like, granted, like they used to suck at that shit. <laughs> like I had I, I, I was in there in the beta. I got the beta one. I was like, yep, I'm gonna get in on this, but I have some doubts. And it was, it was it's big, and it's like I yeah. can't, it's, it's it's hefty. Like you when you start but playing it these games, and you start it playing works. with the emulators, and you got yep. like playstation 2 on there you got, i'm like wait a minute this is yeah like and then yeah now, like all in the palm of your hand yeah i waited on the oled and like i said that's one of the greatest purchases that i've I made like literally sitting there just playing my pc games like in the bed just chilling like it's it i don't think there's any any greater feeling than obviously you don't know, be in front of my computer so that's, that's one of the greatest things like so steam and valve knows what they're doing like uh, again it it took some baby steps because you know you're always going to have those woes with you know uh first first product remember the steam boxes first edition remember that oh, <laughs> you remember right, steam boxes? Uh, those are hard you remember you remember steam controllers <laughs> yeah they they were terrible so it's so not only they yeah. didn't take l's like they but they, they fumbled a little bit it. Yeah. yeah they learned yeah. from it they finally came out with something good so sony just keep like they, they're taking way more L's with all these products and, and like you said I mean I'm fully on board like I don't think I still don't think that we're in the VR space yet like we tried during the pandemic years because you literally cannot go outside so how are you going to interact with people so a lot of people got VR headsets during that period but once we got back outside bro ain't nobody no, nobody care yeah. about this stuff anymore you, like it's, it's a very you, small audience that does do you guys think that like VR is just it's just a time where as time goes on it's just going to become more irrelevant when ar technology becomes so good where it's just like you don't need a vr headset anymore because now it's like we're augmenting digital into real world apple like that's i, I feel like Ap apple's vision kind of like portrayed that with like the whole oh you can put this thing on your wall and stuff like that right yeah. i feel like mm -hmm. if we get to the tech we get to the period of time where then technology is able to work like as a contact lens right so now like you just put this lens in your eye like right like and glasses then or something right or like glasses right if we get to that point where like the form factor can get small because that's kind of what the idea with phones right like because remember phones started off bricky big as fuck and they were like you know in a car or they were hard they were like this these bricks that you'd have to carry around with and then because the technology got better things get smaller 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 like is that just what vr is natural like it's just going to become augmented as like time goes on like there's no longer to be the need for like some so sort of device on your head it's just gonna I believe dissipate the anime dystopian ghost in the shell shit it's gonna happen but it's, mm -hmm. it's 
not now like way out in the future yeah future. we're all going to have headsets we're going to be sitting back in a chair connected to something's going to connect to me somewhere and people are going to be plugged in like i think that's when the virtual reality but i don't think we're there anytime any soon it's it's a fun concept it just it's really fun but it's not uh it's not what's the word it's just not normalized enough it's not something where you come to somebody's house and you see someone just in a vr right that's just not going to happen ever at this point in time but in the far out dystopian cyberpunk future people want to try to create that but we're not at that point so do you think we'll see in our, lifetimes. In our lifetime maybe when we're like not grand, in our grand old people on the porch about to pass out i don't even like yeah, the idea that unless, can, bad, unless i can unless i can hook up and start playing Sword Art Online, like right now. I just go lay in bed, put the VR on, and I can mm -hmm. live the Sword Art Online experience. I it's, it's not going. Then I do you do you think it's a? I thought about this too, where it's just like our generation. We grew up on movies and media that basically cautions us against that sort of thing. So I feel like our generation would be very against plugging ourselves into stuff. But yeah. I feel like. As you know, generations go on, the younger generation would be like, oh yeah, I'll do this shit, this shit's lit. Like, we don't care. But I feel like us, we would be like, where we're like, we've seen Terminator, we've seen, like you already know about the whole thing with the, the AI, where we're just like, turn it off. Like, I've watched Terminator, I know what this shit could do to us. So like, in Matrix and stuff, so. You like, like chips in people's yeah. brains. We, we, it's happening, it's just, yeah. I don't think in our lifetime it's gonna be there, but I, it's it's gonna be, it's, it's novelty right mm -hmm. so if it's going to be novelty it's not going to sell so you got to price it big that's why apple vision is so smart because they made it stupid expensive so people can build so they can flex and it's novelties and then maybe they didn't put a lot of uh, quantities out there as well so they'll that'll be successful but trying to normalize playstation vr 2 while also you know people are now get a lot of people still don't have playstation 5 yet so it's like i don't know if people want to get onto that ship quite yet I don't, yeah. that's another conversation in itself by the way i had a hot take about people not having ps5s i'm tired of this fucking conversation bro because yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, we were literally over it and i feel like nah, i was talking about saying, every story now i was saying i just had a random thought like when i was like, walking the dog i'm so tired of people saying they can't afford ps5s which you know that's a real thing but hear me out the reason i don't like it is because the original <laughs> excuse was oh COVID, the bots are buying them all up they're marking up the price yeah, now there's yeah, ps5s yeah. everywhere wait 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 is it coming to ps4 i can't afford it like which one <laughs> is it bro because now i'm starting to think you couldn't afford it in the first place and if that's okay if that's no, no, no. admit that's it that's fair. okay that's this is why that's this is why you forgot it was the COVID checks. That's why people who could get oh, them. They <laughs> were getting, oh, they yeah. The Biden oh, yeah. 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 They were getting the bailout money. They got the bailout money and they were like, I can buy a PS5, but they were getting pissed because they couldn't get to them. <laughs> but now they wasted that money. Yeah. That's fucking funny. Yeah. Remember the COVID checks? Oh, uh, shit. They blew that over. Yeah. <laughs> Uber Eats. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Uber Eats. Yeah. Right? That's the PC game. The PC gaming market is just becoming too strong. Yeah, it's just getting to the point where it's like, why well, get a PlayStation Five when I can just get a PC and play? Like, Especially because all these games are coming faster and faster to PC. Like, PC. Yeah. Hey, people yeah. are waking up. You know, it took them a long time, but especially after Hell Divers, that's a that's oh, a big thing. Know. Yeah, after Hell Divers, that that's a. I can't imagine at this point. Anytime somebody looks in the future, and says, "Wow!" Like, <laughs> we every time we got to do that again. Make sure it's on PC every single time. Yeah, it's just gonna happen now. What's the name? Um, other Sony news I got for you. This one's pretty interesting. So I'm starting to believe that there, so there was a rumor. I think it was either a podcast or two. We talked about an article came out that so the game that Bungie is working on, the developers of Destiny, there's a new game called Marathon. It's a remake of their first game that they ever made. There's a rumor going around that Bungie flew out a bunch of content creators and they let them play Marathon early. Then they put them in a room and they said, if Marathon comes out tomorrow, Raise your hand if you'd buy it. And apparently the rumor is nobody in the room raised their hand. Now, we laughed at that. We took it with a grain of salt. But now I'm starting to think there might be some merit to this rumor because an article just came out today that the director of um, what's the name, Marathon, one of the head developers of it, has been replaced by uh, someone who's been working. He was the director of Valorant. So the leadership has changed. Uh, it seems like this game is in development hell. It's in peril. They don't know what to do. And then also, I've seen another article come out. This one's more of a rumor. Rumor, take it with a grain of salt. I think this was from some random PlayStation forum. Some trust me, bro. Uh, I I know a guy <laughs> was basically saying that Sony regrets purchasing Bungie. They feel like it's a loss. 
they feel like they made their money when they first got them with the first DLC. But ever since then, it's been downhill. And Sony's heads uh, are talking about coming over to the States and basically trying to restructure the company and take over. And they're basically just trying to save themselves for a sink. It, it sounds like Bungie is a sinking ship. What's going on? You're a game developer, Ethos. Give us some insight. Why do you think that they changed directors to the Valorant director for Marathon? Also, Valorant sucks. No, I mean, Valorant's hella successful. That's why they switched it over to Valorant. <laughs> you hate it, but there's a reason why no, it, it is, entered it into, is. do you feel like this? It entered into a cluttered marketplace full of shooters and it dominated and it True. became one of the most popular shooters. That's not something that's, that's a feat you put on your resume and makes you like, oh, you want to make a new shooter for us? Yeah, immediately. Yeah, you're hired because you created something that went against a very like a high order. You're going against Call of Duty, Battlefield, like you're going against the leading marketplace people during the pandemic. So mind you, you were working on this before the pandemic and you got it released during the pandemic and it blew up partly also because people needed to do something inside the house all day. Um, I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, uh, I think also, uh, strangely enough, um, Joe Blackburn, who was the like, he's like the producer. He was like the head honcho head producer for Destiny. He's also stepping away from that entire order. So he's leaving the Bungie's leadership of doing Destiny 2 for something else. I don't know. I don't know if he said he's leaving Bungie or if he's doing something else. But he said in the coming months after their next DLC, that's been uh, just hell right now. Apparently he's done. Um, I based off what you're saying, I mean, this sounds like exactly what I was saying and me and Siggy were saying from the moment they, they bought got, Bungie. They overpaid for We Bungie. said they overpaid him. I said now there's no way in hell Bungie's <laughs> worth that much. <laughs> yeah, I, I said it from the very beginning. I was like, there's no way in hell Bungie's worth this amount of money. Like, compared to what Microsoft was buying, it just felt very, like, reflective of, oh, God, Microsoft bought this. We we need to just do something. Tip for tat. And they just said, yeah, tip for tat. And they, and they just bought, but it, it made sense why they bought Bungie from a, like, we need to get into the... Um, Live service. We need to get into the live service. We don't have anything like that in our entire library. Uh, they can't just buy themselves. But you, into right, but you can't buy your way into that. I mean, Microsoft would disagree. <laughs> Microsoft <laughs> believes they can just buy their way into everything. Um, but uh, well, to your point, too, Sony doesn't have the war chest that Microsoft does because it's not as big. Um, so they can't just willy nilly just toss you know, 60 million, 100 mil, 100 million, uh, a couple billion at a company and just like Bethesda and just, oh, we'll just buy you and we'll just take, da, 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 da. We'll just take you and, and yeah, it's ours, right? right? Like they don't have that flexibility. So they have to be more smart about it. And to consider that even then they still over, what I felt was, I was like, don't get me wrong. Bungie's a good acquisition for, I guess your game plan, but to spend that amount of money and then like, hopefully you get your, your money back on this, I guess, cause they were supposed to, I guess, follow up on this. But me personally, I'm already a little salty about this because this is, this is allegedly, but allegedly Bungie went over to Naughty Dog and they said that multiplayer wasn't it. And th maybe they were part of the reason why that shit got canceled. And I'm mad as hell because I was an original Last of Us. Like, I loved frat factions. Yeah. And to see that they were trying to turn into a live action and they fucked it up and they couldn't get done. They were just like, there's no way we can finish this thing and even do single player. So now nah, we're just quilling it. That shit hurt. So I, I, I don't know. I, I do think there's a truth going on. I think a lot of companies over uh, they, they got the. Basically, a lot of uh, companies got greedy. Uh, they went full on gluttony mode when the pandemic had happened. They saw high numbers of sales, high numbers of people engaging in their product, and they over embellished and said, oh, this is just going to be consistent, which no any person in the right mind would be it's like, no critical indoors. thinking. <laughs> if I was having COVID, stupid. So now they're just now the, the piper's coming to pay, right? Like now you got to come pay the piper. Uh, they're now like, this is why all these layoffs are happening and stuff like that. All these people that just thought they could just hire a bunch of people make multiple game projects they'd all just be successful because everyone's indoors there's a bunch of new people who are now getting into gaming because they're stuck indoors they're gone now people going back to their regular jobs so this seems to be just the the wave just crashing the other way now so i think this is true Th this picture i don't know if i agree with if this is real that's, that's what but i think the original article yeah this image i this fight is probably cap but do i think that sony maybe is thinking of ways to make um, Bungie profitable, especially after that's already fact that Bungie was about to what die out if they didn't get um, acquired. Like they were basically in the hole. Um, yeah, uh, that seems to be consistent with what's been happening. So yeah, do you imagine Bungie just one day just made an announcement and said Bungie's closing? 
Like you just woke up one day and that just was reality. Surprise, man, I feel like nowadays I just, it's I, just I, insane. I would not be surprised because I I feel like we keep getting crazy news every week that that's something I like these the guys that made Halos. I would be a little bit surprised. I, I'd yeah, be, that'd be like Halo, shocking. Bro. What happened? To yeah, Halo? it's nostalgia, man. It's nostalgia. Halo. I would be surprised. I think I would be less surprised if it was Ubisoft that just like I mean, hey, guys, that'd be like. It. <laughs> I mean, but that, but that would still be that'd be still shocking too, though, right? Like if, mm-hmm. even even as much as I as much as I shit on Ubisoft, we all shit on Ubisoft. I still think it would be kind of shocking to just wake up one day and Ubisoft being like, "We're done." I say, like, it would not in the choir. We're done. It would suck because they've made some of my favorite games. I would say that. Yeah, like, just, damn, they're, they're, they're up gone. and gone. But surprise, they're just gone. Skull and Stink? Nah, nah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> come on, man. If I call Jubilee game, come on, bro. <laughs> it's definitely going oh, in that direction. It's just they they need to recover. Hopefully. Quadruple like, A, yeah, like these, these shareholders at all these companies, like they're I, they clearly don't know what they're doing. Like it's it's getting really bad now. It's getting spooky out here. So like so I wouldn't be surprised if any of these companies just went belly up and they were like, all right, well we've had we've done all these layoffs. All the execs, all the shareholders took all the money, took all the profit from that, and we're just going to all bow out. Like it's it's just done. Speaking of uh, shareholders and companies, let's keep it there. Um, Warner Bros. A lot of news has come out about them since the last podcast and none of it positive. Uh, In specific, we're talking about live service. We've been talking about this a lot. I'm so fucking sick of this word, by the way. Um, So an article came out and apparently the heads at Warner Bros. They want to focus less on creating in rent enriched uh immersive single player experiences and they want to find a way to monetize the properties that they have and in specific they said wow you know harry potter the harry potter game what was that shit hogwarts legacy hogwarts sold legacy, yeah. so 23 million that's pretty good but how could we turn this into a subscription service and how can we do this for other games that we have in our catalog that's the gist of this article right here that news came out um so like a lot of people are upset by that but then also news came out that warner bros would be erasing and delisting games uh because they also have adult swim games they publish titles uh apparently a lot of indie devs just woke wow. up and they were like yeah our game that makes you like squid, bye bye? yeah yeah, and you know the crazy no. part is that if you, if you read this article, the developers were like, yo, they just pulled our games off of Steam. And the worst part is they sent, they sent one of them was saying, we sent the link to transfer the ownership. All you got to do is basically just put in like a proper email. It takes like two minutes, right? They was like, ah, we don't have the capacity to do this shit. So they're fucking over the indie developers that were under them and basically just erasing their games from existence. But then on top of that, they're trying to find ways to monetize the hell out of upcoming single player games that they have and uh i got i got some more stuff but let, let's start there how, how we feeling about this jay bro this is this is terrible they, they saw what happened with suicide squad they try to make their live service game it failed and they said you know what let's double down on that shit let's double down on it I was like, lose my, they trying to burn cash bro that, what the heck? it's ridiculous like you aren't they doing this with movies right now yeah. Aren't they also like Coyote burning movies? Acme. Coyote versus Acme. What? Yeah, the yeah, fuck? they canceled that. Like, it's really bad. As soon as the uh, um the Discovery CEO came came in, like it's oh. bro, he is cleaning house. Like, it's not it's not good. And and now it's bleeding over to our sector, the video game sector, because like it's all under one roof. So this is really bad. Like, I understand that Hogwarts, like it's Harry Potter, and everybody was excited. Like, no matter you know how many people try to cancel it, like the game did very very well. And I get it. You see the profits from that. And you're like, oh, okay, let's you know try to double down and make this a lot service but this isn't it like you see you see one you know i I wouldn't say it was you know it was definitely a success but it was you know uh, it definitely went above and beyond probably what you imagine profit wise but for you to just see one thing and it's like oh let's let's just um you know get on hogwarts get on the hogwarts train and try to make it a live service and try to get some of our other ip to turn into live service as well like that's not that's that's not good business for me and again i'm not a businessman but i can even tell you that that's not the way that's not the route that you want to take like this isn't going to get the gamers going this isn't going to take eyes and and again we literally just talked about how are you going to take the market share away from the juggernauts that are out right now like i don't think that hogwarts alone will do it and i don't think that any of their ips if you turn into a live service is going to do it like i think that this again is just another another way to continue to fail continue to waste money i would say cap I would say yeah. You, you think Hogwarts is gonna do it alone? Yes. Do you know how massive Hogwarts is as a franchise? 
You told all, okay, the one thing that every Hogwarts, and that's what I told TBH, because I, I think it's just because, I think you maybe you grew up Hogwarts, but you gotta understand, if they came out and made an MMO or made a co-op open game, I'm just saying, that wasn't like you get to play with your friends, go through Hogwarts like year one, year two, and stuff like that, you're going to class, stuff like that, that would sell millions. I'm sorry, like, I hate to say I like that, that would go massive. That Fortnite, People would lose Hogwarts, their mind about that. But yes. Fortnite, I have a perspective. Fortnite Hogwarts, people would lose their fucking mind. Go JG. quidditching with your friends Ultimate and doing all shit in open world. You gotta fight Voldemort. Voldemort active raids you gotta stop the death use from attacking Hogwarts I'm just saying bro JG. that would go nuts okay, that would so absolutely like, go nuts a lot of times we talk about things on the internet but it only exists on the internet so what made me realize how popular Harry Potter is it's is massive not, it's not just the, the success of Hogwarts Legacy it was Valentine's Day my girl took me to Universal mm. Studios mm. so we can go to Super Mario World. Um, mm. Super Mario World, cool, by the way. Not that great, but it was cool. What's also at Universal Studios in LA Hogwarts. is they have Hogwarts. the Hogwarts place, right? Now, I know. I, I, the, I got Universal here. We walked all <laughs> around that park. Do you know Massive. the only place in that park where everybody was cosplayed? It was the Hogwarts, Hogwarts. place. And I was genuinely yep. surprised. Everybody had the robes on in the school. Was, mm. It was just the regular wands, people in the rest of the park. I was like, oh, these yeah. motherfuckers are crazy, bro. You got to understand. It was like the outside. Disney Jeez. shit you talking about, like the Disney adults. It's like there's literally that I same get, sect I get for it. Hogwarts. It's like people like, and I'm yeah, telling you like now, Disney JG. Yep, yep. I'm telling you now, the, of all the franchises, I think Mortal Kombat live action is stupid. I think any other type of franchise that they currently own making that is probably stupid. But the one that does fit, because of the universe and because of how the fans are, it's Harry Potter. If, 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 it's, you not, if it's not Harry Potter, then what is it? That's the question, right? If it's not Harry Potter, then then stay out the hell out. Of it. If you can't make Harry yeah. Potter a successful live service game, then just give up. That's it. That's this, how I feel. This is the they only thing where if I was an exec, if I was an exec, and I saw how good Legacy did as a single player only, no microtransaction, Legacy, just thing. I would immediately say I want a 10 year plan. I want five to 10 years. I want us to make some form of a pseudo MO like what Destiny did, where you know how everyone was like, Destiny's not an MMO, but it gave you that MMO light experience. We're going to do that for Harry Potter. We're going to make little raids, little, little strikes where you connect with two it other classmates and you go off and do talk, stuff. Bro. Oh, you in the Slytherin yes. in the MMO? Oh, you're no, a Slytherin game? No, we don't, no, we don't fuck I with you. That, you yeah. remember how Pokemon Go was with the three factions and people were all like gangs and shit? It would be like that on, well, on another, the game. And I'm another, telling you, another, blow another up. example is, is I mean, Power World, right? Like the, yep. the, the, everyone was like, I want Pokemon, but I want to be able to, and Power World was like, well, we're just going to do it. We're just going to do what Pokemon's not going to do. And we're going to make it crazy and have guns and slavery and all this. Stuff. And how many units did it sell? 18, 20 million, 25? I can't remember, yeah. but it's it's ridiculous. And like, if you do that with that same concept and break it into the Harry Potter, well, hey guys, you can you can abeda cadaver somebody. You can go online. And, PvP your friends. And yep. PvP and abeda cadaver somebody and join Slytherin. I'm in there. I'm in, I'm, in there one. One. I'm in there frame one. I'm in there frame one. I'm in there. All right. All right. All right. I see it's the same thing. We're going to try my yeah. statement. I will That's retract my statement one. for yeah. Hogwarts only. For Hogwarts <laughs> yeah. only, I will retract yeah. my statement. Everything else? But my, I my, I'm focused on, I'm focused on the, the entire span, though. Like, the, like all of their IPs. Warner Brothers has a lot of IPs. Uh, uh, the majority of those IPs, I don't think would work as a live server game at all. Hogwarts was, I, I, I remember when Hogwarts got announced, uh, everyone thought it was going to be an MMO like that's what they truly wanted and it, and it was great as a single player game but that's what people truly want I remember you was you were speaking about that ethos you were like just make it an MMO and you know people would be would be on it and it's cool if they still do that but will it be the one IP that's going to carry them over the top if they want to go this route like if they're yeah. trying to do other stuff as well then I don't think that's the right idea yeah, Hogwarts yeah. okay you can do that fine but everything else I think you need to again I think you need to scale back and refocus on yes. what you can do and make those again linear single player or co-op or multiplayer experiences yeah. but just don't try to turn something that didn't begin as a live service game into one don't 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 try to mold it into it's like putting a, a a square peg in a in a, uh, in a round hole. Like it's not going to work, right? Like you, no, but you saw that you saw that video though, where they were doing that, right? <laughs> where it was like you put that in the square. Yeah, we put it in the circle. Put it in the circle. Nah, you know what's supposed to fit not, there. So. It's, it's not going to work. I, I would try my statement about Hogwarts. though. Hogwarts would be the only IP that they have that they could you know potentially take it over. I just they're meeting people for like. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I've been thinking about it since Hogwarts Legacy came out, and I was like, if this I was co-op. Yeah. I, if, if I can slither in, if I can choose my house, 
and then I can zap niggas if I can really be out here doing that know, shit. Yeah, then I'm gonna be out here, right? With my with my I, game, we're gonna come out here, boom, fly in there, and then just zap some people, people take their loot, and then hit. Out. It, it, it's because you know Fortnite is so impressively just fun, and it applies. It 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 adheres to Gen Z, like you were saying. Like you got the the, the freaking TikTok dances nonstop, and it just keeps evolving in a way that makes everybody happy and. Hogwarts will be able to pull in that original fan base, both new and old. And mm-hmm. if they just follow the Fortnite flowchart, if they if they they can follow it, it's there. The flowchart is quite literally there, and they have the IP for it. They just have to not. They literally, like you said, they have to put a ten-year plan. They actually have to put everything into this time and effort back. Because yeah. if they half-ass it, then they will waste all of their money. But if they go all in and stop wasting time on shit like the Suicide Squad, then yeah, they'll be good. Her Suicide Squad cost millions of dollars. How much did that, I heard that game cost a lot of money to make too? So it was like, in development they, for like ten years, yeah. Yeah, so like they need to just stop wasting time on shit that's not going to work. Like they can bring in any one of us for, and hey, hey, do you think this is going to work? And we're gonna be like, no, it's just not going to work. It's I don't understand how Suicide Squad even made it to where it it got to, and someone expected this to be successful I, i'm always confused by these guys and i'm trying to figure out where is the one person who's saying this is a huge mistake that doesn't see how this plays out time and time and time and again and then you got like you said hogwarts legacy it just sold the most units of any game of all time so how about you out Zelda. On making hogwarts legacy 2 how about you just make a better version of that and then sell out again oh that's what they did with breath of the wild with zelda and then they did yeah. it again with tears of the king so just do it again focus on what you do good and stop wasting time on things that you do bad that's how i always feel like but they wb right now discovery warner brothers they're burning cash and they're doing it on purpose they're they're tearing down projects that are complete they are, I don't know if this is because it's tax write-offs. I don't know what it is, but they're taking completed projects or projects that are almost near completion and just tearing it down. And something is going on, I think, tax-wise, for them to be going this outside of just reducing their their, their or increasing their profit margin. But something's going on, right? Now, and they're just tearing everything down. And they're rebuilding trash, which doesn't make any sense. So I don't know. We'll see how they go forward. They got a W with Hogwarts Legacy. If they want, they can keep taking it further. But my guess is that they're going to keep creating trash. Hogwarts just, sold more than Zelda. Just a reminder, sold, more it sold the most units than everybody it was the in the entire game year. last year. Yeah, yeah that, that doesn't to, tell you. Yeah, I think that brings us to the uh, multiverses, right? You wanted to talk well, about? Yeah, that? I was going to get to that, but I was going to first ask you. I was like, what, what's yeah. your take on live service games as a whole? Because I feel like we rant about it all the time. What do you think of live service games? Like, like, do you want me to like use Fortnite as an example? Whatever, bro. What's your thought on it as a whole, the genre? Do you play one? Yeah. Well, you play <laughs> what's your current? What's be in Fortnite? I used to be on Fortnite yep. pretty heavy for the first early seasons. Um, do I think they're good? Do I think they're bad? Do I think they work? Do, are they profitable? I mean, whatever you feel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I they exist. And they have a, <laughs> they a place. Exist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they exist, right? And it's it's yeah. there. Like it's one of those things where if I ever wanted to come back and play it, it's it exists. And I, you know what? I haven't played Fortnite in a while. I heard they just dropped uh, the Attack on Titan groups. I heard you can now glide and shit. Now I heard you can you don't have to build no more. Like it's, I find myself it's a game that just keeps on giving because the problem with releasing video games is that they're on cycles. All right. So unless you're making a game like Super Smash Brothers, where you're always constantly doing DLCs, your games have a lifespan that go up and then down and then disappear and never come back. That's just how video games work nowadays. Back in the day, you could buy a game. Oh, yeah, this game is good. And it would just gradually just do well, do well, do well. But now either your game is an evergreen game like Mario Kart or your game just does well and either it hits like super top peaks and it becomes the best or it goes up and then completely down. And now suddenly you're not selling any more units because everyone's playing the game that came out next week that's playing the game next week that's playing the game next week. So that's why live streaming games, I feel like, are that place of a game that continues to evolve and provide more content and obviously provide a lifelong of money. Um, So, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Making a good one is very difficult. The barrier to entry is very hard, but if you do get in there, it's very profitable. 
then once you get in there, you got to stick it in there. You got to be as good as I mean, no one's going to take down Fortnite anytime soon. But you can like Valorant when Valorant came up into the place. I didn't see Valorant becoming as big as it did. And it, it got pretty big and now they're pretty happy and successful. So and then you got situations like Overwatch where it's like they, they were on top and now everyone makes fun of them. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I have mixed feelings about it, but I think it's, it has a place in the gaming space. I love it if it's also good IPs. Like again, if they made a live service Hogwarts, I would be on that shit. I would be like very, very interested. But other live service games that come out, unless it's something legendary, I don't find myself needing to go to any of these places. That's kind of like my my synopsis of it. But yeah, you you want at least one. Yeah, I to think be very successful. I think they can be good if the goal is to make a fun game first and foremost i think the issue and i think that was the goal at first i think that's why we got PUBG, fortnite and a few others apex i think what's happened is they companies have seen how much money these people make and they're shoehorning the idea into a game that should have been one in the first place and the first game that comes to mind is suicide squad i think that would have been much better served as an action a standard action adventure game with maybe co-op online co-op with like your friends but it didn't need to be a live service game um and i think it suffered because of it because once you make it a live service game a lot of times like it can affect the gameplay loop um and there's a lot of unoriginality on there so it's like yeah i think the intentions were good when it first came on the scene but like now it's just like uh, it's as soon as i hear it i'm like uh, let me see the gameplay loop before we decide right. if we're gonna be excited it's, about it, it. You realize they're just trying to monopolize and cash out yeah they're, they're too like, focused yeah, on cash. the money you, you can see it cash. coming yeah like it's, it's very easy to spot at this point yeah um and that brings me to the oh, next was- it's a good example. I felt like that they were yeah, just trying to make a good game. Um, that brings me to my next topic, Warner Bros. Live service game. So the interesting thing about that article that came out about um, Warner Bros. wanting to focus more on live service games, there's a game that came out last year and then disappeared and said they were an open beta, even though they had a beta a, a battle pass that you could pay for. Uh, they went into hiding, uh, said they're going to work on and fix the game. We haven't heard from them in like six months. This article comes out saying from Warner Bros saying they want to focus on live service games. And next thing you know, we get a tweet from Multiverse is saying taps Mike testing one, two, three, which basically they were hinting at. We're about to come back. And then maybe like two or three days later, a trailer drops say stating multiverses is coming back so i was like my first thought is i was like there's no coincidence that that news came out and then this game comes back my first thought is i'm like i did like the game but i'm also like oh they're gonna monetize the fuck out this game and then two um just talk about multiverses as a whole so what they announced what's coming back is they moved the game to unreal unreal engine 5 they said the game looks better i'm not gonna lie i think i'm old because i really don't see a difference uh they said they improved the net code new characters um and it drops may 28th um are we excited about the return you're the fgc guy uh omni how you feeling about multiverses what's your thoughts about it as a whole in the return it's trash it's gonna flop Woo! it's, it's gonna yeah, it's <laughs> yeah this may hate that was- <laughs> <laughs> look look it's going to tr- it's, it's warner brothers is already creating terrible um they're, they're creating no one likes warner brothers right now because of what they're doing with Coyote versus Acme, their their uh, their name is getting dragged in the mud. And Multiverse has already pulled a fucking idiotic move of bringing people in to play a game to pay for it, pass, and be like, "All right, guys, we're done. We'll catch you later next year." Thanks. What the hell was that all about, right? They they generated the hype, but this is going to flop. The only reason why Multiverse is allowed to exist right now. It's because Sakurai is asleep, okay? The guys over there at Smash, they're chilling, they're relaxing, they're waiting for Mario Kart and the Nintendo Switch 2 to bring it out. But the lifeline of multiverses only exists just because Smash is just asleep. And I've played the game, and I wanted to like it. I was, I'm was i a huge, huge platform fighter type guy, and um, it feels very artificial. It, it doesn't feel right to me, in my opinion. I also played the Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl game as well, and that one was even more garbage and trash. But the lifeline of that game is not going to be worth whatever the cost that they're doing. It feels, like you said, it feels very monetized. And I'm being completely honest, I'm saying this, frankly, up as somebody who has been reached out to for the prior game and this one coming up in May about potentially playing it, okay? So people, I could potentially be somebody in here. So I'm coming from a neutral standpoint that unless they come in strong, it's not going to work. And already you've got people 
like on Twitter, when they came back and started talking about how they were doing the marketing for this game, they said, this is miserable. This is terrible. Why would you showcase the game like this? Why is this the teaser? You wait all this time just to be like, hey guys, here's the game again. And it's, it's got a new engine and eggs look a little bit better. You're not and, a fan of the McDonald's it. Happy Meals? Right. And then see you <laughs> later. The game is going to flop. Uh, it's not going to last very long. And it's only a filler until Smash wants to make. And then uh, even before, the Smash won't even have to come out anymore. It's. I, I'm trying to be nice, but it's one of the games that, in my opinion, is just, just not going to do well because it's just not good enough. That's it. It's not good enough. It's a copycat of a ghost of Smash Brothers. And it's not good enough. It's just filling the void until someone gets something that's good enough. And it's going to get rinsed, washed, and taken off and have no people playing that game within a month. That's my opinion. You can call me out on it when it happens. Give it a month. And they're going to spend a lot of money. They're like, hey, here's a tournament. Hey, here's a million dollars for you guys to see Shaggy. They're pouring all this money for people to come and play it. And you'll get people like Hungrybox and all these streamers who are sponsored and paid to kind of promote it, make it big. And then once they're done the marketing well, everyone's going to stop playing it. That's my opinion of Multiverse. Um, I halfway agree with you. I like the game. Um, mm. I enjoyed playing Reinhardt. But where I do agree with you is, despite me Reinhardt? liking it, Ryan Dog, my bad. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Dog, my <laughs> Ryan Dog. Uh, that's, that's I said Overwatch. My bad. <laughs> yeah, Overwatch. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Ryan. As you can see, I'm tired. Um, <laughs> I like the game, but mm -hmm. I do agree with you. I'm not going to say it is going to fail, but I'm going to say there's a high probability it's going to fail. And the reason being is, despite me liking the game, logically speaking. I think their priorities are fucked up and it goes back to what I mentioned earlier about why live service ruins games. I knew this game was most likely going to fail when they introduced Black Adam into the game. Why did they introduce Black Adam into the game? Because The Rock had a movie coming out about Black Adam. Now, what's the problem with that character? Warner Bros, one of the reasons why people said this can compete with Smash Bros is because they have a very strong catalog of characters. We have characters like Superman, Batman, and all this other shit, Wonder Woman. They haven't even finished doing the Justice League. We haven't gotten Green Lantern, The Flash, Martian Manhunter, not to mention all these other cool characters WB could have did. And you did Black Adam because the movie's coming out? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're prior to, you guys are more focused on just trying to make a quick buck. I don't think it's going to work because I think half of the, the, the cool thing about these type of games is the star power. And you're not even leaning into what's... This game exactly. was successful exactly. in the first place because we were watching Batman and Shaggy fighting and you brought Black Adam as a character you introduce in season 10 when we run out of characters. <laughs> you brought him in before Black season Adam, one? If Smash nah. Brothers, he would be a me character, a DLC suit. He wouldn't actually be a dude that you can pick. Cause like, yeah, be like a ghost just, character. The, the, another thing about it, man, is just like, again, again, I, I always compare, everyone compares all platform gamers to Smash because Sakurai and the team, they made it magical, right? They, 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 they literally, it feels like something that they poured in so much into that the characters, you can resonate now with all of these IP characters. They made something very special. And you can tell when something is done in a way where someone's pouring into it, like as a passion, as like, I want to make this really good. And someone who's saying, I want to monetize and emulate the, the market here. And that's what I feel like it's happening. Someone wants to monetize and emulate. But in terms of someone behind the bone, if they, I don't know if Warner Brothers has a person that's similar to Sakurai who's trying to bring these IPs to life the way that Marvel did back when they were first making the first IPs for the <coughs> movies, unless they have somebody doing that, it's not, it's going to feel artificial and people are going to see right through that shit. I mean, people are seeing right through Warner Brothers right now. They are artificial. They're, they are taking away Coyote versus Acme. They don't love their IPs and they all about the profit margin. They're not about the people. If they were about the people, they would have released Coyote versus Acme, but they're not about the people. They're about the profit margins first and foremost. I mean, every company is because that's just how it works when it comes to investors, but they're building a bad name and that bad name is going to come across with multiverses and they're going to try to pump it they're going to try to pump it but i don't think it's going to cut that's my opinion of it People you care to, to the next game in a couple in a month do you care about multiverses returning jay i mean i told y'all the same thing in the in the signal y'all laughed it was like oh you play the game i was like yeah like i played the game and i enjoyed it but i can tell again it you know at my old age like i can tell when a game is unfortunately going to fail and i i'm on the same sentiment as, as omni like i i think that the game has potential but 
I don't think that they're in it for the right reasons. And uh, I just unfortunately don't think that any other party fighter can compete with Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers is just there. Like Smash Brothers is, is not in Evo for goodness sake. And it's still like thriving. Like that's it's literally the only other party fighter outside of Brawlhalla. Like I'm, I'm very surprised that Brawlhalla is like still standing strong, still has its co-audience like as a party fighter, in, you know, in that aspect and is still like, you know, doing very well and still having tournaments and still like has money pumping through there. And like you literally don't hear about it unless like you're ingrained in the FGC. But like that's the only other game outside of that. It's just Smash Brothers like that. That's it as far as party fighters. So I don't think that any other game can legitimately compete like on paper, Warner Brothers with the ips that they have should be able to compete but it goes back to what omni was saying like i i don't think that they're in it for the right reasons i think that they're just trying to get a piece of that party fighter market share and i don't think that it's going to work like people will be on it for like the first couple of months but i think it's going to die out again like i don't think that this has the potential to be at an evo and be like a premiere fighter in that realm or any other major fgc tournament that we're going to have because if you don't have the fgc backing then you're not going far at all like that, that's just unfortunately how it is like you can play any of these fighters casually all that you want but if you don't have the fgc backing you're not going anywhere and, and i think that again like omni was saying like a lot of stuff is going to be artificial with like the bigger names who who play smash brothers and other people who play other fighters that they just want to you know try out multiverses it's going to be a lot of fluff it's going to be a lot of smoke and mirrors but when everything is said and done, watch them run away. They're you know once the once they're not getting paid anymore, they're gonna run away, and then the game's gonna die. Mm -mm. Yeah. And you brought up an, an extremely important part when it comes to fighting games, and this is for all games in general. But it always falls back down to community, and like how how diehard is the community, and like the Smash community, the Super Smash Brothers, Nintendo community, they are super diehard for, for Super Smash Brothers, super diehards, and then you got your Street Fighter heads, you got your Tekken heads, right, you got your Fatal Fury heads, Fatal Fury coming out with something soon as well, so you got community. It looks fire, by and, the way. Yeah, it, it, exactly, so you got Warner <laughs> Brothers trying to come in with no community, right, they just, they just like, hey, here's another, but they're not focused on building a community they're just trying to create it feels like a clone and i i i would bet i would bet a million dollars that this game is going to flop after the marketing budget ends and the initial hype done and they stop spending money for people to promote it ain't nobody going to be playing that that's i will spend i'll bet anybody a million dollars right now that's how I'm strongly I feel about it. Sheesh. What about you, Ethos? What about you? I just I I, I I've been in this I've been in this. Fucking hate so multiverses. I suck at Smash <laughs> games, so I don't give a fuck about what happens this game. <laughs> I suck at that genre. I, I I'm not that great at fighting games, and I'm just not good at Smash. So I've got no pony in this race. If it crashes and burns, I'll just be there and watching everything burn. If it survives, I'm like oh, okay, cool, it survived. Uh, I played a couple times, and I was like, this shit is not for me, man. I cannot play this game. So. Yeah, but it is what it is. Yeah. I got you. I got we'll you. See. We'll see. Maybe maybe you'll have a hot take for us on this last Warner Bros game in terms of the news. So um, I'm not going to lie. I thought this was a red flag. I started to roll my eyes and cringe when I first read this. Uh, apparently, Gotham Knights developers WB Montreal has been recruited to work on on Monolith's Wonder Woman game. You guys remember that? Monolith, they're working on a Wonder Woman game. These are the people behind Shadow of Mordor. Well, they recently just recruited some Gotham Knights developers to help them. Now, at first I read this and I'm like, oh my God, this game is gonna be trash. But the way I read this, and I'm hopefully I'm interpreting this correctly, they're just being brought in to help, but Monolith is still directing the project. It's not like super hands-on, um, but as a developer, Ethos, why do you think that you think they're struggling or something? Why do you think they bring these extra people on though? Because you are getting closer to a deadline and you're not about to make it, so you need more. Oh, no. You need more soldiers. <laughs> okay. That was not the, the answer I was looking for. <laughs> that's honest to God, why you get more developers if you you have a deadline coming up and there's a lot of work that still needs to be done and the game's not at the point it needs to be for a milestone. So you tell Big Daddy Bucks publisher or whoever your upper company and say, hey, we need to either hire people or we need to get people who are on other projects the other way. I mean, the same thing happened with uh, with uh, like a lot of games. Like, um, I'm just thinking one on top of my head. Uh, like Bioware, right? For like Anthem or for like Dragon Age Inquisition. Remember how they said how uh, you know, while Anthem they were working- an example was a terrible first start. <laughs> 
Well, I, I'm just being honest. Is like the director said was like the game was like at its current way that it was built. It was directionalist, or it was just like they needed to get the game out. Like the, it, it just like they were not going to. They were missing milestones. They were just like we can't get the game done. So someone steps up and says, "Okay, we need to get this, this, and this, and this done. Like it has to be working. We have to get it done by this date." What do we need to do this? And if it's more resources, usually what happens is, uh, uh, or let me rephrase that. I'll give you a better example. So Cyberpunk's a great example, right? They had some people that were working on Cyberpunk and then they had them working on the DLC and then they had them working on Witcher. But then when they were like, okay, we need to fix Cyberpunk, they moved everybody and said, everybody works on Cyberpunk. We all work together on the ship to get Cyberpunk up and ready. Then with the DLC, same thing. Then they, you know, slowly you move developers onto different projects. Not every developer at every studio is not doing the one game there's usually a main game and then there's like future games or like prototyping or they're working on so usually when this happens it's nine out of ten times from what i've seen historically it's because it's either it's it's falling a little bit behind where they plan on launching it and they need to pick up the pace or maybe there's something that they just need technical help for they just need more hands to like make more models or make more assets so they need more people doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing yet but you're only getting more people because you need them to make the game. That's kind of how it is. Need, help, need, more, need, need some fishing. more hands to help to monetize it, right? No, 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 no. I talked to DX about this. DX, D, uh, DX has uh, sources. <laughs> I'll put it that way. He, he knows people. Uh, he he did tell me. He confirmed me. He said he said he is n positive that that uh the wonder woman game is not a live it's not a live service game it is a kind of like hogwarts legacy it is a monolith shadow war single player experience now will it have microtransactions in it probably remember what they did with it, shadow of war though like yeah yeah but they didn't turn that mission, into a live service still didn't beat we need to talk about that Glad bullshit you admit, that admit you don't beat no game we're not like, don't you start. Time. Don't you start. <laughs> don't you start. Don't you start. Don't you start. Don't you start. That's a totally justifiable reason not to beat that I beat fucking it. game. I beat it. That, I beat it. Yeah, that shit like at the end. Fuck that. Yeah, oh. that shit was terrible, man. The way they made you grind. But from what I heard, this is not part of WB. They're alleged, uh, what I'm sure of, this project is not one that WB's like, turn it into a, like what they did with Suicide Squad, like turn it into a live service game. It seems like this one will remain in doing monoliths who could have remained doing its single player thing and god knows yeah. what happens to the rest of the stuff so i'm excited then i'm wrong about it in the future uh blame dx uh y'all can tweet him about it because that means he like wonder me. woman with the nemesis system does wonder woman even kill people like is that yes, is that, yes. actually yes. Woman, yes. actually she famously she said, famously murders people yeah, she yeah. said i would you would not have any villain i don't have any villains because i kill mine i think she said that because i kill mine it. yeah okay. she said it to right. batman no, batman batman it was one yeah. of the two. And so right. we don't kill. And yeah, he's like, well, that's the reason why Gotham is a shithole. Right. She said, that's why Gotham's right, cool. a shithole, because you right. don't kill your villains. <laughs> My ex Who is Wonder Woman's nemesis? Ares uh, and Cheetah are the two that I know. Gi what's that gigantic woman? Who's her Joker? Like, who's her arch nemesis? The, the biggest one. The, her I feel like she uh, fights Cheetah a lot, but like I, I don't feel like Cheetah? Rose Galley is that the strongest. The strongest, Wait, the strongest Cheetah? I know of is the God of War Ares. Like that, she fights him. Yeah, Ares is a big one. Yeah, it would be the God of oh, War. That's from yeah. the movie, I think. Or no, that's not from the movie. I can't remember. Uh, I think he's like shown or referenced, but I don't know if he's like. Oh no, maybe he was. I didn't watch that '84 shit, so to I don't fair, know nothing about it's that. It's in one, the but. DC universe, so I mean, it could be anybody. The uh, original one is though, because I thought it was in the original movie. The whole reason why World War Two happens is because of Ares. It's like he. Yes. This is terrible. He he manipulates World War Two with the he Nazis. He incites violence by, among humans. He incites them. Yeah, he it's incites like, them to be prejudiced was. and racist. Yeah, yeah. yeah y'all are and, right. And, y'all are right. I, I Google it. It's Ares. It's Ares, the main villain. Uh, yeah. So it, it's, it's probably going to be Ares is going to be the main villain, and he'll probably be pulling the strings of probably military uh, factions heroes. or something like that. To, uh, yeah, or some of your heroes. Yeah, make them want to fight. Yeah, probably be some cameos. Wouldn't surprise me if there's like a cameo, some other you need some, cause heroes. Because can't push it just on her own. She needs. She yeah, needs she'll need somebody else. It, it might actually be okay, but yeah, I'd, I would love to see some more cameos from you know other other DC superheroes. So hot girl. We'll see. Hot girl deserves a spotlight. Mm. Freaking! Um, I got a couple quick bits for y'all before we wrap up the news section. Pokemon had their own little, you know 
Pokemon Day and the big announcement to come out of it. They announced a lot of bullshit. I'm yeah, let's ask Omni. We see in the background, Omni got a lot of Pokemon stuff. I do. Yeah. <laughs> they announced like, digital. Sleeping. I like how it's the, the sleeping stuff. I just like, I just like. Play. <laughs> this is this is how out of touch I I'm am. I'm a Hello Kitty girl. They announced <laughs> digital Pokemon trading cards, as in you open the packs and you look at the cards on your phone. And I'm like, there's no way people like this, right? This is an oh, NFT. Okay. I scrolled no, down to the comments. Said. That's exactly what I said. I was. I scrolled down to the comments. This is like, cool. What? Said, <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Pokemon is going to be the only company that's going to make NFTs yeah. actually work. This is now. It's Just now don't NFTs call it an are, NFT. <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah, it's right. a freaking NFT. It, it's definitely the future that it's going to go into. There, but again, it's, it's the scary concept of them taking away uh you, you actually owning shit now everything physical is trying stuff. to move into physical and taking away and now everything's digital and when things are digital you don't really own it you just have a license you own the you own the license to to that they own it kind of thing and then they can just take it away the service can get shut down it's happening all the time but it's pokemon and pokemon shits money pokemon can sell shit they can sell rocks they say pokemon rocks don't give them ideas 49.99 and, and <laughs> onyx. Go you, you want an onyx damn pokemon <laughs> onyx i'm gonna buy you an onyx, onyx turd <laughs> did they have you were worried about apple you were talking about how apple people in their occult okay pokemon mm -hmm. fans are and, and, and you know what's even worse is that people who hate pokemon who hate them well so they will buy yeah. pokemon because they want to be a part of something pokemon is a it's a uh, what you call it? It's a culture, and if you're not a part of the culture, you feel left out. After Pokemon um, Go, it took over the entire world. Now it's just a culture. It's a way of living. So, Pokemon, this this whole card game thing that they're doing, bro, and also Zaza and everything. It's 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 always going to be a success. How is that pronounced? No matter how bad. So it is. so also the 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 big announcement out of Pokemon Day is a new Pokemon game is coming. Some people are calling it Pokemon Legends Za. Like we smoking on the Zaza or Pokemon <laughs> ZA? Like which one is it? Like I actually have no I idea. This is one I, I skipped. So. I think this was based smoking on, on that Zaza. It was based on black and white. It, it was not nah, X and Y, man. X and Y, X and Y. I skipped yeah, X and excellently. Y when I was growing up. I stopped around. It like, was. It, it was a game. There are fans. I said on the internet, how dare I? I put on the internet that I thought that generation was not that good. I didn't like the setting of it. I thought personally the the game was way too easy. The only good thing that entire generation gave us was megas i think that was the only good thing they did that was how when megas were introduced that was the coolest thing they did but i feel like everything else in that game the new pokemon and stuff like that i just felt everything else was kind of like that was i some people disagree they think it was after it but i feel like x and y was like they shifted to 3d for the first time that was the first game to do it in their franchise and i feel like that's when the thing the light started to dim and then pokemon just started to decline and mm. not be as good as it used to be i i skip black and white they made a remake of the previous version did they skip it's black what? and white everybody says they want black and white i never played black and white but everybody swears to me it yeah. is amazing and i believe them because some people told me the story they told me it's amazing so everybody naturally thought they got they did i don't know why they, they did purple i'm mean not pur pearl and and whatever the fuck the other one is yeah. uh they remade them and people didn't like them they were like what the fuck was that um and i was hoping that black and white was going to get switched because i would actually buy that because i was like i am actually interested in playing the story because i heard the story was actually really good for it yeah but then they just skipped it like i guess they act like it's like half like three they act like it does the, that gen doesn't exist and they moved over to one that i feel like is less popular i was just like why we're going back to france we'll go back to france i was like i don't care about this generation i don't care i don't know i don't like i agree with you i just don't fucking know what nintendo but you, like you said, they're gonna eat it up. They'll say I'm a, it's I'm amazing. So. It, dog. I'm a, I'm a, I was gonna ask you well, why. Sorry, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care about this game. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. This, you know what this trailer said to me? Uh, Power World did really wear, uh, well. We're kind of scared, well. and we don't yeah. want to share anything too soon because they showed nothing in this trailer. Why should I that, be excited about this? That's a good idea. I will say. Okay, so now okay, you're right. So I've been saying this from the get go. First of all, Power World when it got announced years back, I was telling people. I said, don't sleep. Okay. Pokemon with guns do not sleep. All right. This is going to be something that can be pretty revolutionary if they did it right. And they did it right. I don't know how many people are playing it now, but they brought to life something that people from Pokemon have been wanting for a long time. And they did it in an addictive way. Obviously, it's not Pokemon. But they took advantage of the whole monster system and then obviously made some copycats types of thing. But long story short, Game Freak has been sleeping so long when it comes to the Pokemon franchise. There's so much potential, but 
they make so much money that they are probably paid to make it as flowchart as possible like do not do anything special just stick to the bottom line of what keeps working and keep going and don't make anything exceptional because as long as we make it as bland as possible we will continue to make these sell they have no incentive call of duty have, formula just keep yeah, it they have keep doing the same no thing no yeah. competition people are like oh you should play yokai watch oh you should play digimon yokai yeah, i forgot sure, about yeah, this shit. But, what the hell i'm not gonna play yokai i mean i know it's probably a good game but like so Pokemon has no competition. And that's what happens when you have a monopoly over that kind of market there. It's just, it's lazy. And they're going to keep ushering new people. Like our first Pokemon games are going to be kids first Pokemon games. And they're going to eat this shit up. And that's who their audience is, is the world, not the people who are looking for Pokemon to be better. Their audience are the people who are experiencing Pokemon again for the first time all over again. And I think that's why they are so successful because they're not focused on us. People who've been playing Gen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they're focused on the new world every single time. So I don't, I might, this might be the one I, I don't buy. This might be the one where I say, screw it. I'm going to put my foot down. That's right. Now, are you saying this or do you really believe it? Bo, which, what, no, he already put his hand down. He already put his hand down. Do you really I'm believe it? Call cap. Uh, gonna, let me tell you why yeah. I'm calling call Cap. Because in the trailer, it said it's dropping 2025. Now, all the rumors said I that the you, Switch yeah. 2 got pushed back to 2025. 2025. So I'm going to take an educated guess and say the new Pokemon is going to be a launch title for Switch 2. You ain't getting that? That you ain't gonna fall for the hype. <laughs> Look at it. I'm gonna fold. I'm gonna fold. I'm gonna fold. I'm a fold because I'm a I'm a fool, man. I'm a, you know, I'm a Nintendo. I'm a Nintendo <laughs> fanboy, and I hate it. I hate it. And you can call me out. You can drag me, but I just uh, there's something innate in me that says play Pokemon, and if it's bad, I feel like I have a civil duty and responsibility. To play it, I don't. I don't understand what it is. It's it's something in my blood, in my DNA. Compulsion. That tells me I gotta <laughs> play these. The, the Nintendo IP franchises, big ones. If it's a big Mario game, if it's a big, if it's a big big game, sometimes I play it even if I know it's gonna be garbage because I feel like I have a duty as a gamer to like play garbage games sometimes. If that makes sense, like I, <laughs> I have to, I have to. Like you ever watch a movie, you know the movie's gonna be trash, but you feel like maybe you have to watch it as a critic. As a gamer, sometimes you play games knowing it might be garbage. But you got to be a part. You have to know how garbage it is so that you can be justified and say it is garbage. It, I'm trapped, y'all. I'm sorry. You're stuck in an endless cycle, man. It's okay. It's a cycle it's of violence. Swim me with 2K. I got a ball. It's okay. Yeah, got a ball, mm -hmm. baby. Mm -hmm. you, I got to keep playing. Everyone has that demon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, freaking. Before we move on to the last section of the podcast, this is actually breaking news. Just a quick tidbit. Um, the first reviews for Rise of Ronin have come out. Uh, we were talking about it earlier and how like some of the previews were getting down on it. Uh, Famitsu Magazine, which is the biggest gaming magazine. It's the only one I actually Japan. know from Japan. Yeah, uh, they rated the game a 37 out of 40. They had four people on staff review the game and they gave it a 10, 9, 9 and a 9. So oh, take, take oh, that with me. I mean, that's listen, this is the only magazine I know from Japan. They are very um, reputable. So, I mean, yeah, you know, do what it's you want with banger. that information. It might it might be a banger. It might we might maybe those previews. Like I said, when I watched those preview videos, like it, it didn't seem very lukewarm. It, it didn't warm. seem like the dude had an agenda. But then I also kind of didn't really agree with him. It was he was just like, it's not what I want it to be. It plays like Sekiro. And I'm like, I kind of like Sekiro, though, but we'll see. Mm. Um. So, you know, do what you want with that information. We'll see how. By the time this episode comes out, we'll be, we'll be like two days removed before the Rise of Runner. So we'll know going. exactly, yeah. Um, SJW News. We actually got a whole bunch. So we do a, we do a little section on the podcast, um, Omni, mm -hmm. where we talk nice. about all the latest SJW, or this day and age, because I feel like SJW is like a boomer term now. That was like 10 years ago. What is it we called? Should, we should call it the woke news saying. now. We should call woke it the woke, woke section. Woke now, right? No, I thought, I thought you were going to call it the sweet baby news or something. <laughs> 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 So we're going uh, to the uh, woke section of the podcast. Uh, JG is our residential woke SJW member on the show. Uh, we're going to grill him. I don't know how this happened, China. by the way. But um, I think somebody. No, I know how. I know oh, how. Go, go, go. I remember the history of why this was is because you remember the owl? The owl saw yes, all he gave you. That that <laughs> but I didn't say you were designated. Which is the crazy thing. I said that you were Twitter designated by the owl. You are now the SJW. <laughs> I'm I'm the leader, it's time to rustle some jimmies. What would we got? All because what? You 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 watched uh, Captain Marvel? Yeah, because I watched Captain Marvel. It's a Marvel movie. I just said. <laughs> and not hey, Battle wait, Angel I said, I said, 
I just said, what do y'all think? Yeah, I said, what do y'all think about Captain Marvel? <laughs> like, that and like this is really start coming at my head. It's crazy. Uh, mental illness Marvel. is a real thing. What do you think about yeah. She-Hulk? Okay. Freaking, um, <laughs> what? All right. Sweet. Okay, so the big woke story in the game Jesus in space for the last couple weeks involves Sweet Baby Inc. I did not type a link down for this. I'm just going to try to summarize this the best off the top of my head I can. So it. Sweet Baby Inc. is a consultation company in the gaming space that specializes in consulting game developers and studios on being more culturally sensitive towards minorities and other underrepresented groups. Um, it's been discovered by a bunch of the go woke, go broke bros that they have had their hand in a lot of major AAA titles, including games like Spider-Man 2. There's a whole list on their website. Oh, no. And, Spider-Man got a more Spider-Man. Um, Not yeah. Spider-Man. So yeah. it's gotten so bad that they ended up making a Steam group on Steam where basically it detects any game that's been consulted by Sweet Baby Inc. But the drama's gotten even worse because the CEO, they pulled up like some old speech that she gave where she was saying some problematic things. <laughs> <laughs> so can I can I paraphrase? What she, go go ahead, go for, yes. it, go for it. So I I've not watched. I've seen clips of this. So I I need the full context. Okay. Go ahead. All right, bro. All right, so I was cracking up. Okay, because I'm like, all right, she, if 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 she got all, she basically she got all the white people really really angry. She said, hey guys, so I make games and I have a team of people. Mm-hmm. And my team of people, you know, is you know with, with diversity, we have everybody. We have no white people. And she <laughs> said diversity, but no white people. I don't. And she's like, we don't bring in white people because they are a danger to their environment. Like I think she used the word danger, and then I think she retracted, took a step back, and uh. said the reason why that she created her team in this way, aka purposely did not recruit white people, right, was because she did not feel like having to deal with microaggressions of a white person was that her or the ea employee i feel like that was the ea employee oh am i thinking of the wrong person I think yeah the person. no no I I, lost. I, so Wait, okay what? so the one from sweet baby inc she was giving oh. speeches talking about she created the group because she wanted to i'm not gonna lie she kind of sounded kind of egocentric she wanted to insert more the of herself one. i'm sorry you're right yeah, there's you're two right. you're right yeah she wanted to insert more of herself into the game and 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 I guess the way that they've been going mm-hmm. about it, people didn't like it. Um, but what you're okay. describing, that was also on the notes. Uh, we can talk about that too. There was an EA employee that came out. She's working on the Black Panther game, which by the way, I didn't put it in the notes, but a rumor came out today. It's rumored to be uh, called um, Marvel 1943, something like that. Captain America. I remember that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Captain America. She's working on that Captain America Black uh, Pan- Panther game. And okay. she said that she doesn't hire any white people. They're problematic micro trans transactions aggression <laughs> 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 transactions <laughs> My that's what we need right, baby right. Just don't hire right. microtransactions <laughs> basically don't hire what you said so that one got don't the internet in a hoopla she's not affiliated with sweet baby inc she's gotcha, something gotcha. separate she's but separate. Okay, they're, gotcha, they're, gotcha. but they're very similar stories basically so, so people yeah. are just grouping all these things and trying to make a conspiracy of basically that, that games are woke connected. it's too political too many blacks too many gays in the game uh, <laughs> and it's so let's sweet start baby with Sweet eats. Baby then with the ruining. Let's start with Sweet Baby then. What do you, do what's you your take, bro? Do what's my take on it? Do I feel like they ruined gaming? Um, what, is, what, what do you they ruined it forever? For my research, I feel like I feel like their intentions are good, but they're not going about it the best way. I, do you I think feel, it's just media training? Do you think it's just like they're it, blabbing it, it could too be. much? It like, could be. It's okay, probably, you know, you ahead. know how um. I was afraid this way. Like, um, you know how some people feel about like, uh, like dog whistles, right? Like in politics, like race, like race, racist dog whistles, where it's like, I don't say I'm racist, or I don't say I hate black people, right? I just say I don't like uh, individuals walking around my neighborhood after a certain amount of time, and and you know, like you you say certain things that you know someone can like read between the lines, be like, oh yeah, I get you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it was like reverse of this where it's like you should be wording it more of like, well, we like prefer to hire a diversity of just black or other people because we want to get basically there's not their voices are never heard or usually they're they're the minority in these groups when it comes to, like this is would be the media talk version. But instead of that, she just blurts out kind of like 
what people are thinking, but she just says it out loud. Yeah, I think, and I think my, that's why I think it's my issue with the Sweet Baby Ink the stuff is like clearly the intention is good. My issue is what uh-huh. makes them qualified to speak for my black ass. I think that's the issue because yeah. like I do mm-hmm. agree I, where I do disagree with the go woke go broke both, and they won't understand this. Me personally, as a kid, I was tired of characters like fucking Coltrane. That shit was racist, bro. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. So like, I think what their company was from OG, the OG Barrett, Woo! before they changed. They Change them in the re in the re in the uh the new remake. They made him they made him better. But I remember in the OG one, it was just like OG yeah. Barrett. You know what they did with OG Barrett that was actually really good? They they honestly kept him the same almost. Like they kept mm. OG Barrett from the old Final Fantasy Seven, and they kept like his tropes of being super angry black guy. But they mm. like did it really fucking good. Like good, I don't know how to explain man. it. It's like. It's like it's, it's written more like, like a back regular rush hour. Make it yeah. really fucking good. good. We don't care if it's stereotypical. Just make it a really make good stereotype. Good. And so, so they did it really good with that. So what's the name? If you watch a lot of YouTube videos from these go woke bros, a lot of them yeah. are basically insinuating that Sweet Baby Inc. has basically had their evil puppet hands all over every game, mm-hmm. and basically they've come out and said no. What happens is the scripts are already done. We come in and we clean up what we think could be problematic. Now, what's mm-hmm. true? I don't know. Um, what all I can comment on is what the CEO has said publicly. And I'm like, eh, I think you could have worded some things a little bit better because like you're giving these people ammo. Um, but then on the flip yeah. side, I don't like where the go, will go broke. People will try to make it seem like there's no problems in the industry. Me, my stance is always the truth is usually somewhere in the middle. I think they're yeah. both at fault. Yeah, that's that, that's exactly right. It, it, you know what? As me being a person who's covering like a lot of this news all the time on my channel, dude, the problem that I have is that I feel like, especially if you look on platforms like Twitter, where they're all kind of having this forum, right? Mm-hmm. The loudest voices are always the people who are trying to push a narrative. It's always mm-hmm. like, here's the narrative I want to yeah. push, well, and here's the narrative that I want to push, conserve, and then okay here's what's actually happening the nuanced one the boring take that here's the truth no one really cares about because it's actually just boring it's just boring it's actually, here it's a really boring one and it's actually surprise it's not doing any of the things that you two are saying it's just literally somewhere around here but i feel like i'm in this place now especially with the speed bb ink thing is that people are like taking the extremes of both version and then trying to push stories to lean more and recruit more people it I hate it, man. It's it's so annoying trying to sift through the truth now, and I feel like. So when I'm looking it up, I'll see one tweet that says Sweet Baby Ink is they're fine. And I'll see another one that says Sweet Baby Ink is evil. The internet's very divided on it. There's like one side of the internet yeah. where it's like fuck anything related to them. And there's this, another side where I see a group of people that are just defending them way too hard. Yeah. That that is true too. Yeah, so I, I, I see. Yeah. I was gonna say, um, I see that too. Cause like one thing I thought was really good, uh, which I do think is um Khalif's defending it pretty hard, but I did appreciate that Khalif was like, he was giving me a lot of like, I was asking, I was like, I don't know what the fuck is happening. I just need to understand, like, can you give me the full like resources of what it is? I don't need the commentary on it. I just need to be able to say like, because the thing is like, you're seeing all these clips and a lot of them are clipped in certain con, like without context. They're done in small little micro bites and just clip, clip, clip here, here, here. And you see these things like in a vacuum. You're like, damn, that's kind of crazy. Right. But then like I watch the entirety of the entire thing and I'm like, oh, OK, I get what she's saying in this entirety of the thing. And they take like a small out of context pose of I it think- from the greater conversation. And I agree with what you're saying. I think um I, I do agree with omni i think that's the thing that irritates me is like me as a developer too um not only that me as like a, a black developer who is the lead of an indie studio um one of the things that had been really good for us was there were a lot of like, i want to say a lot of resources. there were resources available to us because there are people there are things in the industry that are trying to like kind of like the like, not affirmative action but they are like yeah we realize that the industry is it's, it's a fact it's yeah. majority owned stakeholded and the decision the people who are making the real decisions of what games are getting green lit are white men it, it just it's just a fact I, we don't got to get mad about it we ain't got to like lose our minds about it this is just a simple fact it just it is what it is right and yeah we can do this we can empower other groups as well to be like hey let's give them an opportunity to make these projects that they want to make and people will speak for you know whatever they want to speak for uh if they like it or not you know they're gonna buy the game and like it i just don't like how um i agree with what you're saying i i i don't think a witch hunt 
it looks good on either side, whether you're witch hunting people who are going after Baby Ink or you're witch hunting people who are making those games. Because like what you said, none of these people know. I, I know they try to do the same thing now in Wake and they try to say, well, Saga was in, in, in Quantum Break. She was a white woman, but now she's black. And they were trying to push the narrative that Sweet Baby came in because they were consulting with it and they turned Saga black. And, they're, and the director of the writing said, no, that's not fucking true at all. They did not input Saga becoming black at all i don't know why people are saying this and like there's so many of these like i see them on twitter where so, agenda gets pushed developer comes out and says wait no wait what the fuck are y'all talking about like they consult like on what you said they consult with us but no they didn't make the 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 call on this person being black or a white character or being gay or something like that and that wasn't the case what's the name i, I so the what 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 kind of made this whole thing explode was and this yeah, is what was the explosion the explosion yeah. they caught because sweet baby inc has low-key been around for a while what caused the explosion was suicide squad and i think just my theory, I think they're using the death of Batman and how that game played out because they consulted on that game to basically mm -hmm. create some bullshit narrative that they're ruining all video games because I just pulled up their website. They worked Didn't on they work Alan, Ragnarok? They worked on Alan Wake yes. 2, fucking yes. fire. They worked on God of, God of War Ragnarok. I've seen some people making an argument that they ruined that game because they made, remember, um, the girl that I see people trying to say out, about Spider-Man too. They yeah. made her black. I'll, 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 yeah. I'm a halfway give you that. It is weird to see a black person in a fucking Viking video game. But that sure. being said, the game was still fine. It didn't so ruin good. anything. It, was yeah. 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 it didn't matter that she was black. She was just there. It wasn't yeah. even like there it was, was a one gay story. mission in Spider-Man Two, which was a. So I saw so many I comments. Had the picture one. I, 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 I ain't playing this game. It's got gay shit. No. You didn't yeah. even have to. <laughs> It was a side quest. I'm not gonna lie. When I see shit like that, I do be thinking. I'm like, yo, I think a lot of y'all are low key a little down low because like you're just not comfortable with yourself because it was one yeah. mission, dude. You know you what it is to too. You're just so. You know what it is? It's it's, it's so people. It, you're you're you hit the point. You hit the nail on the head, right? Because when I was doing this mission, right, I wasn't like, oh, I'm, I can't believe I'm playing this game now. Like, there was nothing that triggered me. I was just like. All right, that's cool. They I'm got some my gay skill people points. out here. Yeah, they got some gay people out here trying to get married. Cool, you know. And then after I finish it, yeah. let me move on to the next quest. You know, and, then, mm -hmm. and that's it. But like the people who are like, what gay people? They are here. What? What? And then like the, the 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 triggering of it is just like, are they not allowed to exist, bro? Like, are they? Are you do you not want gay people to be anywhere? I mean, they're not. A, it's the same thing I'm saying. Like, it's also the thing of saying like when people say woke woke has become so uh like uh definition wise has become nothing it's like literally oh, become nothing. this is great ethos I, I got an example for you this happened today on my i'm just saying channel video so i dropped the video right it was a review of netflix's mm -hmm. avatar the last airbender i gave the video right. a six out of ten i didn't say nothing political about the the show i didn't mention anything political or woke i was just talking about the show and how i felt about it this dude left a comment and i posted it on twitter and he said the show is good all you need to do is stop being woke and I replied, I'm like, we can tell what your algorithm consists of because nobody mentioned anything woke related or political in this video. And he's like, it's not my algorithm. It's just your mindset. I'm like, bro, you're a fucking parrot. You're just saying sh it literally doesn't have a word. It, the, if you go watch that video, there's nothing of political mention in there. It's nothing a, race religion. It, it's, it's just I just remember people, people are saying I literally it's not that people are looking for those things where it doesn't exist. Yeah, it and doesn't. It trying doesn't to force exist. it into, into the, and, the conversation. It's just nuance is lost. This we are not we are now in a, especially with election year, but like we are in an age now where nuance disappears. The definition of words go to shit. That's it's true. it's quite literally the jumbling of information and people just saying, Hey, I support this, so I'm going to say everything that I can to make sure that that's what the agenda is. And I don't care about anything else. There's there's no actually any meeting of the minds anymore, especially on a lot of these platforms. There's no media literacy either. That yeah, shit's no gone to shit too. No meeting of the minds. That's it. You're just there exposed to the elements of these two sides. Well, you know what that is like, too. Freaking um, a lot of these kids nowadays, they can't read and write, bro. I don't know if you've been on TikTok lately. My For You page, I be seeing teachers all the time. Bro, these kids can't read. They can't write. They parents yeah. don't make them do oh, nothing. I saw yeah. that. You I seen that shit? Literally yeah. just, they just uh, grade uh, kids' papers on like what this picture is. These motherfuckers and like dumb. this crazy, bro. <laughs> Critical cra thinking is crazy. Out some the of the door. things that these kids were putting. And yeah, I think I it plays that. into that go woke, go broke shit. Like critical thinking is gone, uh, and it's really Man. sad to see. I think with the sweet baby ink stuff, I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. I think there's they can. I think they need some PR training. They need to word things a little bit better, but I also 
also think there's another weird ass witch hunt. Now, when it comes to that EA employee, and when she was talking about, I don't hire white people, Michael, gonna, I don't co sign that shit. I'm that's like, actually illegal. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that's just that's straight actually illegal. I, yo, go woke, go broke people. You, you got not, that one. I, I don't you literally that. cannot nah, like, deny you want a job. Diversity, but then, but like, but also, <laughs> yeah, but also, <laughs> you, too. you like, can literally sue for that. If someone straight up told you, we did not hire you for the color of your skin, that is by that's definition stuff, illegal. That's you cannot do that. That stuff sucks too because it was a black woman that said that shit. And when she, yeah. I, I'd argue that hurts black people more than it helps. It does. Because it's going to get it her does. black ass fired. Yeah. And now you can't help nobody. And then they're going to look yeah. at it like, oh, we got to be careful about hiring more. You had a seat at the table and then you just full on vroomed. Like, like, I can't stress this enough. It's just like you do what you can with what you have. And you make those little steps that you can forward and you help and you open the the door. Yeah, Rome was not built in a day. You have to understand that power structures are in place and all black people know this. We've all, how many times we've been just black people as a minority walk into a room, we're looked at, we're the minority, we don't see anything, but we see one other person that looks like us and we're like, there's like somebody there, right? Somebody we can, yeah, I'm safe. There's at least one person here that I can recognize at least like, hey bro, at least my bro, what's up? Or my sister like you at least get that um when you literally are like you are in the wild wild west and you are the you are the person who's starting to like actually open the doors and start to create those doors you have such a personal responsibility not only to like help open those doors but to do it in such a to do it in such a um in in a such a way that in a tactful and graceful way that you don't have this where you become overly cocky and um then you seem very aggressive and then now you're you're, you're just blurting off you know this and that and that and that and this we've been saying for years the whole thing has always been is like you know open the door help somebody out you know open the door so that others can walk through uh you know lead the way something like that right leave them legacy so that others can grow there don't gatekeep that's always been the main thing we've always said don't gatekeep but you're going beyond don't gatekeep you're now just becoming like now no only gatekeep now we oppress on top of that and that's not a good look that's not what we've done we've always said we have to go better we have to be better than that and we don't want to become the very thing that like has been or, happening to or, us or, to or, other or if you your goal that. your goal is to wage war at least learn the art of war the classic learn the art of war the, the classic Shut the tactic, fuck up. <laughs> the classic yeah, tactic yeah, is the trojan horse that's what, yeah. that's what white people do. They 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 discriminate. You just don't know it. Like you just that, don't. Yeah. They don't yeah. say they it. They do it in private. They don't say yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They party in word in private all day. Like, yeah. Uh, they they yeah, don't privately be on video games saying in this in in you know in word this in word that. But publicly, you know, they're not going to tell you that. They'll say certain things. They'll whistle certain aspects to you. You can read between the lines, but they're not out here saying this. I don't hire like there's no white directors going around. I don't hire black people. They say, oh, well, I hire. I only hire the like, you know, you know but I, I hate this. I hate this fucking this fucking take. We only hire talented people as if black people cannot be talented. Like, that's the whole other crazy take I hate is like, oh, well, we only hire talented people and black people can't be qualified. Well, we will only hire the most qualified and talented people. And why can't black people fit that mold? Oh, you know what I'm saying? We just, you know, that's just what we do. You know, that, 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 that so type of thing. That's that the, the system is based in a way where the people who are the most yeah, qualified. It's just coincidentally, when you look at the statistics, so yeah, it doesn't yeah, look good. Yeah. It, the most talented people end up being the people who are already at the top. So right, and I think one of the arguments that I was making about this thing too, is just like, there are, there's, there's people where you want to consider the whole concept of, of race and being oppressed, right? Their yeah. response to oppression is to oppress them. Like that's the response. In, in order for us to go get up, we have to bring them down. We have to literally do what they're doing to Decimate us to them. even out yep. the scales, right? You know, and that, you know, literally the whole concept of becoming what it is that you hate the most kind of situation. And mm-hmm. while I feel like there does need to be more of a balance, you don't balance it by doing the same thing that the perpetrator is doing. You're defeating the purpose. You just become them. Yeah. Yo, niggas is just asking for a grocery store in, in our neighborhoods. You know, can we get some, <laughs> some coding classes? We're not asking to enslave you. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all it so, is. Um, so going back to Sweet Baby anything, like this, uh, this thing is just really crazy because we see like a certain part of the internet that, you know, they're, they're constantly like on this narrative, right? And it's not just about video game, like it's about anything, anything that we consume, any sort of media. And it's always three things to trigger them. It's black people, it's women, and it's LGBTQ, like every single time, right? Like th- th- these are like the big three of Don't like- uh, black uh, and gay and a woman. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> tough, what a combination. Being a black woman who's gay, oh my 
my god you're done uh, you're, 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 you're out of here <laughs> so so it's just really crazy how like now like you see that one company like we're honing in on this one company that you know uh quote unquote ruined your favorite games i really want to know like in hindsight if this group would have been made a couple years ago and sweet baby ink was on the radar and they were like oh like all right we got we got sony sony santa monica who's who did their consulting sweet baby ink we got naughty dog who's who's consulting sweet baby ink we got we got rocksteady who's consulting sweet baby ink like and and they could pinpoint with 100 percent accuracy that this consulting company has ruined all of these games that they touch would you have bought these games because suicide squad is an anomaly but spider-man 2 we all bought the game yes it didn't sell as well as some other games that that we you know knew was going to be game of the year it didn't sell as good as Baldur's gate um god of god of war ragnarok could have won game of the year like it was super close but uh, elden ring was just there but like these two games specifically and alan wake 2 because alan wake 2 won a lot of awards last year as well these three games you cannot say are you gonna tell me sock is not a great character like yeah sock was a great fucking character what the fuck are you saying like suicide squad Put that by itself okay it was a watch but not because of sweet baby it was because of it, it, the, the it was the life service it. It was because of <laughs> yeah. the business practices behind this so you cannot blame yeah. it but those three games i'm like you cannot say that sweet baby ink ruined these games because at the end of the day you all bought them so i wonder if the ties would have turned because now the narrative is any game that sweet baby ink touches i'm not going to buy so i really want to see that if this whole vote with your wallet thing is going to hold true because gamers are super fickle and literally omni just said it again a separate argument but he said he's a nintendo fan all these pokemon fans are in the culture they're going to buy it regardless so you can't tell me that if spider-man 3 comes out tomorrow that gamers aren't going to buy it because we baby ink had their hands in it for however little or however much that they had a hand on. you're not going to tell me that they're not going to that's buy how you know it. If, if, is gone man like i didn't even think yeah. of that like yeah, like you guys liked God of War Ragnarok. You liked Alan Wake too. Well, no, but look, now that you know Sweet Baby Inc. worked on it, you hate it. Now you reverse right? Thing, right? You know how gamers do, right? They'll they'll after after something good comes out a year, two, three, four. Hey, Wasn't guys, that good? That time has passed. Yeah. This great game was actually <laughs> just good? ass. And like suddenly hey, what's the joke? Kind of I, I've been making jokes for years. Freaking, I'm waiting for the. Was Anthem like ten years from now? Was Anthem really that bad? Was it like, underrated? <laughs> was it, was right. Anthem underrated? <laughs> I feel so like, like, I feel so like, like I, God of War. I feel like Baldur's Gate, guys, a little underrated, right? It was, it was, I feel like now that I found out that it's, it's people will always look back at the greats and then just try to figure out a way to take it away from it. And and mm-hmm. and now this is just one of those things where people will try to find what's bad about a game in order to villainize it in order to just push the agenda that's it people become so stubborn where they just want to be right that they'll create a self-fulfilling prophecy and they will villainize or hate or find reasons that a game is not good just because it has to fit that narrative and it's these people you can't argue with them because they're so stubborn on both sides their brains fried because for them it's the end it's it's what's the actual end it's not what's here it's at the end of the day i need to be right and this is what the narrative needs to be so i'm going to figure out every single way starting from the beginning to make a line to draw to that conclusion no matter what it is you take the best game in the freaking world if it was made by sweet baby inc people are going to try to figure out and say actually this is why this game was garbage doo-doo and i'm going to draw the line so that i can have my end in mind sight because that's just how some human brains work at a pretty high level it's they don't care about the process they just want the result to be exactly what they feel and and you know what's really sad about that too is like this is like nothing new compared to like i remember like back in like 2015 one of the things about like that entire like psychological aspect is that you um, you enter into every like what you said the the prophecy of every time you enter into playing a new game right if you know uh, sweet baby ink you aren't you're going into playing the game off rip with a negative attitude and connotation that you're hunting to find out like to, to confirm your bias yes. it's not even you trying to enjoy the thing or like what you said try to get a nuance like just playing the game for itself it, it's no different how um i remember back then with um when the whole craze about uh microtransactions and a lot of games coming out and being broken like it was like a witch hunt of uh you know every game that was coming out 
like if a game came out broken or something like that, you just you went into every future game believing that this game was going to come out busted, broken or just not good. Um, and this would fry. I, I, I remember there were so many, so many YouTubers. Uh, you already know who it is. Uh, I make a joke about it all the time. But back in like 2016, 17, there was a huge raise of people that were like making shock content about uh, game, like kind of what you said, like die, it was game die, it was dead. Yeah, gaming was murdered or modern gaming sucks and or your these games suck. And it's like every video was negative negative it was just negative to the point where like they fried their brains so much that they depressed themselves they literally would wake up and make negative content day in and day out to the point where it depressed the living shit out of them and to a point where then one day they woke up one day did a video and was like i'm not happy anymore there was literally <laughs> like, no one shit. of them who made a video and he said in the yeah. video i realized i'm not I was happy depressed, and that's why i was making all these negative videos negative. and i'm sitting there listening to it i'm like, like what the why f- do you no have shit. a fan base like why do- y'all should be unsubscribing bro this thing has been yeah. lying to you for the last 10 years like this is crazy and the, and the worst part is, which he, which is even more crazy, is then when you build your your branding off of this thing, right? Like sweet baby, like like the the culture war, or the, the that that uh, modern game suck, or that everything sucks, basically that that sort of mantra of like this sucks, everything sucks, this sucks, is the moment you flip, and the moment you enjoy something your fan base will turn on you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've you're, literally seen it happen. I saw it happen to Angry Joe. I watched it anymore. You're just a you're hater. not a critic like, anymore. You're, point, you're a hater. Right? Yep. You're not a critic. You're a hater. So once you And if you don't hating. feed your audience <laughs> what they want to hear, if you don't reconfirm their bias about everything, and like, for example, like, let's say a game, uh, the next game comes out, Sweet Baby. I don't even know. Let's say, uh, uh Let's say the oh, next well, Elden Ray or the next baby. From Software <laughs> game somehow <laughs> fucking Sweet Baby Ray helps, helps <laughs> write the story for it. It's like, I don't fucking know. They will find a way. It could be literally the most perfect Dark Souls game. They will find a way to make it bad. But th- but if they sat there and was like, oh my God, this game is like the best game of all time. Or if it was, this, let's say they help work on Zelda and it ends up being one of the best Zelda games of all time. And they say, you know what? I really like this game. They Their fan it's base over. will actually, it's, it's, it's over. Game. They'll cancel. They'll be like, you you're a traitor you're a literal traitor to us da, 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 da. I, I i i remember it happened to me one time where i enjoyed a game that like one time my fan base was like up in arms about hating on and i was like i'm sorry i like this game and people and like certain fans of mine would just quit on me and just said oh you're a traitor and i'm pretty sure it's happened to a lot of us uh yeah tbh happened with you a couple of times i'm sure you can look back and remember jg like it just it, i think it just happens like with us content creators i'm pretty sure it's yeah. always happened to us at one time you they notice think it's they think they're building. They think they know they, you. They think that they're becoming tastemakers, but really you're just building a cult, and you don't realize it's a yeah. cult until you turn your back. Until they turn on you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so then you I, realize, oh my god, I made a cult. Worst, especially when you you're you're exactly right. And if you're building that cult in that audience, and you don't continue to feed them like you just keep saying, they will turn on. You. I when I make content, when I talk, and I give like opinions on all this kind of controversial stuff, I always tell you, I always be like, look. Well, that's my opinion. If you guys disagree, I don't care. I, that's Fuck completely you. fine. Like, yeah. I'm not telling you to listen to what I'm saying and everything is true for fact. And if you want to come in the comments and be like, bad take, I'm going to just let you know, I don't give a flying ass if you think my take is, is a bad one. I don't care. The whole point yeah. is I'm giving you guys an opinion because you guys want me to talk about a subject and you can believe whatever the hell you want. You can coexist. But when the people come in here and be like, you know what, I'm unsubscribing to your channel because you're not confirming my bias of hate. That's the people that you create if you continue to do that kind of content. So when you create that kind of fan base. Because like we talk about, you know, thank you for yourselves all the time. But then you have these literal like one person who, you know, has an audience. They think for themselves or or quote unquote, it's the veil of them thinking for themselves. But then you bring your fan base right along with you and then you become a high mind as well. So you're literally doing the same thing. You're not thinking for yourself at that point. If you come into it and you listen to your favorite person, you just say something that's, you know, quote unquote, off the wall. And and then you believe in them. And then, you know, 50, 50, 50,000 other people believe in them then exactly. you're doing the same thing like you just you just repeating the cycle but you're just on the other side you're not you're not on the left side now you're on the right side so it's it's right. still not helping any situation and it's not helping you critical think and, and think for yourself because you're really not at this point you're just following what somebody else said just because it sounds like it might be correct but it's it's truly not a fact well, again because, this is all opinion based uh, because everyone's looking for the right answer everyone's looking for the one that's either a not going to get them canceled or b people don't want to read 
So they're just looking for the who do I need to listen to so that I know what the answer is kind of thing is what a lot of people <laughs> do now. And so whoever has the biggest mouthpiece in the commentary space, like this is true or any of these guys, and if they say this is fact, then you're going to get millions of people who are like, yep, this is fact because he said so. And you know what's really sad about the, that? We, we, we live in a day and age, too, where you really don't have to read as much. You literally can no. take an article and throw it in AI and say, summarize it into five bullet points for me. And motherfuckers still won't do that shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> read it to me, too. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, you, you got yeah, bots that'll book. read it out loud like a, a podcast. Like, that's crazy. You can get AI to summarize a book for you. Give me a yep. one page summarization on this book and, and actually do it in this kind of style. And it will be like, OK, here's an entire 300 page book and here's the summary of it. And there you go. Like, it's pretty terrifying what AI is doing for that. But yeah. Yeah, that's how it works, man. The sweet baby ink joint. What is this? What is this about Boogie? I keep. I, I heard about that. I was. Confu- I was curious. About okay, that. this goes perfect into the conversation we had. So let's have some fun with this. So world renowned content, world renowned struggling <laughs> content creator, Boogie two nine nine, and an escort enjoyer, <laughs> <laughs> Magic the Gathering uh, seller, card seller said hot take on Twitter. Video games. Oh wait, let me make sure this is on screen. Let me put this there. You go hot take. Video games are supposed to be fun, not lectures about why white men are bad. Uh, and my response to that is, does anybody know in any specific game where the moral of the story was white men are bad? That's what Keith did. Mighty Mafia Keith. 3. Oh, man. To be fair, that, that's, that's, the, very, they had clan, that's very they had contextual. The there. They, yeah, they had the clan in there. No, that makes well, that sense. Makes that's sense, very contextual. That, that makes would make sense. sense. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Most people didn't play yeah. that game. So it don't really well, know. you know, a lot of people didn't get that. That game went over a lot of people's heads. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Give me yeah, a like, modern oh my God, one. The gameplay sucks, but like the story, yeah. you were paying attention. Man. The story went over a lot of people's heads. But yeah. Are there modern video games that have come out recently within the past three years that are about hating white men? I can't think of one. I saw Mighty Keith, he quoted it. It was like 70,000 or 100,000 likes on it. I was like, and no one named a game. Everyone was just talking about the concept of it. We're doing general and da 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 and wokeness. That, that's such a, that's yeah. such a funny argument, too, because people who are very like right leaning, they like to lean into what they refer to as logic. And I don't know, I, I took a debate course, I took debate classes. And my thing is, like, the moment you start moving the, the, the goalposts, oh, goal you lost. So you I'm lost. like, when he asks you, give me an example of a game that's about. Well, that's not what I meant. Like, yeah, 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 like, oh, yeah. so they're like, yeah, you can't get, if there's so many, why can't you give me one? Like, <laughs> here, are their, here are their examples, though. Anything that involves, be... again, the Trinity, it's what it's it's black people, it's women, and it's LGBTQ. Any game that has any one of those three people in it, they're, then they're automatically going to say that, you know, uh, that it. They're, that they hate white people because what about they're Wolfenstein? not the main protagonist. Is that, is that, is, is that, is that, is that, I mean, is Nazis? Is Nazis? Is Nazis? But you have a white man as a But you have a white man doing it. He's the one killing them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, they added a black woman in the second game. They did. They did. And they added women. They added two women you had to play as in the third game. Oh, so they were, they were the children. Yeah. Did Sweet Baby Ray do the third game? For which game is this? Was Wolfenstein um, Youngblood? I, exactly I think it was. It was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was yeah. yeah, Youngblood. It was a co-op. Uh, not necessarily a sequel. It was like a spinoff of After Two so of uh, his I'm, daughters. I'm, the only thing that I can think of that I've, that I've seen is I've seen I haven't seen any video games. That's one part. I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, I've seen movies. I've seen film. I've seen Velma. I've seen TV shows, and I see like TikTok culture going in this direction where we're just making fun of white people nonstop. Where we're, we're either making fun or we're just hating them. Velma yeah. was quite literally all about the concept of people. hating white men, yeah. white white men. So I was like, yeah, that that exists in there. But in video games, I'm I'm tr- literally tr- trying to think of a, an example of something that people have played where it's like the message is we hate white people and i'm i i can't it, it, is is miles morales being spider-man uh, synonymous with we hate white people is that what they feel is that oh no they try Spider-Man the same concept? thing yeah they try to say they the say same thing about not, spider-man he's not, 2 he's not spider-man he's just miles morales. yeah he's not Spider-Man. do you remember how people try to say that uh not even miles but they try to say that they they punked peter and they, they somehow that equates to the white men be mad. They try to say that Peter was a was a basically got bailed out by Miles, which was funny because we all talked here back when we played Spider-Man. We all felt the opposite. We were like, I felt like 
Peter was bailing out Miles at the damn damn game, and Miles was off doing a. Uh, he was going crazy. Yeah, Miles Peter was, was out here bailing the, him out. Miles was going <laughs> yeah. half of the game. Why half of the game. What? It was wild. They had the nerve to say there was too many Miles Morales missions. I'm like, are you serious? Like, are you again, don't like the people not so playing the freaking game, bro. I hate that. The whole Simeo thing was an entire Peter <laughs> arc. Like Miles was MIA the entire time. They're like, well, he had to go save him. Well, no shit. Peter was losing his shit. It's like, what, what do you expect? I, so I, you know I, is, I don't know. So, 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 not, listen. I, I, I'm, I'm, I would like to think that I'm fair as a, as a black man, right? I understand nuance. I understand the I understand the forces at play. I'm not an idiot. I'm not somebody that's on one side or the other who only believes one very strong concept and somehow the other people are completely wrong. I see wrong, man. Context and I see the world at I see the matrix. Okay. I see what's happening here and the parties are at play. I'm just keeping it at that. So when I'm looking at this question, I'm actually looking at it in a, an objective kind of fair way. And I'm just like, I'm I'm still sitting here just trying to think of a video game that is literally designed on hating white men. That's it. And I and I can't think What's of What's the one. gameplay but loop of that game? Gameplay loop white men. <laughs> <laughs> game, <laughs> game, like, wait, wait, I, that would have to be the gameplay I'm not right? like, gonna lie that sounds even if i were racist which i'm not that sounds pretty that's wolfenstein boring. but that's literally that's wolfenstein like, <laughs> that's literally wolfenstein i guess, I guess they don't I you guess kill they don't, nazis they don't view they're all white as, they don't view those as white men because they're nazis that's why it's like it's something completely i think it's more like the everyday average i'm sorry smoking there are black joke. nazis in 1945 <laughs> <laughs> oh, well i mean i'm sorry according to google uh what was the name of the AI? <laughs> you can oh, make a Gemini black Nazi and an Asian Nazi. Nazi. Yeah, 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 Gemini. Yeah. yeah. I can't think of anything, but even I, though I yeah, can't right. think of anything, there will be, I think, I, mean, I think even though we can't think of anything, I think we've reached a point in phase where there are a lot of the concept of white fragility, right? Where white men are being the, the brunt end of, of, of jokes Bunch for of so jokes. long that they will try to find anything that shows that they are a victim in a case. <laughs> because And then we kind of create that up, right? Like, this is a situation. Yeah. There's no victims of white men in gaming. I can't. If there There's literally none. was a bunch, I'd be like, hey, guys, yeah. For some reason, we keep making fun of white men in video games. I, I agree. But there's not. And yet someone's trying to push the narrative that it exists just for the sake of pushing the narrative that's it like it's it's, it's a non-issue and but they're trying to make it one because there's enough people who sympathize with the concept in itself and i think it takes away from the, the actual truth of the matter but you know what's crazy though burger. in that same in that same breath while people will argue that i can like actually like factually i can show them at the same time you might feel this way, but let me talk to you about actual erasure when I tell you about multiple game projects that originally had a woman lead or had a black person being the lead of their game and literally was told that, that can't happen. Make it a white man. Like, I'll give you a great latest example. This was 100 percent confirmed. Um, Jedi Survivor. Jedi Survivor originally was going to have a black woman be the main lead. I, I'm, I'm assuming the uh, the one that um, what's, Seer, what's her name? Seer. Uh, Seer I have a feeling she was going to be the original lead of that entire franchise. And it makes sense because when you base it off the second part of the game of like the time she gets and and how like she, you know, when you played the game. Point, yeah. OK, no, good. I, I can say it, that. It, was lead, it was leading. To oh, the I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to spoil another person. All right. There's I'm a fine, certain I'm not gonna play. It. It's good. You're good. Nah, don't worry. Um, <laughs> there, there, There's a big moment. I'll, I'll, well, I'll say Okay, spoiler for anybody in the chat who hasn't seen it. Um, one of the biggest moments in the entire game is she fights Darth Vader, and she like I'm not even joking. She puts the paws on him. Like it, it's she not a, it's not a. Nigga. He won off. He was. A, he won off. He won off of a. He literally won off of, and and the joke I made uh, before was that this was around the same time that Obi Wan the TV show happens, according to the timelines. So this means this man took an ass woman from Obi Wan, then took an ass woman from a black woman, <laughs> <laughs> and he went back into the tube after that. It's like never again. I'll never take an L like this again. Um, but but one of the the, the strange things is uh, that's not even just one time like a one off. Like there's been so many. I, I've seen multiple directors who've who've like in like. Uh, posts like um whether it's like they're talking about their um you know posts uh you know bibliographies or they're just talking about past experiences and they're talking about how in the past yeah we back in the 90s or back in the early 2000s like we wanted to make a certain character black or we wanted to but publishing like higher powers publishers 
literally told us no marketing told us no it wouldn't sell uh because that wasn't because they said that um basically like white gamers would not be um drawn to wanting to buy the game because it had a, a black leader had a woman on top of it um yeah and, it, and it's it's kind of crazy like when you think about that where at the same time it's like um i i wonder in the back of my head like what is causing this level of like where i feel like it's like high level of i'm not gonna say halluc like not delusion but like w is it is it truly just because of like we said the fragility like is it an aspect of niggas cannot take jokes <laughs> like like you know like us oh, like we, we you know we we grew up roasting each other cracking jokes that sort of shit like we're we're built in that sort of thing is it just like specifically gamers themselves already being kind of ox like um kind of like criticized not criticized made fun of back in the day for being a gamer is that on top of that but now it's like they're reliving that as an adult and they're getting jokes about them about that. Is this, is this like, I, I all, think is it's, like, is it like multis of this hating them and then now they're all like now people are like freaking out about it? Like, I think is some it just, of it is uh, that, like, but I also think some of it is like the only kid syndrome where like the default yeah. the default video game character was the white male Man, with, the, with, yep. the, with the beard, basically super gung ho, mm -hmm. masculine or whatever. So I think what happens is a lot of these people that play these games, they see themselves in that character and they became spoiled by that because that's what for the longest the business Always catered was. to those characters you take that yeah. away now they don't know so it's like a spoiled kid they got everything they ever wanted and they didn't really see any issue with it because they were getting what the fuck they wanted you take it away mm -hmm. now they don't know how to react then you throw in some of that oh i was ridiculed when i was a kid type shit kid yeah for doing it, this i shit. think it's a lot and of different things like it's just the like whole, that thing like it was day one i was here they're yeah bubble. like it's i was here today og yeah like i, I was here day one and i was you out. uh there there's no characters look like boogie in any video games with the main protagonist <laughs> i don't know have you seen some of them have you seen some of them dark souls custom characters yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think boogie is making himself oh uh, no no you wait, ain't wait, seen, wait, wait. Uh, uh, you ain't seen kuma from tekken what do you mean bro no what the boss the boss from elden no, ring no way no the, <laughs> no you remember you remember you remember the boss from elden ring the twins the big one and the skinny yeah, one yeah, oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. it was rolling around that's funny the god skin the god skin the god skin you know the main character though. Oh shit, <laughs> man. The I hated that oh, nigga, bro. That was a terrible boss fight. Oh my god. Oh, my I hated goodness. the motherfuckers, bro. Hey, jokes aside, like, though, uh, since we let me before we wrap this up, bro. Uh, I was I had this is it's funny because we talked about this before we started streaming. I was go ahead and say it anyway before we was recording. I had to say to my drafts. I always responded to this tweet. I was like, I feel like he's a grifter. I don't even know if I believe he believes what's coming out of his mouth. Because like my he's response, broke. he's yeah, gonna be homeless. <laughs> Is well, Boogie Hot Take, you didn't say any of that until your channel started failing. Before you were, you, at least you pretended to be a really nice guy. Now you can't pay yeah. your rent. Now you're going, because like I, I was talking about this on stream. One thing I know for sure if you want to be a content creator, I am not encouraging this. But people who support the Go Woke, Go Broke movement, if you want a rabbit fan base instantly, just start you do that. Just start spouting yeah. those talking points. They will follow yeah. whoever, bro. So I think it's, I, I believe some people believe that shit, but I also believe that community has a lot of grifters. No, 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 that's crazy from somebody that keeps it in. Yeah, you're, what, you're you're ten thousand percent correct because it's 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 quite literally, you have a rabid you have a rabid fan base of people who are angry, and suddenly you have a mic and you're angry, and now you have a fan base. Like now suddenly you're you're yelling at the same things that they are angry about. And you're saying, yeah. I'm angry too. And We're not gonna you. take it. it it's the, uh, it's the, uh, the Homelander meme. The the meme where he's like, uh, all right. <laughs> like, it's the exact same like, meme. Yeah, you like this. All right. Okay. Yeah, like, all right. Let's just do I'll, this. I'll do yeah. more of it, I guess. I mean, I'll, I'll do more of it. Yeah. But I, yeah, I'll just do it. It's, yeah. it's and, and I guess the, the worst part, not even the worst part, there's two There's two people, right? There's There's three. There's the grifters who are who are very very self aware. They know what they're doing, right? Yep. That they don't they don't whether they believe it or not. They're just they're in it for the money, right? Impressions, baby. Do you have do you have do you have you have sheep? The zealots. They have yeah, people who notes, have yeah. like no brain capacity, no IQ, and so suddenly their train of thought ends after a sentence on, and they have just no understanding of the world. But they will take a stance. They 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 have the ability to make decisions, unfortunately. So they will kind of just take whichever is the face value that they see on a Facebook page quote or something like that. And then you have the people who are self aware. They know they don't have the mic, but they know that the agenda works in their favor. 
So they know that if they push this, they're not the grifters, but they know that if they encourage this to be the conversation speech, this will benefit them in the long run kind of thing. Those are the, the, the three, I would say, horsemen when it comes to all of these type of situations. And then do you have like, you know, normal people who understand nuance or who understand that there's it's not black and white. Uh, pun, pun intended. So it's, it's it's usually a lot more debate that needs to be gone on by it, but common sense is lost. And especially 2024, man, election year. I don't know. I've been seeing on my timeline. Every time I see something People are heated. information, I yeah. swear to God, it could be like, it could be, it could be something like the sky is blue. You know? nope. And then someone will make a tweet and be like, no how how dare the the, the left up, bitch confirm that it's you know how dare it'll be turned about that how dare the I'm left sorry. liberals the liberals who believe that the libtards think it's 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 getting to a point now where everything is being grifted and fed to people and i think with TikTok and all this short form information no one reading it's working it's actually the way of information processing that's actually people are taking uh, that was gonna say that's the scariest too. thing about all this these people can vote it's working, bro. It's it's don't remind effective. me of that. Please don't effective. So, Freaking um what's Jesus in that? This, is, this has been a, a very good conversation. I got one yeah, more for you. Boogie says the N-word, so don't listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh so this is just a funny one. A uh, new study shows kids are bullied for not having uh spending money in free to play games. Um, and I just wanted to bring Probably this up real quick. I just wanted to bring this one up real quick. This story is true. You know why? Because I got bullied. Every time I get on Fortnite, people make fun of me because I still have the default skin. We definitely do. We definitely do. <laughs> so I believe yeah. kids are getting bullied. This is 100% true. I go live. With Jonesy? You don't got no yeah. dances? No, no, I don't play. Oh, I don't like Fortnite maidens. like that. Ain't got no maidens. No maidens. No maidens. The, only, the yeah. only time I ever get on Fortnite is because every once in a while they'll release like a cool character. I'm like, oh, let me go check that out. But like, I don't really care about the game that much. But I thought this was fucking funny. Nah, it's crazy on there, man. We got, you know, he got a man who was literally spending so much money in Fortnite and GI, bro. And, and he got all the skins, bro. This man was making bounties and everything trying to, uh, yeah. trying to get other people's skins. So, I, I mean, I get it, man. Like games like Fortnite, you ain't got no money, you ain't spend no money in there. Yeah, they're gonna make fun of you. <laughs> having broke, boy, having no skin on Fortnite is like the equivalent of like your shoes. Like, yeah, pay less shoes growing up. Like, because someone looking at your shoes and your drink, <laughs> it's the same equivalent. You, don't, you, can't, you can't do the. <laughs> <laughs> you, out here, you don't got the latest TikTok dance? You you broke hey, like listen, that? Man. You don't got the V Bucks, baby? You listening yeah, to true. someone whose parents sent them to fucking middle school two years in a row with a pair of shacks on their feet, nigga? It's nothing God. you can ever say to me that will bother me. I didn't heard it. I've been humble. <laughs> God, I didn't heard it. All, boy. Boy. God, you got so many what I'm saying, bro. You're just like, <laughs> hey, you, you, you like, say you from the saying, DMV? Man. You know how niggas get down in DC, bro? I know how niggas get down. They don't play around. You will get roasted. You will get roasted. Into, I've been roasted so hard that you cannot phase me. And then on top of that, we're black content creators too, as well. So we've been roasted, IRL and online to the to the point now where you got to be creative if you ever want to just penetrate whatever it is that you that you guys have created in this kind of space. But, mm, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah it's, it's you got to lean into it. Oh, them racial slurs don't, don't man, affect me no more online, bro. Nah, you gotta come up creative. Nah, you gotta come up something new, bro. Speaking of creative, creative I might laugh. And work don't like, be hidden no nah, more, bro. It's creative. Do more crazy. I, I will laugh. Something I'll creative. laugh. I'll literally yeah. like, hey, that's yeah, crazy. Like, okay, somebody okay, left a comment. Super new. racist and creative. Wow. Somebody left a comment on one of my TikToks the other day, and he was like, "Uh, Cloud Ninjas on my For You page. That shit made me laugh." Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, that's funny, bro. <laughs> this nigga has a disdain for black people. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, with, with, with obviously, with comedy, but if you're going to be racist and funny, then it's just comedy. You're good. It's you're comedy, good. bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, you got it, bro. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> my favorite movie for good reason, meme, bro. But if you come at if you come at me with racism, but it's funny as hell, you will always you will always go get a laugh out of me, bro. For sure, for free. sure. Yeah, Shout out to the night hunters. What's the name? Um. <laughs> public service announcement this is officially the longest episode of the gi podcast ever we are well over three hours i was not expecting yes! this thank uh, god so i know people gonna eat this one up i'm fucking tired of talking i don't know about y'all but just in case yes. is there anything else y'all want to add to the conversation before we wrap this up did i forget something 
Mm-hmm. Until it's done, no, well, something happened today, but I can't remember. Ah, too late. It's been three hours, and that's enough. Yeah, it's fuck it. it. If y'all complain late. in the comments, bro, I give up. Bro. I've been out here. Yeah, no, yeah. we should have been longer. Nah, yeah, fuck yeah. it. We need four <laughs> hours next time. They're gonna ask for a seven hour, twenty four hour stream. That's what it's gonna be. Yeah. Then, oh, God, if you give it to them. They will ask for it. How about the TBH and he, he got us, bro. Yeah, yeah. TBH is gonna stay here and keep talking to you guys. Okay, about the about the Fortnite. Don't worry about it um <laughs> you are our guest omni you got the floor for episode 153 of the game illuminati podcast what is your closing statement go well let me just say number one i this has been i am very glad that i've been able to spend these three to four hours with you guys i i um this has been fun i i don't talk enough with the goons man i feel like i'm finally getting to talk with the goons with some like-minded people with also different areas of expertise i know we have developers up in here i like the different points of views this is some good ass energy man and i think that you guys i again am very thankful that you guys brought me up on here man i feel truly blessed that you guys brought me up. i feel lucky so I just want to say thank you for that, number one. Number two, thanks for bringing me out my shell because now I kind of want to do this stuff more often. This was really fun. And uh, well, number you. three, uh, I would say moral of the story for those of you at home with all the stuff that we've been talking about, man. Who cares? It is what it is. This gaming news, all this stuff is going to rotate, and then a week later, people are going. To <laughs> Not wrong. It's just, it's just one week later, and Not everything that you think matters won't. Won't matter. So just survive. Focus on your mental health, okay? Because the cycles will keep cycling, and if you're not focus on your mental at home, you're not going to make the ride, man. Once you after a couple of years, it, you're being attacked mentally. You don't even know it. TikTok, you're being attacked. Be careful out on these streets and take care of your mental health. And these guys right here will will keep you safe because uh, you got some level headed, minded, cool ass dudes who are just talking about shit in the way where you can consume content in a way that won't won't destroy your soul. Won't fry your brain. It won't fry your brain. This is this yeah. is the spot. So I appreciate you guys letting me into your space, man. Hey, we clip it, TBH. Clip it. Testimony. Testimony. <laughs> clip it. Clip it. All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm a testimony for violation. Five ingredients on the Game of the Night podcast. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Find them uh, to be a guest today. <laughs> seven out of ten. Too many blacks. Um, Ethos. <laughs> Ethos, you got the show floor. What's your closing statement for episode 153? Go. I only got one thing to say. Fuck uh, Dan Snyder. Fuck Nickelodeon. Oof. They bad as hell. That's it. That's uh, all hey, I got to say. I was just talking Bro. about that on stream. I was saying so. Like, I'm not trying to give to. I, let's, let's just say this. I drive past the Nickelodeon studio a lot. Almost. Give them the middle fair. Like, fuck them. Like dude. five times a week. And I was coming home from the gym and I drove past it the other day. And I looked Give at them it. Give middle fair. <laughs> when, when I first moved here like two years, I was like, oh shit, that's Nickelodeon. Now I ride past. I'm like, this shit ain't hitting this. Uh, <laughs> <bro."> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that shit ain't hitting this. Uh, uh, Cartoon Network fan anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah. Fuck them. Cartoon Network better. It's Cartoon Network. Uh, yeah. JG, close the statements. Episode 153. Go. I feel like I am the official GI podcast recruiter now, boy. I, I went full for yeah, full. Get to it. Who's that? Yeah, get us another one. We, yeah. we out here, man. So, uh, so again, in the comment section, if you have anyone else you really, really want to want to bring on, uh, I think it's a good guy. Again, huge shout out to Omni. Like I, 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 I'm like you went like above and beyond it, and I knew you were gonna be like that because like I, I've been following you for a long time, and I, I, oh. I, I appreciate your insight when it comes to the topic. So, uh, so you, uh, this was a really, really good podcast. One of and again, one of the longest that we had. So appreciate you for responding and uh, and being so you know attentive and uh, flexible with your time. So course, thank you so man. much. No, pleasure was mine, man. Pleasure was. Af- I'm glad that we broke a record here with with me on here talking there. That's I'm very happy with that, man. <laughs> TBH too, man. What you got to say, bro? What, how, what's your closing remarks? What's your moral of the story of us here, man? Not only not only did we break the record, we broke it by like an hour because usually we do like two. So I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to break. And not gonna one. bug us for a month. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, no, we might have some stuff coming. So uh, fuck <laughs> no. You <better> see. <laughs> Closing statements for episode 153. I'd like to thank everybody for actually making this far in the show. And if you did, for the reminder, hashtag in the comment section, Omni finish Elden Ring. That's my closing <laughs> statement. We want to see you beat your games because now I'm surrounded by three frauds who don't beat their games. Oh, fuck oh, off. No. <laughs> oh, no. I feel honored and disgraced at the same time <laughs> yeah. being part of that, that roster. Uh, other than that, we appreciate you guys for listening to the Game Illuminati podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button. If you're watching the audio version, rate it five stars, and we will see you on the next one. Peace.